And in meetings like this, where you just have to Oh, yeah. I'm second. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for being here tonight. This is truly an incredible moment for Isla Vista. Over 47 years in the making for this moment where we can gather for broad-based self-governance as a community. Um, it's truly an honor for all of us to sit up here before you today, and we really look forward to this first meeting. Um, one thing to announce right now, this meeting is being recorded. Um, and throughout the meeting, there will be time for the public to comment, including a public comment section. Um, but also, as we address uh, agenda items, uh, the public will be asked for input at that time as well. So without further ado, uh, we are ready to get sworn in with Supervisor Williams. I just want to uh, say it, it, it's an honor to be asked to give you the oath of office. And I have really high hopes for what you will be able to accomplish for this community. Uh, and uh, as, as soon as voters have, have the wisdom of supporting you with, with revenue. Um, and I do want to take one, one liberty, which is to say that um, while I may give you the, the, the oath of office, there's, there's one person who will be silently standing with me, um, and that's a person you all know that has worked very, very hard uh, to make this day happen, and that's Darcel Elliott, the Chief of Staff. <laughs> You will raise your right hand. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California and the Constitution of the State of California against all enemies. Against, against all, all enemies. enemies foreign and domestic, foreign foreign and and domestic. domestic. That, I will bear true faith. that I will bear true faith and allegiance to and the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California. And allegiance. <laughs> and allegiance to the Constitution. And allegiance to the Constitution of the United States. Of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. My bad. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without, without any, any mental, mental reservation, reservation or purpose of evasion or purpose of evasion and that I will well and faithfully and that, that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I am about to enter discharge the duties upon which I am about to enter you are sworn into office thank you so much <laughs> All right, at this time, at uh, 6.07 p.m. on Tuesday, March 7, 2017, we will be calling the meeting to order. Um, I just want to say something very briefly. This meeting was called um, by a quorum of the Board of Directors. Um, we will now enter the roll call vote. Um, and uh, I will have Mr. Bertrand call the roll. Absolutely. Director Brandt? Here. Director Freeman. Here. Director Geis. Here. Director Hedges. Here. Director Jordan. Present. Director Thurlow. Here. And I'm Director Bertrand and I'm here. Um, awesome. So at this time, we're moving to item 1.4, to receive the appointment of Director Robert Geis, appointed by the County Board of Supervisors of San Barbara. I accept the appointment. <coughs> uh, that's what I need to is, do. Is there any more <laughs> discussion? I just want to say briefly, um, Mr. Geis, you've shown an exemplary record of public service, I think, over, over your 
34 years uh, serving in county government, um, which is longer than the lifetime of a couple of board members who sit on this board. Um, so I, I just want to say uh, we're happy to have you, uh, and we look forward to working with you. Thank you. Is there any public discussion, public comment? <coughs> I, I move to accept the appointment of <coughs> Director Robert Geis, representing the County of Santa Barbara. A second. Um, we'll call them. One uh, possible amendment to this would be to state the date of which the term goes till. That's right. Um, so for the county appointment, um, that would be December 7th, 2018. Um, which that's the, that's the date of which all of us elected um, appointments who were elected to <coughs> two years. Uh, that's the date of which our term expires. So I think if we were to add that to the motion, that would be good. I move the motion as amended. Call to question. Do we have to have a second again? We have to have, yeah, do we have to have a second? You don't have to have a second Okay. <coughs> on an amended motion. But someone has to call to question. Um, so we're going to do a roll call vote for this. Um, Director Brent? Aye. Oh wait, before we do this, public comment? Any any last? All right, Director Brent? Aye. Director Freeman? Aye. Director Geis? Aye, right, up. Director Hedges? Aye. Director Jordan? Aye. Director Thurlow? Can't vote yet. Can, can, can you yeah. Yeah, right. so own acceptance? <coughs> Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and I'm Director Bertrand, I. Um, so that's five, <coughs> five eyes, two abstentions. And Darcel, do you have that? Awesome. Uh, motion passes as amended. Welcome to the team. Bob. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now we are going to be moving on to item 1.5 to receive the appointment of the director appointed by the <coughs> Chancellor of, Uni of the University of California, Santa Barbara. Um, board members, uh, you will find attached in, in your packet so the letter uh, addressed to us uh, by Chancellor Henry Yang of UCSB uh, informing us that the Chancellor of UCSB has selected George Thurlow uh, as the university's appointment to a four-year term on the Isla Vista Community Services District. Um, he writes, Mr. Thurlow has served as my special assistant on Isla Vista Affairs. His service in the Isla Vista community during the past two years makes him uniquely qualified for this appointment. With this appointment, I want to reaffirm our commitment to an Isla Vista community that is safe, vibrant, and a source of pride for our students, faculty, staff, and neighbors. Um, so with that, um, is there any public comment? I see a thumbs up. <laughs> Board discussion. Board discussion. Um, I'll say something. Uh, George Thurlow has been an, a tre tremendous ally throughout the process for creating the community services district through the assembly bill um, and everything that went along with that, which was quite a lot. Um, so I'm truly very appreciative to see him up here on this table tonight, and uh, I look forward to working with him. Thank you. Any more discussion? Seeing that now, does anyone want to make a motion to receive? I make a motion to receive George Thurlow. And I'll second that. Um, do we want to add any other language to make it more specific? This is to a four-year <coughs> term on the IUCSD Board of Directors? That would be friendly. All right. Um, you want to do a roll call vote? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, as, as amended, though, that's... As amended, yes. Do we want to put any specific date or um, four years would be, do we have a specific date? That would be December, what did you say? December 7th. So I'll, uh, I'll check the calendar right now. <coughs> right. So until December, just to go by the date? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, and so amending that to December 7th, 
2018. Okay. Is it four years? You're doing four or two? 2020. 20. <coughs> wait, wait, you're doing four years? You're doing 17 From 16. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, my, my someone only, like to move? Someone, move. Yes, sir. My only question with this is um, if that is based on the the, the date being um, the seventh, or if it's based on the first Wednesday, or the first Wednesday of the month. Um, Director Geis, do you know the specific date that was on your swearing in form? On, <coughs> mm, I do not. The, the seventh is what's on the call being elected yeah. for board members. Actually, I've got eight. So you. Yeah, well, it's December 4th, 2020. Sorry. <laughs> that's just for the election. Oh, that's 26. It's the yeah, that's 26. Yeah. So December 4th. Would anyone like to move the amendment with December 4th added? I would. That's a friendly addition. Is there a second? There doesn't need to be. Okay. Uh, roll call vote. Uh, Director Bertrand? Aye. Director Brandt? Aye. Director Freeman? Aye. Director Hedges? Aye. Director Jordan? Aye. Director Geis? Aye. Motion passes 6 to 0. Welcome to the team, George. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm all about it. <laughs> so, and I know it. we're going to be moving on to uh, item 1.6 the election of president and vice president of the board of directors pursuant to California government code section 61043B. Uh, what are the reasons that it may have been a little bit awkward in terms of, you know, who's doing what, who's going to be announcing what up to this point because we do not have a president and a vice president of the board? This is one of the many, uh, shall we say, uh, interesting challenges that come along with being in the startup district position uh, that we are in. Um, but it, it is something that is required uh, of California government code um, that we elect a president and a vice president. The president will chair the meetings uh, and uh, have other duties as uh, delegated to them by the board of directors. The vice president will perform the duties of the president in the absence uh, of the president. Um, and so with that, um, we as a board should consider um, the election uh, of a president and vice president. Um, and it's unclear whether or not this can be made in the same motion, but I, I think that we should go uh, one at a time. Yes, I believe we should do two separate motions. Okay. Yeah. I think the discussion, however, can be combined. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and my point of reference with that would be at the Isle of Vista Recreation and Park District meetings, we would have that as a one agenda item, the election of officers, but then do two different votes on it. Okay. Um, so there is possibly some relation to this with the next agenda item with the ladies of secretary. Are we allowed mm -hmm. to talk about anything related to that during this item? Um, so I can tell you the intent that we had when we separated them was that um, the board vice president and the board president, they're both called in the, election, the community services district law. Um, also in the community services district law is an item of which we can create offices, um, but that would be our creation. Um, the board president and the board vice president is called for in the law specifically. <coughs> so I would recommend that we did as two different discussions. Mm -hmm. So is this now open for us to like nominate people or maybe Natalie? Um, uh, just seeing as how all of this was set up, um, by Ethan, uh, I think that and Spencer he, and Spencer. Um, I, I see that like uh, Ethan's taken a very active role in um, really leading um, the board of directors, even in its stages before we've even gotten to this point. Um, so, with that being said, I would like to motion for Director Ethan Bertrand to be the president of the Isle of Vista Community S Service District Board of Directors. Second. Well, thank you so much. Um, can we have public comment? <laughs> I've seen lots of thumbs up. <laughs> and then also we need to have um, more board discussion. Yeah. But I believe we have Dr. Bierman. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Bierman, we have a podium over here. Is that a mic right there? That is not, actually, this mic right there. 
I actually can get a mic if you want one in like a couple minutes outside, but I didn't think that one. I didn't think we need that. Certainly not for Dr. Bierman. <laughs> it is a pleasure to be in a place that knows how to run government. Mm -hmm. And I would suggest that you drop a note to the people at the White House and explain <laughs> how, how things should be done in an orderly manner. You are sitting in the place where the Isla Vista Open Door Clinic started, where the Isla Vista Food, uh, food Co-op started. And as somebody who was readed by the Isla Vista Community Council when I first came here in a meeting uh, at Isla Vista School, I, I just want to take this opportunity to tell you that you have a wonderful future in front of you and that I think that you are going to take full advantage of the opportunities. And much as I'd like to keep talking, I'll put my rest of my remarks uh, in writing. And congratulations on all of you. We have high hopes for for your work. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Beerman. Are there any more public comments uh, on the motion at hand? All right, then I'd like to bring it back to the board uh, for a board discussion. Yes, and we um, should welcome more nominations by board members. Yes, that's correct. Board I was board. also going to nominate Ethan Bertrand for, for um, president of the board. So. And I will second so that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I was going to give slightly um, expanded reason from what Natalie gave, which is also, of course, that Ethan has been on the board of the Isla Vista Recreation and Park District. Uh, and so he has had an opportunity in order to get a feel for the uh, process and the um, politics of this kind of position. So. Well, thank you so much. <coughs> and I just would say Ethan and Spencer have shown the leadership already. They put out an, a very nice agenda. Yeah. They took the time to research how to do that agenda. Yeah. They've read the special, dis they've read the it's law. Amazing. And uh, you know, the only thing I commented to them when I briefly met with them was, number one, you know, do well in school. <laughs> 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 and number two, this is an exciting opportunity for them and hopefully they have the time to put into that leadership position they told me will make the time. So uh, I, Totally support uh, Ethan as as the president. Thank you. More more discussion. So we're then going to do this yeah. motion and then to nominate. Yes, and and I, and I just wanted to say uh, briefly, Ethan, you're one of my good friends. Um, we also uh, serve, you know, together in this role. And I just want to say I really admire your leadership, and I look very much forward uh, to serving on this board with you as our board president. Well, likewise. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs> call for the question. We got to, yeah, call the question. Questions from called. Is there an objection to call the question? Do uh, do, do so we, have a, we, have, we have a motion on the state, so <coughs> we do a roll call vote. Uh, Director Bertrand. <coughs> Abstain. Director Brent. Aye. Director Freeman. <coughs> Aye. Director Hedges. Aye. Director Jordan. Aye. Director Geis. Aye. Director Thurlow. Aye. Motion passes 6 0 with one abstention. <laughs> this, is, this is truly an honor. Um, I never would have thought that I would be in this position. I uh, moved out here three years ago on a on a, on a whim, I didn't know what I was getting myself into, but I truly found a special community. I truly found an amazing group of people to work with, to move forward the progress that has been building here for so long, to address um, many of the issues that are present in this community, but to also acknowledge the promise that is found in Isla Vista, um, the great place that it is to live. Um, and I will take this as quite an honor and serve diligently. Thank you so much to my fellow directors and to all of you. Now we have someone to run the meeting. <laughs> That's me. Um, all right, excellent. Uh, thank you again. Moving right along um, to the second part of this agenda item, um, we are to elect the vice president of the board of directors. So I would like to not I would like to nominate Natalie Jordan for that position. Uh, so I've been uh, occasionally going to uh, the big. 
close to the beginning of the year, I went to a meeting of the uh, Associated Student Senate. I've also watched videos of the Senate. You'll actually notice during the course of this meeting, uh, Natalie has been correcting our process and procedure yeah. uh, because Natalie actually has a very strong understanding of the process and procedure that goes into these meetings. Uh, it is something that I think would be really beneficial to this board in order to have Natalie as the Vice President. Thank you. Um, I'll, uh, I'll comment. And I, I too am a very big fan of Natalie and your leadership and the amazing work you do at Associated Students um, and everything that comes along with that. Um, while I will not be making a motion because I'm in the chair role, I do believe that we should consider Spencer Brandt for this position um, based on his in-depth understanding of the Isla Vista Community Services District, based on his experience talking to countless voters on this district, um, on the topic of this district formation, based on um, everything I've seen of this man and all of his efforts for this district, um, I do believe that we should consider, and I'm putting it that way because I will not be making a motion, um, but that we should consider Spencer as board vice president. Um, so one of the reasons and additionally why I might bring up Natalie as an option for this is that I know that Ethan and Spencer have been working together on various things such as on the 90-day action plan and on some of the setup for this meeting. I think that it might also add some diversity to the thought process if you were to have Ethan be the president and then Natalie Jordan be the vice president. Let, let me just ask the other directors, do you think that in the long run um, if we do put in a secretary position, that this will be a movement through the ranks that people would go from secretary to vice president to president? Because I think we elect officers each year. So I didn't know if you guys had some thought process um, that's similar to what we do in the Board of Supervisors when I served <coughs> there, that they had a, an expectation of rotation of uh, chairs and, and people uh, chairing the meetings at some point. Mm -hmm. And I think that would be a really good opportunity for the elected directors to do. Yeah, and if, if I could just respond to that really quickly. I think that um, with the Board of Supervisors, you're right, the chair, say, rotates each year as does the vice chair position. Uh, and that's a, that's a position that is, is largely ceremonial in a lot of ways because of its rotation. Um, I think that what I had in mind when um, when what Ethan and I both had in mind when we, when we spoke about the secretary position in relation to the vice president and president position uh, was that the secretary position, of course, being that we don't have any sort of a staff as a district right now and that we are still in this startup phase, would serve uh, the, the roles of uh, possibly doing something such as taking minutes. And, and now we're stepping into uh, item 1.7, and I don't want to um, get too far off of track of 1.6, but I, I see that role as having uh, a significant amount of responsibility given that uh, the situation that the district is in. And um, one thing that I'll add to that is, uh, speak, like speaking to the, the rotation of the officers, um, what I've uh, liked to see at the, at the Park District, and obviously we, we are not a continuation or ex extension of the Park District, but just looking at a neighboring district serving <coughs> mostly the same constituency, um, typically it would be <coughs> vice president was the president the next year. Though that, does, that hasn't always happened, <coughs> that has been the, the main uh, tradition. And, and I guess I, I, I have <coughs> seen a lot of other districts where when you were smaller, like we are, <laughs> lack of staff, that some people that have the opportunity and the time stay longer in those those positions and so um, uh, you know that does happen in a lot of districts where it isn't an annual rotation I was just it's just something that for us to think about in the future interesting enough that is also something that had been in the back of my mind when I made my nomination of Natalie is that I think it might be interesting to have Natalie as the president next year um, Natalie also is in a two-year term Spencer is in a four-year term mm -hmm. uh, that would give Natalie Spencer has an opportunity to do this position later on in the cycles. So. Um, I'm very honored that you would consider me for something like this. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I gotta, you know, practice. I gotta, wh what is it? Project my voice. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I'm very, very honored um, with the consideration of um, vice president of the board. Um, 
I would I feel though also just like in consideration and discussion um, I know that Spencer does have a mastery of uh, a lot of like the legal aspects that I don't know if I'm exactly um, ready to jump off the ground with just yet I don't know if that's a consideration and also um, just the back work that it, the legwork that has been put in by Ethan and Spencer um, I just think that that's definitely something to consider something I will remind maybe even you is that uh, Natalie Jordan got more votes than anyone mm -hmm. else for the position of director even though she was running against more people mm -hmm. <laughs> you did. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you did, you know. Yeah. Uh, is there any other board discussion before we go out to the public? We will come back to the board, but anything else before we go out to the public? There's no motion. There's no motion. There's no motion. There's just a second. There had to be a second. I'll, s I'll second the motion. Which, my motion? Yes. We need a second. second. So had to be a second. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, any public comment? Hmm. Can I stay down here? I have to go to the podium. You don't have to go to the podium. And in fact, <laughs> anyone who does not want to be on camera, there's a white line past which, if you do not cross, you will not end up on the on the feet. So I just want to say for most, uh, for the vice president role, uh, while I do, um, I have a lot of respect for everyone up on the sport at the moment as far as I, well, I don't really know the role too well, but um, I imagine I have a lot of respect for you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, all jokes aside, um, well, I do have a lot of respect for you, Spencer. Um, you have been in IV for only a few months, and as far as the internal vice president goes, uh, Natalie, while you have been... Sorry, not, oh, you are internal vice president. I'm mixing up the roles now. Um, <laughs> I know that you do have a lot of um, you know, skills and resources as I have been to the Senate meetings as well. And as someone who's been a member of IB uh, for longer, I do believe that also should play a weight in this. I'll be happy to do that. So um, the board vice president serves in the absence of the board president. So um, what that entails is largely chairing the meeting, but then also working with district administration for when we do have a staff, hopefully someday, um, where the um, board president or the board vice president in the absence of the board president is responsible for executing the actions of the board with the, the administrative <coughs> person. So whether that's signing um, the warrants of the district, whether that is um, signing um, ordinances, um, official letters of the board. Um, it's the presiding officer in the presiding officer's absence. Uh, we have uh, Scott in the back. Scott, if you could come up here for your I have a comment. question for George Thurlow. Uh, why is it that the university chooses to uh, not be in the jurisdiction of which you have an unelected position? Yes, so um, at this time we will um, have public comments um, oh, soon, okay. but we'll, uh, we'll wait until that time for those concerns. Right now, um, for the comment just related to this agenda item, please. <coughs> Mr. LaBelle. Uh, pleasure to be here in front of all of you. Very excited for this day. Um, I think in, in some sense, um, since uh, the directors Bertrand and Brandt have been collaborating collaborating together so thoroughly up until now, it might make more sense to not have both of you in the two leadership roles so that you can um, continue to have this, this working relationship and still have diversity um, in the leadership of the board. Any more public comment? Seeing none, we're going to go back to the board for discussion. Um, is there any more board discussion? Yeah, i just like to say something regarding this. I want to say thank you very much for uh, your suggestion um, to the other board members um, re regarding this position. Um, Natalie, uh, you're, you're someone that I've known for a while now. Uh, and as, uh, as Jake pointed out, um, Natalie knows a lot of people. Um, and she, she's a very popular person. A lot of people know Natalie. 
Um, and for good reason. Uh, the work that you do in Associated Students, I think, is really valuable. I also think it's really valuable that Associated Students continues to uh, maintain a presence in Isla Vista uh, and uh, continues to engage with districts like our own as, as we begin to start up with the Isla Vista Recreation and Parks District uh, and, and, and other avenues in Isla Vista. Um, and I've seen the way uh, that you chair the meetings and uh, I, I think that you might have a little bit less of a, uh, say, let's say, ambitious to ask questions board, uh, <laughs> seeing how we've operated thus far than we do in Associated Student Senate. Um, but I think that you will make a great vice president of the board, uh, and I will be happy to be voting yes on your affirmation. Going for the question. Yes, I think it's that time. Yeah, it's that time. Um, Director Brandt, I'll go first. Director Bertrand, aye. Director Brandt, aye. Director Freeman, aye. Director Geis, aye. Director Hedges, aye. Director Thurlow, aye. And um, Director Jordan, do you abstain? Abstention. Awesome. <laughs> uh, the motion passes 6 0 with one abstention. Uh, congratulations, Vice President. <laughs> Would you like to share a few words? Oh, thank you very much. I'm very, very honored um, to take on this role, and I'm very excited about um, our future here. It's exciting. Thank you so much. So, so now moving on to item 1.7, uh, consider the establishment of the secretary office and consider electing one director to serve in this position. Um, so I guess Sorry. I'll... I'll start on this route. Spencer, would you like to no, go ahead? Yeah. Sure. So um, with this, our idea was um, while we were reading the Community Services District law, it did say that we could, um, should we choose to create additional offices um, on the board. Um, and one of the areas of uh, the CSD that has been the most confusing for what we will do at the start is um, how we're handling meetings, um, whether that's um, putting out agendas, whether that is um, putting out the minutes, uh, releasing the recordings of meetings, um, giving the public all the information that is necessary for the meetings, not in a public relations role, but in just making the information accessible um, from, from this board, from what happens and from what will happen. So that is, um, I think that's why we were inspired to put this um, as an agenda item that we discussed at this, at this first meeting. And like I said before, the reason that it's separate is because the Community Services District law says that we must elect a president and vice president, but this is at our option. Um, but what that also means is that we need to really define what that role is as it's not defined in law. Um, so that's uh, what I have to share on it. My understanding is that the Aladis Recreation Park District has been operating for 25 years without a secretary. Uh, My understanding is that the Aladis Recreation Park District has been operating for 25 years without a secretary. Um, I believe that the general manager um, serves in that role mm -hmm. along with other staff assistants. Um, I'd like to ask Mr. Gould if that's a appropriate way to describe uh, it. I, I serve as, as the clerk, which I assume is a similar similar role. Um, yeah. they, they at one time did have a clerk though before before I started. I I'll just I think in the absence of the general manager that a, a secretary position working closely with the president and the vice president to help us put out agendas and not do all the clerical work because that's not what we expect of that position but maybe until the point we get an internship program going mm -hmm. the internship program could pick up some of that uh, everyday meeting duty of taking minutes and helping put out the agenda maybe under the direction of the secretary so you know at the county, I'll just go back on my experience, the clerk of the board is a vital part of the operations of mm -hmm. the agenda. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that secretary role I've seen on other districts, if we structure it right, would be of benefit to all the board members. So, mm -hmm. Can I add to that that um, I, I think one of the also, one of the first things we have to start thinking about is where we're going to have our public documents um, yes. on on record. <coughs> uh, 
And so uh, I also think that's, but I, I, would, I would suggest that we elect a secretary that we refer to, the, uh, to one of our committees the actual duties and responsibilities. Mm -hmm. But at some point today, tonight, we indicate to the public where will our documents, where will our agendas be posted. I mean, you know, where, where can you go to inspect our uh, minutes and documents? Um, I'm kind of hoping that maybe, I mean, I was thinking the university, it's easy, it's close, uh, but I'm a little concerned about the attitude that, that uh, the university would be holding all these documents. So I was kind of thinking Joan, Supervisor Hartman, might allow us to use the county facility or maybe even your office as a place where we could store our public documents, post our agendas, and have them available for inspection. Sorry, I didn't mean to throw you a curve. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and one thing I'll add real quick, Supervisor, um, we do have a discussion item coming up to, about the role, in particular, the um, Supervisor's Office okay. working with the okay. board. And then also at the end of the agenda, we have um, two items, one on online <coughs> presence, or so websites, okay. social media, okay. um, and then also procedures for um, following up on meetings and um, preparing meetings. So we can still talk limited about that now, but um, okay. we do have those. No, that's, that's fine. I'll wait. Uh, and, and I can tell you that at the county already, there are formation documents that mm -hmm. uh, are floating. I don't want to say floating around, but we weren't sure where they, staff told me they weren't sure where to park those documents. LAFCO sent some to the auditor's office. The auditor's office forwarded those on to the CEO. The state controller became aware of the formation of the district. They sent documents to the auditor's office. We sent them to the CEO. So, you know, the CEO being the clerk of the board is, is instead of Supervisor Hartman's office, is more, mm -hmm. would have more skills to organize and store those documents. But I don't know if the county is willing to, you know, take on that burden. Um, and so I think we should put it with that formation committee and do yeah. some exploration mm -hmm, yeah. about what entity would... Um, hold those formation documents because I can tell you they're important because you know somebody said hey this has lasted for 47 years during this process we were looking at those documents way back from 47 years ago so um, who knows what the future holds either um, as, as much as I um, uh, think we haven't quite got a clear picture of exactly what the secretary would be at this point um, uh, I am impressed that this is a function that should be front-loaded, um, that we need to hit the bricks running with that function somehow or another in a, uh, even if it's in a very tentative kind of a way that we haven't quite clearly defined. And um, I would submit uh, at this point that there is one among us who uh, has an, an intimate working <coughs> knowledge and is available for that office. Um, whose name I would like to put into nomination, and that would be Spencer. Second. Um, and Darcel, did you get that motion? Darcel's taking minutes. Is there any public comment on this motion? Justice. Yeah. Oh, the motion is to nominate Spencer Brandt as secretary of the board, and it was uh, by Father John and seconded by George Thurlow. Oh gosh. We I'll bring mics mic. next time. We're gonna yeah. get a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think this is the largest group for one of these meetings. So, okay. The motion is to nominate Spencer Brandt as secretary of the board. Um, the, uh, the motion was made by Father John Stephen Hedges, and it was seconded by George Thurlow. Um, was there any public comment before we go back to more board discussion on this? Seeing none, we come back to the board. Um, I would suggest one amendment, just adding to the end of it, um, to carry out the duties as directed by the board of directors. Um, just to add that in, since we haven't yeah. defined the role yet. That's definitely friendly, yes. Okay. Um, so we could add to that. Is there any other uh, board comment? 
go off the yeah, question. So be, be, before, oh, before we go there really quickly, I just want to say, first off, uh, thank you, Father John. Um, I, I appreciate the confidence. Um, I have one question, which is that do we need to make a motion and pass a motion to create the Office of Secretary before we nominate the director to fill this office? Um, so move. <laughs> Second it, if necessary. Well, we're in the middle of a motion. He has to rescind yeah, his motion yeah. first. Yeah. So you have to rescind your first motion. I rescind my initial motion and second the second motion. Oh. And the second motion is move, move to establish uh, the Office of Secretary pursuant to California Government Code. And I would second that. Um, any public comment on this new motion? Seeing none, any more board comment? All right, um, we'll call the question now. Uh, Director Bertrand, aye. Director Brown? Aye. Director Freeman? Aye. Director Geis? Aye. Director Hedges? Aye. Director Jordan? Aye. Director uh, Thurlow? Thurlo. Aye. <laughs> the motion passes 7-0. Um, and so I would like to make a motion to um, nominate Spencer Brandt as the Secretary of the Isla Vista Community Services District. And I would second that. Okay. Any more board comment on this? No? Any more public comment? Mr. Bard? Uh, yes, it's a suggestion. Uh, possibly a I and I vote might be useful in some. Uh, as opposed to roll call, is that you're saying? As opposed or to roll call. Your call. I just thought I was Thank you. So um, I can say the reason that I've been calling um, it roll call is um, to be extra cautious because there are um, different things that must be voted in a different way and right now we're acting without legal counsel um, which is why I've been trying to be very safe with calling it roll call and if um, my co-directors would be amenable to that, I'd like to continue. Sure. Good. <laughs> uh, no more public mm -hmm. comment on this? <laughs> All right. Um, could you read the motion? The motion is to nominate Spencer Brandt as secretary of the board. Okay. Ready to call the question? Yes. Uh, Bertrand, aye. <coughs> Director Brandt? Abstain. Director Freeman? Aye. Director Geis? Aye. Director Hedges? Aye. Director Jordan? Aye. Director Thurlow? Aye. Motion passes, uh, six <coughs> out, one abstention. Congratulations. 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 Good. <laughs> 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 um, I just want to say thank you to everybody. Um, this project is something that is very near and dear to my heart. Um, and it is true that uh, I helped mock up the first agenda. So if you have any complaints regarding the fonts, the sizes, the graphic design, um, <laughs> you can ask me about that. Um, but uh, I, I will be honored to serve in this role, uh, and I look forward uh, to working with you all uh, in this capacity. Thank you. I need a giant speaker and a microphone. If, if I could have 10 seconds. We will. Uh, I'm, just, I, I'm just asking, asking the chair. Yes. Um, so we're about to finish up the introduction portion. We're just going to do um, reports from the board. At that time, we will call a recess for Director Freeman to go and uh, <laughs> run to his um, but Now, uh, item 1.8, here reports from the members of the board. Um, at this time, if board members have anything they would like to report about what they've been up to the past few months since we've been able to speak with each other, <laughs> or if they would like to elect to continue uh, and wave their, wave their report to continue with the meeting, that's fine too. Um, mine is thank you all so much for being here and for supporting us. Director Brown. Yeah, so I, I want to echo those thoughts. Thank you everyone who's in attendance tonight. Um, I really appreciate it, very personally, uh, and I know that all of those of us who've been working uh, on this process for you know, years, and for some of us for decades, um, it's, I think it's really humbling to see this many people out here for the very first meeting. I'm gonna try to be brief because thus far we've taken a long time to get through the introductory items. Um, but I just wanna uh, say, uh, the, the way that I got involved in this was, um, 
through my position as a uh, as a photographer at the Daily Nexus, and I started coming to AB3 meetings um, after I went and and, and went to a uh, a meeting unveiling the financial feasibility study uh, for a CSD, a city, various different governance options for Isla Vista. Uh, and it was then that I really got drawn into us, drawn into this entire thing. Um, I think that, I don't know, Alice O'Connor, our O'Connor professor, O'Connor, are you here? I saw you, uh, there you are, you're right out of my line of sight. <laughs> I took a, a, a seminar uh, entitled The History of Isla Vista Self-Governance with Alice O'Connor um, and various other people in the room. I've seen Morgan. I know, I think Sophia is here as well. Uh, and all of us, I, I think I can speak for all of us when I say we are really enthralled with this stuff and, and what a journey it has been. Um, it is still very surreal to me that that task has now fallen upon us, the board, um, to continue that journey towards self-governance and towards uh, policy for Isla Vista that is local. Um, and I, I mean, I can still remember the first time that I read uh, A Citizen's History of Isla Vista. I, I mean, I couldn't put that down. I'm sure a lot of other people, uh, <laughs> if you're uh, geeky enough to admit it, um, have, have, have been in the same place. Um, I think that in this new chapter of Isla Vista, uh, what will be really important is two things. Collaboration, number one, between uh, all entities that have a role in Isla Vista. Hmm. Obviously, the, the people of Isla Vista who were involved in the AB3 process decided that the county and the university are big enough players in Isla Vista, and the services they provide are so important that they should have a seat on this board. Um, and I agree wholeheartedly with that. Uh, I'm very excited that the county and the university are going to have a, uh, a hand in this process uh, towards self-governance on Isla Vista. Um, and I think it'll be really important to keep open lines of communication and collaboration uh, as we go through this. Um, uh, the other component of the process that really drew me in was engagement. Um, it was the fact that um, Every Tuesday night we were meeting, sitting in a circle, and really asking people, well, what do you think about this? That's something that I really want us to continue here in this room. Uh, granted, not sitting in a circle, but now, you know, where we get to talk at you, I suppose. Um, and uh, I, I think that all, all demographics <laughs> need to be... Uh, <laughs> Darcel does not believe it was talking at people. <laughs> <laughs> um, all... Uh, all demographics in Isla Vista need to be engaged. Students, long-term homeowners, long-term renters, business owners, faculty at UCSB, uh, UCSB staff, um, these are all people that play a very important role in our community. And it'll be really important um, that we make sure that all these groups have input into the actions of the Isla Vista Community Services District because otherwise I feel that we would certainly be straying from our mission uh, to self government uh, So that's, that's, that's it for my report. Thank you very much for those beautiful comments, Spencer. Um, I wholeheartedly agree. And I will avoid repeating uh, some of the things you were saying. Um, the big thing I, I would just like to say is that please bear with us. <laughs> you, you can see that we're, we're, we're trying. We're, we're trying to figure out how to make a meeting that everyone can hear us, trying to make a meeting where everyone can feel that they, they have input. Uh, and, uh, and sometimes we're, we're going to fall short. And, and please poke <coughs> us about it. And, and we'll try to do better. Um, the, uh, and and uh, I also want to say that um, I, I think that we, we need to, like, going forward, just need to make certain that as we are working on uh, agendas and documents, uh, that we make certain that everyone can feel very, very included in the process um, uh, as far as uh, making certain that no one feels that any decisions have already been made. And so that's why, if, for example, um, when I uh, announced the meeting, I just want to make, like, not announced, when I, when I put out an ad for the meeting, my ad, I, I made certain that everyone knew that nothing has been decided before today. And so if anyone has any public comment they want to um, give us, I'm sure that Ethan, Spencer, and everyone up here would agree uh, that um, we are very open to your feedback, critique, and uh, anything you want to say, please. I want to hear from yeah. you. Uh, just real briefly, um, I just want to say in this room today, there's some pretty good support from the county, Joan and Gina, Doss and Darcel. I saw the sheriff here. I saw the district attorney here. If you come from my position, those are pretty high-powered people to have here in Isla Vista to watch this process to say, 
We want to deliver good services into I Isla Vista. We want to work close with the university. We want it to be um, always improving uh, what we can do out here. And you know, my goal is to listen to the community, listen to my bosses, because I'm now not an elected official, I'm an appointed guy. <laughs> um, and uh, listen closely to the Board of Supervisors who provide a lot of the funding and the services out here. So it's important to me to figure out what they want to help improve. And so uh, that's, what, that's what I'll be doing. Over my 48 years in Isla Vista, I have um, often referred to Isla Vista as an orphan child. And in many ways, uh, it seemed that way, especially in our youth when we came here. Uh, it may not have been time then for this day, but it is time today for this day. Because that child has grown up. That child has reached out and is not just hanging with other children. That child is an adult. I ran on a slate with three whose combined age was less than mine <laughs> and found their wisdom deeper than mine, found their energy deeper, found their political savvy. But more than just political savvy, I found their good ideas and this is an idea that it was right for us all to put our hands on. And I felt honored. Well, actually, when Das, came, when, uh, das Williams came to me the first time, I said, um, what do you want to do, put a target on me? And the more I heard, the more I read, the more I thought, I was convinced that this is an idea whose time has come. And this is a day we have waited long for, and it's good to be here, and I hold it as an honor. Thank you. Um, all right. Um, Director Jordan. I don't know if I need to say that for the record, but <laughs> I just figured I would anyway. Um, I wanted to thank you all so much for being here today. Um, a lot of you uh, who are in this room today are, have been such an integral part of making this possible and I can't thank you enough and I know that the Isla Vista community, though you can't hear everyone all the time, especially all, over, all the loud music, um, <laughs> definitely thanks you as well um, and I look forward to serving you and getting to know all of you on a personal basis. <coughs> thank you so much for having me. So I'm all that stands between you and pizza, so I'm going to keep it really <laughs> short. Um, the Brown Act really has kept, the fact that we didn't have a, uh, a real district and the fact that we were operating under the Brown Act has made it very, very difficult for in this first meeting for us to get information out to the public as well as to discuss issues with each other. So I wanted to put out for you during the break, uh, and I apologize because I made 20 copies, totally underestimating. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I will have copies. We have a proposal that we want to move very, very quickly uh, that I want to put forward to the board and that um, Spencer um, has worked on as well as Ethan, which is to get an intern program going immediately so that this district has staff and essentially the best and brightest staff we could ever have are UCSB students, as well as ultimately bring in City College students. So I want to put copies of this proposal out there so you can look at it. We, again, under Brown Act, we can't act on it today, tonight, but I want to put it out there so that you at least have an opportunity to look at this before we have the discussion of it later on. Is that... Um, That's wonderful. Agreeable? Okay. It's pizza time, isn't it? Can I motion yeah. for a recess? Uh, please do. Okay. Second. Okay, so the motion was to call recess at 6.57 p.m. Uh, made by Jordan, seconded by Spencer. Uh, we now stand in recess. We are going to be in recess for 10 minutes. Until seven Thank you. Seven. Oh, 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 oh. No. Uh, <laughs> All right. Well, we, um, this is district back to order at uh, 7.13 p.m. All directors are present on the dial.
Um, so at this time, we are going to open up for public comment. Uh, during this time, members of the public may speak on any items under the subject jurisdiction matter of the Board of Directors that are not on the agenda. The Board will not take any action on these items except as the agenda, except as provided by law. Um, so at this time, anyone who would like to make a public comment, please come up to the podium. Uh, I ask that you uh, limit your comments to four minutes. Um, just in the interest of time, but if you can do it quicker, that's also very much appreciated. But we want to hear what you have to say. Thank you. So, um, I don't think that this would count as being on the agenda. I was originally going to talk on the item on the report you prepared and commend it and commend the landlord tenant thing, but really what I want to discuss is a very specific topic. So I'll go ahead and with your leave, make my comments now. I'll try to keep away under four minutes. Uh, my concern is that this board is a governmental board and it should be more of a mediator and a neutral party and not become a booster, a cheerleader, or a fanboy for one side. For instance, not for landlords and not for tenants, but be a neutral. Uh, but the area of concern I have is uh, draws upon my background, which includes taking coursework at the John Jay School of Criminal Justice and the privilege of working with some very fine uh, uh, criminal defense attorneys on various projects through my life as an activist. And that would be to discourage getting uh, too much into a role of a mere contractor for an expansion of police activity but recognize that police services are unlike trash pickup, water, and sewer, because they do involve conflict between citizens, and there are defendant citizens, as well as uh, complainant citizens. So I, I would urge you straight up from day one to recognize your role uh, you know, as a neutral arbiter, so that when, when working on uh, community policing, particularly language, may become obsolete in the uh, Trump era. And there's a lot of talk in uh, uh, law schools right now about how to respond if the federal uh, immigration and customs starts requiring local law enforcement jurisdictions and, and, and other local bodies to be in compliance with uh, federal immigration law. And there's already a lot of talk about abandoning what I consider to be now an archaic community policing model and going to another model which is specifically designed to avoid triggering uh, ICE compliance and cross-check on databases. And those of you who watch MSNBC may have seen you know, a 13-year-old girl in tears as her father was being handcuffed and he, he had a DUI, you know, a 10-year-old DUI. And we don't want this kind of thing in our community there are people in our community who are uh, not in compliance and are, are in documentado. And uh, you know, I, for one, will resist uh, blanket deportations. And if that, I, I'm hoping that what we can do at various levels of, of government and advisory agencies is, is do the research and go to our law enforcement and say, hey, here's another model that the State Attorney General of California or New York or Washington, which has a very good attorney general. And here's another model, here's another way we can handle these small infractions. So anyway, I, I think my point is probably made and taken. So I won't really belabor it any further, but uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Alex Jones. Um, I mostly just came here to congratulate the board and the community of Isla Vista. Um, it's a really exciting moment, obviously. You know, there's a lot of love in the room. You, know, you can feel it. It's, it's a really important thing. Um, but as we know, great power comes great responsibility. And, and the, the fun, the love, the excitement, the pizza, all that's over now. So now we get down to governing, right? We get down to governing, and that's when the hard work begins. But I know a couple of you a little bit, um, but I've been totally impressed with just the, the beginning of your first meeting. I mean, it is not easy to do what you guys are doing, and so I completely commend you for that. Um, <coughs> and, I mean, I'm not going to, you know, tie a bunch of time, because obviously a lot of people want to speak, but um, I will say that, you know, what you're doing is extremely important. 
local government is the best government, and regardless of what's happening in the national political world, control your controllables, which is Isla Vista, and I think you guys have a great opportunity to do great things, and I look forward to seeing that. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is uh, Dylan Raymond. I'm the Associate Student President at uh, SDCC. Um, and I am just so, I'm so excited. This is like such an amazing crowd. Um, I worked with Ethan when he was just the Isla Vista Community Representative um, on our student, bo in our student body government. And now here he is as the President of the Isla Vista Community Service System. It's so exciting. So congratulations, Ethan. And I'm just looking forward to working with all of you. Um, I wanted, I'm, I'm basically here to just pledge um, our student body's unqualified support for everything you guys are doing here. Um, I'm sure you guys are, are aware of you know what's happening um, in our community. There was a really um, there was a show of really ugly hate um, in the past two weeks in downtown. Uh, white supremacy posters being being put up. Um, a local group here in Santa Barbara was just labeled as a hate group. And so these are times. I'm not trying to cast a negative uh, you know vibe here, but these are times when this exact sort of community engagement is just so important. Um, and that we you know, are working here in solidarity to really push our community forward. And um, this is it's just exactly what we're supposed to be doing. And so I'm excited to work with you guys. Um, and I can't wait to see what we're going to do. So let's get to work. Thank you. Thank you. I go a couple seconds over. You're going to have to uh, excuse me because this is a big moment. Uh, my name is Jonathan, for everybody who doesn't know me. Can you hear me, by the way? Is this working? Okay. Uh, I lived here for seven years, and I served as associate student's president when the self-governance movement really started to crest, and I now serve everyone here as the representative for Isla Vista on the Santa Barbara City College Board of Trustees. So, I just really want to recognize how historic this moment is. Uh, it's really surreal. Surreal. It's just cool, you know. I mean, we have we created local government. Isn't that something you don't really do every day? Uh, but I do want everyone here to just take a pause and a moment of mindfulness to really recognize, you know, when in time we are. Like this is going to be talked about in Isla Vista forever. Like the things we do today is going to be are going to be talked about forever. You know, someone 40 years from now is going to be watching this video the same way. You know, some of us were reading minutes from the community council back in 1977. Uh, so I think this is a very a moment that we should all recognize uh, of its importance, especially for the board in terms of mindfulness. You know, we're we're going to be setting. Uh, you all are going to be setting not just policy precedent, but emotional precedent. Uh, you know, we hear with the IVRPD there are still sometimes feelings from some meeting that happened in the 80s uh, or some conflicts that happened in the 90s. So what we do today and how we move forward, you know, you're going to be writing the history books. Uh, every, every action you take is going to be uh, scrutinized and looked at. And you have a, I, I'm not envious of the responsibility you have. But I'm, I'm here to support you. I think this is the best board you could have ever hoped for for the Community Services District. I'm so happy each and every one of you got elected. And I have your back uh, no matter what. Uh, I, I also want to talk about the lack of the tax for the community services district, ah, community services district. I think it's an opportunity, not an obstacle. So, you know, Isla Vista is an inherently innovative community. I think we have the potential here to be the most progressive local government. Not progressive in like the commonly used way right now, that too, but in terms of how we innovate, how we run a local government, this is where it happens. So, I want to mention very quickly that the Isla Vista Community Development Corporation, so similar acronym, one letter off, uh, is doing a fundraising campaign for the CSD. It's a $40,000 startup fund to support the programs of the Isla Vista Community Services District. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Frank Thompson printed these very cool uh, postcards. You might have seen them. Talk to me, talk to him, talk to Cameron after the meeting if you'd like to give. It's tax deductible. Um, and we, we really, we're going to be asking everybody in Isla Vista pay the tax voluntarily. We're going to be asking mm -hmm. people who've lived here have a strong connection to the community. You know, no other place in the United States, probably in the whole world, has a alumni network. Uh, people live in IV and then move, and they still hold this place as one of the most important places that they've ever lived and where you know they became, they grew up. So I think that we have a 
big potential base to help support the CSD while it's getting off the ground. Now I just want to say, I know I'm almost out of time probably, but I really can't believe we're here. I mean, I, I remember the first day I heard about this in AS Maine, uh, and people were saying, this is impossible. You, you could never do this. Like, this is cr a crazy idea. Uh, and I remember sometimes feeling it was pretty impossible. I mean, Cameron and I had so many late all-nighters in a week in February. I always remember, we didn't sleep for three days working on this. Literally three days we didn't sleep uh, working on this. But it seemed impossible at times, but we're really here. And this is really concrete proof that you know, an organized community with a vision can undo a political truth. And political truths are not real. Uh, and we've, I think we proved that wrong. So I'd like to recognize, though, that there were some people in IV and outside of IV who were against uh, self-determination for the community. And I really hope that they are happily proven wrong, that this is successful. So to finish off, I just want to thank everybody who had the hope, the trust, and passion to make this happen. Uh, Doss Williams for introducing mm -hmm. Assembly Bill 3, unprecedented what he did. You know, no one's created a district like this since before 1960. So what he did and championed for us is unbelievable. The UCSB trustees, they really changed the paradigm. You know, there was some contention three years ago about that, but they're the ones who made the university in support of self-governance. That was a big difference from in the past. I want to thank Marcelo Marquez and Dick Flax who were personally helping me out when I first won, like, May 2014, I had no idea. I was like, should I stay? So I want to acknowledge them, and you know, they were very good mentors to me. Um, all the staff at Santa Barbara County who, in all these meetings, week after week, provided expert information to us to help make good decisions. Uh, Josh Plotke, who without him, most of us who advocated for this would have no idea what the technical details of the community services district were. So he was the first one who brought it to me, he brought it to Darcel, he brought it to Cameron. I mean, he really got this idea of a community services district out there. Um, I want to thank the students. The students have been at the forefront of every movement, you know, nationwide, but also here. And specific students are um, Ali Guthy, who was the AS president uh, when this process started, Beatrice Contreras, who was EVPLA, external vice president of local affairs for AS for a short time at the beginning, hosted the first town hall, Carlos Lopez, uh, who we tabled for months outside the Pardell Center to get people involved in the meetings, Ash Khan, who made sure that AS was 100% uh, behind this, as well as Paola, um, as well as Alexander Moore, who uh, may, maybe some people don't know anymore, he's a little dated. Uh, but he was EVPLA <laughs> at my time. Um, and, I, and just the whole AS, Associate Students, Executive Officers from 2013-14, you know, they were the ones who really sat down at the university. Darcel was at that meeting with me in April, I think it was April 28th, if I remember correctly, where we sat down and we told the university, this is the way we want to go forward. Um, I want to thank the community, uh, Luann Miller, the Dixons, Arthur Kennedy, Diana Puentes, uh, the Fund for Santa Barbara, who funded a lot of these efforts and made sure we got our financial feasibility study, Frank Thompson and Len Lenny Evenstein. And I especially want to thank the two people who I did this with, who we, you know, we were in it together in the trenches every day, Darcel, Elliot, and Cameron Chunk. You know, I, it's an unforgettable experience. I mean, what these two did, too, is incredible. And one last thing, I just want to close, that you know, we all recognize that this process really took off when the Delta Tokyo riot happened, April 4th, 2014. But I do want to recognize that it took the murder of six people for anybody to wake up and start really supporting Ala Vista. So I want to recognize their names. Sorry, I'm still, you know, three years later. Uh, Katie, Veronica, Christopher, James, David, and George. So I want to close with, you know, in their memory. Thank you. Thank you. Um, currently I serve as external vice president for local affairs and associate students, but I'm just here 
uh, as myself and as a resident of Isla Vista and a student, someone who I remember uh, almost three years ago, which is starting to sound really scary, it's been that long, uh, was sitting over there on subway uh, with Cameron just hearing about this pipe dream idea of the CSD. And I was like, dude, I just want to, I just want to be a chief staff, like I don't know what you're talking about. Um, <laughs> But then, uh, as I came along this process and saw what was going on, it was absolutely amazing. And uh, like John said, there's so many people to thank for this whole process, but I just want to maybe speak a little bit to what this really means um, as a student history, like what this really means for Isla Vista in the long term. And we have some people in this room. Lizzie Schmidt is currently doing her thesis on self-governance right now. Uh, and some of the things that she's shown me has been amazing. And so all I can think of is, uh, you know, 10 years from now, what people are going to be talking about today. Um, it's really history in the making as it happens. Uh, there's a lot to be done. I commend the board for uh, stepping up to take on this huge responsibility. Um, you're not going to make Isla Vista perfect, and I really hope no one expects that of you because you're here to represent interests. You're here to make the changes you can every day, just like this process was an everyday process of just working, working, working organically, find out what's wrong and what needs to be fixed. Um, no one should expect the world from you, but you know people should expect a lot in the sense that they're, you're here, they listen, and uh, you're going to make Isla Vista better. Um, and as much as a lot of this comes out of a lot of kind of what Jonathan left on a lot of dark places, um, I don't want people to think that, you know, this process and Isla Vista as a whole uh, is like this, you know, blot in this like area, you know, like it's more like that little picture on the wall. Uh, for as many problems Isla Vista has, uh, it's like I, uh, Jonathan also said, and I'm quoting you a lot, so now I'm totally been overshadowed. Um, uh, is that you know people leave here in this place holds a very special heart uh, place in their heart and I know it will for almost everyone in this room because you're here now uh, and you're ready to be a part of this process so as someone who was a part of this for for, uh, for so long and still can't believe that I'm sitting here right now talking to the new elected board of the community services district uh, I just want to commend you and thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone finds any keys? One of our friends seems to have lost her keys. So if you see keys yeah. uh, by your seat, just uh, hold them up, please. Thank you. Um, I'm Darcel Elliott. Oh, For those of you who don't know, um, I facilitated the community process that um, resulted in AB3 in this district. Um, and that has and always will be the proudest chapter of my professional career. Um, I have a message not only to the board but the entire community. Um, for those who went through the community meetings and for those of you who were not able to participate in them for whatever reason, um, I am extremely proud of this community and the process that we went through to create this district. This is a one-of-a-kind district, tailor-made for Isla Vista. Every single step by step of this bill was a compromise by someone in some way to make Isla Vista better. I can tell you the, what John, the proposal that Jonathan and Cameron first brought to us in, um, in Doss's office, this is not that district. Um, they compromised the <laughs> um, And I always brag that AB3 is not 100% of what anybody wanted, and that's a good thing, because governance is about compromise. And I just want to remind everyone to keep your own worldview in check and remember how diverse Isla Vista is. You know, it's 90% student, but there's a lot of other people that live here. And we just need to try to keep every, every Isla Vista resident in mind whenever we're making a decision and trying to figure out the best way to move forward. And remember the history. This, this was not the first attempt at self-governance. I always say the CSD in itself was a compromise. Um, over the last 30 years, the debate has been between cityhood and staying in an unincorporated community with just a municipal advisory council. And the CSD is somewhere in the middle. And that's where we should always end up, is remembering the history, remembering where, what, where we've been before and how we can move forward and how we can accomplish things in the future. So thank you so much to the board. I'm, I'm really proud of all of you and I'm excited to see you get to work. see this district grow up. That's not what here what I'm here to talk about today, um, although it's been lovely. Um, I just wanted to make a really brief comment on uh, something that our first uh, community commenter, Jeff, brought up. Um, certainly, I really agree with the meat of his comment about defending our undocumented communities um, from ICE, and I hope that every single one of you um, defends the rights of every resident constituent that you have here in Isla Vista. 
Um, however, um, excuse me. And um, I do think that you should be a neutral arbitrator, as he said, when um, mediating conflicts between residents here in Alavista. However, the specific example that he brought up um, of landlord-tenant issues, um, while certainly every tenant in Isla Vista is a resident and a constituent of yours, most landlords in Isla Vista actually aren't residents and they're not your constituents. So I don't feel like you have the responsibility to fight for their rights unless you are their or unless they are your constituents. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Very technical. Thank you. <laughs> This is, um, I haven't prepared anything because I don't know what to say still. Um, and I didn't know what to say in the line, and I didn't know what to say in the car earlier. Um, and I, the only promise I made myself is I'm not going to cry in front of all of you, because <laughs> I sound really gross when I cry, so that's <laughs> the problem. Um, I, f I first want to thank a few people, and actually, it's first it's the folks sitting at this table, um, especially George, because I never thought I'd see you here. <laughs> <laughs> it was hard enough to get George at our Tuesday night meeting, so seeing him here is... Um, <laughs> 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 had to, George. Um, but I wanted to thank all of you with the utmost sincerity, because you all responded to a really crazy call to serve. Um, that I, from the first day of pushing the thing that you're doing now, said, I'll never serve on that. I don't want to serve on that board. Um, because I don't, right? Because this is a huge undertaking. This is powerful, what you're about to do. Um, but I don't want it to get to your heads. And so really quickly, I, if I can, want to check you on the fact that none of you can make laws, and this isn't some big, scary district that's going to change everything about Isla Vista. And like another speaker pointed out, I want to remind the audience of that too, that this is a foundation for bigger and better things, but this is not it. These folks up here can only take you so far as a community. I could only take this group so far. I could only take this idea so far. And I think with everything in Isla Vista, you see that there are layers of iteration and that people have come and failed and come and failed, and eventually you see success. Um, and so if anything, I want to remind you to not be let down by your failures, to not be taken aback by them, to not quit. Because there are going to be a lot of times where you feel like you're never going to get past that impasse. And I want you to have the tenacity to move forward regardless of what people will tell you. Because people will tell you that your idea to create a community services district will never work. Um, and here we are. So with that said, I only have two more people to thank, um, and they're the people who come into my mind every time I think about any part of this process. Um, and that's Darcel Elliott and Jonathan Abood. Um, people who I am still blessed to call my closest friends. So I'm done before I start crying. Thank you. <laughs> Hi everyone, uh, my name is Carlos Lopez. Um, I'm one of the directors of the Isla Vista Recreation and Parks Board here in Isla Vista, uh, but not speaking officially on their behalf tonight. Uh, but I did want to take a chance to uh, unofficially welcome this board into the ex existence and to the uh, surprisingly huge job of governing our town here in Isla Vista. Um, I just want to say that um, from a st uh, student perspective, I'm not a student any longer, but I was for most of the time that I uh, was working on this project that this board has uh, various powers to do, to put forth um, services and to you know, help citizens, but I think a bigger thing, and something that hasn't quite been commented on yet, is just the simple concrete fact of having a formal community-wide government. I think that so many people come to Isla Vista from all over the country and all over the world, and they see an issue with their housing or with their rent or with streets, and they say, Who's in charge here? Who do I speak to about this? And there's the county, and of course, uh, there's me and the fellow directors of the park board. But fundamentally, for many of these issues, the answer is really no one. Really, you know. And so, even though the powers may be limited here, it is a massive thing um, psychologically to simply have a group of people who's, you know, take, are taking every single day to care about Isla Vista and to hear about its issues and to do everything they can to fix it. So thank you all, and I hope that the greatest success for all of your endeavors. Thank you. Thank you. So when I came here 15 years ago, I 
go around and sit. Actually, I can't do it. But no, I'm not normally. Uh, I, I thank you that you're all here joining the park district and the, <coughs> the clinic and the food co op and the out of the state projects in being locally controlled people serving the community. I was hoping he had a little more to say. Um, I can't claim local, actually. I used to come here as a tourist myself in 98, and every summer after that, we watched the market, the local community here. And as a mom with young children, a, a lot of my, my focus in going back to school was to help clean up beaches a little bit with some of the homeless population. And so as a student, I'm here this semester researching from a different university. Ironically, the fact that you guys have every single one of you probably put in your time, your lab labor, your efforts is amazing. It is a miracle. And it's such a privilege for those of us who haven't been part of it to see it. Um, I do agree with what you said, though. I think that when you have something like this, a model that can be replicated. I'm a CAT, also a CIT student, and so I think with software and the digital technology, there's so much that can be done when it's done right. And so I think for a nation, there's there's probably more hope right here than I've heard in so long. So thank you, every single one of you, for the work and the effort that you guys have done forward for people. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, Ma'am, may we ask for your name? Oh, excuse me, Demery Sorensen. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Jacob LaBelle. I'm also one of the directors of the Park District, but not speaking on their behalf tonight. And I just I want to start off by saying thank you for all of you who have stepped up to help represent our community and all the people that put so much time and effort in getting us here today. And as as well as everyone who came out to meetings like this and became more of part of the process and drew inspiration and involvement from that. And uh, you all have um, like many tasks and a lot of work ahead of you. And um, like with, with all the projects, just one of the ones that I hope you continue to focus on is making this government feel really inclusive. That Isla Vista is a place of transition. It's a place that people come and they're never quite the same after leaving. And that with, with you being a government trying to represent many more aspects of Isla Vista and life here, um, one of my, my big hopes is that we can help make it more of a place that when people come here, civic engagement is one of the things that they take on and take away with them. Thank you. Thank you. Any last public comment? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't know how many money was. Hi. So my name is Roshandra Erdman, because I know you asked her names just now. Um, and I just want to say thank you for everyone here and everyone in this room. And this is super important. Um, it's pretty relevant about what I have going on. And the thing is, um, I was raped January 7th, trigger warning. I should have gave that before. And my case has been sitting here on the DA's, not the DA's desk, but my detective's desk for um, Two months now, this, this is now March 7th. Um, I was told by the mayor that she didn't have jurisdiction over this area, so she couldn't help me, so she directed me to um, a sheriff, Sheriff Bill Brown. Um, so I'm here because I guess this is who I would now go to for the help of my rape case. I turned in all my evidence and DNA evidence by myself. That means I walked it in um, to the foot patrol here on Trigo. I lived on Seville. The individual lived on Trigo. They never approached him. He was able to flee and get a lawyer before he was ever approached or before I got help. The reason I'm here is because I'm guessing this is all the important people in this room that would that would probably care about this. You know, like um, if I couldn't go to a mayor um, and the sheriff, you know, told me he was satisfied with what was going on investigatively, that's words verbatim, then this is what Isla Vista needs. Um, I, I believe that's what Isla Vista needs. Hopefully that this board will be able to help people like me at Isla Vista. Um, I'm not the only person that walked the same streets as the person that raped them. I, I know that for a fact. I know that on the same day I was raped, there were six same cases um, similar to mine, and that none of them got UCSB alerts, which I totally went in and checked on that alert, but because he was not a UCSB student and we didn't have a campus clear curve, she um, she wasn't able to you know make those alerts for me. But this is not to you know make you guys scared. It's just we do got a lot of work to do. Just understand that me as a citizen and a resident of Isla Vista, as of now I'm from Inglewood, California. Um, just understand that um, with with even without this board. Survive, like I'm fighting. 
I, I have been fighting for what's going on. My case shouldn't be there. I was told that it was on a DA's desk. She contacted me yesterday and broke my heart when she told me that it was um, actually, she didn't have it on her desk. It hadn't even been reviewed. It was not sent back or rejected. It never reached there. But I was told that it was there by somebody on campus, and that means my detective so, told somebody on campus to tell me that it was there. So this is what's going on right here on Treagle. So protect us. I would like to feel safe in Isla Vista. Like, I never had to call a CSO officer to walk home because I love this community. I feel very safe. Also, I just want to address the fact that we're calling rape a culture here. I know it's not relevant to this meeting, but I live in Isla Vista, so I'm going to address it. Rape is not a culture. It is a crime. It's not a culture. People come here because they think, well, we allow it to be perpetuated here. That's why they sit here and they come here for a rape culture. Come here for the Isla Vista culture, the family, the love, the Deltopia without the riot. And the riot was not even a riot. Like, come here for what we do as students, but not what the criminals do and are allowed to do and are allowed to stay because they sit here and they had me feeling like I was a criminal and I reported my rape. Think I really want to go through that? Like, I have to speak to rooms like this. I just came from BSU meeting speaking on the same thing. Because nobody answered my calls. I don't get calls back from my detectives. Last time I talked to my detective was February 4th. It's March 7th. Thank you guys. Thank y'all. Thank everybody in this room. But again, my case number is 170458. Public information, you can look up yourself. Ask me any questions you want to ask me, but understand I'm a citizen of Isla Vista. For anybody who has ever had a drug put in their drink, who has ever had anybody harass them, violate them, I'm fighting my ass off for y'all. Even if this board don't fight or Isla Vista don't fight. If Mayor uh, Schneider is not fighting, if somebody ain't fighting for you, like I will stand in a tent by myself and fight for myself. I care about my body. I care about y'all rights. I'm a fourth year. I had to withdraw, but trust and believe before I walk that stage and I graduate, I'm going to fight my ass off for everybody here, for everybody that's not sending their students to UCSB because people are being raped out here and cases are sitting on desks and never getting sent to a DA. Thank you. Have a blessed night. I am the Isla Vista Community Advisor for Associated Students. And first I want to just acknowledge what the sister has spoke to because I think that is something so strong and powerful and I think it's the reminder of why so many of us have uh, felt the need for uh, our ability to gather as a community and to gather our strength and our leverage as a community to be able to address the issues that are impacting us. Um, I came to Isla Vista uh, in July of 2014 in the aftermath of the May tragedy and all the other tragedies that happened um, during that time. And I came in as the Isla Vista Community Advisor, uh, trying to see where it was that I could contribute and where I could jump in to do the work. And there's been a lot of work to do. Uh, a couple of weeks after I got here, uh, we organized the first town hall that happened over the summer that began the discussion about self-governance and kind of continued on that path. And one of the things that I think has been so remarkable about the work of this community is that it is so far reaching and broad reaching that this community has really invested itself in knowing that there isn't a representative body to really go to other than of course the great work of the IVRPD that really has taken that agency upon ourselves to step forward into the community and to fill those gaps where they exist. Um, and the work I think of the last few years for me has really um, been this community building effort that has focused a lot of time around equity and around inclusion. And how do we make sure that we're talking about inclusion and equity in all the work that we're doing? Um, and I think that that is some of the work certainly that is before this board is to make sure that we are really radically looking at including other members of our community into this space um, and into even the makeup of our um, you know, beloved uh, Ivy Community Services District. Um, I'm really conscious of the incredible amount of efforts that were, were required by so many people to make this happen, as has been spoken about earlier today, not only over the last few years, but over the, the last many decades. And I think that one of the things that happens in Ala Vista is how many people are kind of in the back, you know, behind the stage, in the shadows, in different spaces, and they're doing the work, and they're dedicated to doing it. And we have to find more ways to really include them in this effort, and to make sure that even when they're not at, in the space, that we are representing them. For me personally, one part of the community that that is really significant for not only is, of course, our students, but also the Latino community. And one of the things that we spend a lot of time discussing in the formation of the Community Services District is how do we make sure that that uh, relationship continues to be developed with the Latino members of our community. 
And so even when we're talking about our agenda items, even when we're talking about our presentations, even when we're talking about the archiving of documents and information about what our process is, I want to encourage us to constantly be thinking about the radical inclusion of all members of the community into this process, and to encourage you in the same way that we did during those Tuesday meetings, to make sure that you continue to reach out to the community even when they're not coming up here to be represented. But that, that spirit of equity and inclusion is really the charge, I hope, at least one part of the charge um, that you take. So I thank you in advance for your contributions, um, and I thank all of you for everything you have already contributed to this effort, and to know that this is history in the making, um, and we have a lot of work to do. Um, but I think that we are ready to do it. Hi all, my name is Justice. Um, I just want to speak, um, echoing in the words of Diana, um, uh, in communities that are often overlooked, um, I just want to bring to attention and put out the trans community um, in Isla Vista is very important, it's often overlooked. Um, I just want to put that all on the table and make sure that everyone um, have that in their minds as a community that they want to reach out to and include because there is tons and tons of trans harassment that goes on every day around Isla Vista and I want to make sure that this board takes that as a priority in their eyes. So I just want to put that on the table. Uh, thank you so much for your time. All right. Thank you so much for all of our uh, public speakers. Um, seeing no more public comment, we are now uh, going to Continue on with our discussion items. Chair, Ber Chair Bertrand, can I can I make a um, a suggestion? Absolutely. Uh, we we have your hard work has given us a overflowing plate of business tonight, and um, I know we have a super we have a supervisor here um, who uh, I think we should invite to speak because her time is important. But I, I would suggest in terms of efficiency that we move to the items that create subcommittees of this board mm -hmm. and quickly move as many of these items on our agenda into those committee meetings and set committee meetings and, and move this huge body of work into committee where we're going to have most of our work done. Thank you. I, uh, I think that's an excellent suggestion. Um, so at this time, uh, we will move into the discussion um, part of the meeting, um, barring. Someone has to make a motion to do it. Yes. So where, where do you want to go? Oh. Okay. You want to make a motion? You, you want a motion? Yes. To do that? Yes. Okay, so uh, Chair, I would move that we uh, move uh, the report from the Office of the Third District to our next agenda item. And immediately after that, we move to the formation of subcommittees of this board. <coughs> and I'll second that. Um, I'll second. I'll second that. As a chair, I don't think you're allowed. He's yeah. not allowed because he's chairing the meeting. Uh, I'm the second. <laughs> She's good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any um, public comment? Seeing on any more board comment? Okay. Um, we'll oh, call well, um, with, with, so in the motion, I'm sorry. Um, it's, it, we haven't also included in that motion moving items yet into committee. It's did, right now we're just reorganizing the schedule and then we would decide on an okay. Correct. 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 Uh, seeing no further uh, discussion, I'll call the question. Uh, Director Bertrand, aye. Director Brandt, aye. Director Freeman, aye. Director Geis. Uh, I didn't know if we would wanted to hear from Supervisor Hartman to see if she did want to speak <laughs> tonight. Uh, she's, on, she's, on, she's, on, she's on the agenda. She's on. I got it. Okay. <laughs> Aye. Uh, Director Hedges? Aye. Director Jordan? Aye. Director Aye. Dolo? Uh, Supervisor Hartman? Thank you very much, uh, and I appreciate uh, everybody's time is important, and I think how many people decided to spend their time tonight here in this room is a mark of a number of things. One, Isla Vista has felt like an orphan, and I think tonight shows that people from throughout the county uh, ha are here and celebrating today, and, and 
there's something magical about this community and people want to touch it, they want to be a part of it, they want to support it. And that is true for the county as well. This is the crown jewel uh, in our county and we want to make sure that the CSD succeeds. I, uh, we began by appointing the very best person we could think of with affection and deep knowledge of the Isla Vista community and that's Bob Geis. And uh, I'm very delighted that the university has also appointed somebody who has a deep love and knowledge of uh, Isla Vista and UCSB and how to make partnerships work with George Thurlow. So uh, I'm very pleased about that. Uh, my office has committed some money. We don't have a huge budget. It's a difficult time, but we have committed some money for the Municipal Advisory Committee, and that will be an opportunity to further engage the broad interests throughout this community. I'd also like to introduce my field director for Isla Vista, Gina Fisher. <coughs> and please stand up, Gina. Uh, she's Work. And I, I think one thing you're hearing tonight is, although you may have eight powers, uh, people come to you with a much broader array of concerns, and you may or may not be able to deal with them directly, but people do expect you to connect them to the services they need, and that's a very important aspect of the job I'm finding as, as a new third district supervisor, and I think all of you will find as well. Uh, this is indeed a historic moment, and I hadn't fully appreciated that until I went to the exhibit in the special collections in the library. And there, uh, somehow seeing it behind the, the display cases and documents that you may not think at the time are so important, and then you see how critical they were and how people uh, in the archives uh, take care of these documents and look back to interpret where we are today. And so that really got me thinking about the CSD and the history of the CSD. And it turns out that uh, I, I went to the grand jury report that was published in 2002, and there were 15 studies looking back at various issues surrounding UCSB and Isla Vista and saying that if you trace them all back to a single issue, uh, the issue is the jury, the grand jury determined that one major finding and its related recommendation was basic to the multitude of problems of the Isla Vista University community. No agency has been charged with responsibility to correct the problems that have been identified and studied for decades. So the jury is compelled to ask Isla Vista who's in charge. And now, we know. <laughs> so you really are going to be in that display case uh, in, in the library some decades here, the founding board. And, and the, the procedures, the protocols, the demeanor, uh, you're setting the tone for the next decades and for what's going to happen here in Isla Vista. And I pledge to you that I will do all within my power to support you. And I think you see a community that is eager in every way to support you because Isla Vista is a magic place. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And as, a, as this is an agenda item, we are allowed to respond and ask any questions that we may have. Um, if any of my uh, fellow board directors have any questions for the supervisor, or her representative, if the supervisor needs to step out. <laughs> I'll, I'll be back oh. next time. <laughs> <laughs> this won't be your last opportunity. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you um, very much. Uh, I, know where to I do have a question. For <laughs> Will you be? I guess you're not staying then for the discussion of AB 722, which is related to you in a way. I can, I can probably field questions. Cool. I, I, I'm not asking that you will. I'm just verifying that that's the case. <laughs> and I would just like to thank uh, the third district supervisor's office for making this meeting possible and setting out our agenda, um, working with me and Spencer to put this all together. Um, Joan and Gina have both been tremendous allies, and that is very grateful. Um, and is there any public comment on this agenda item? 
before we move on. Good. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. I just wanted to acknowledge the, the work of Doreen Farr, our former third district supervisor, and her support of these efforts as well. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Doreen. All right. Um, all right. So, uh, may I make a motion? Yes. Okay. Motion to suspend the orders of the day and move to action items. To action item section? Absolutely. So there's one, uh, before we go there, uh, we do have a representative from Assemblymember Limon's oh. office um, oh. for the 722. <laughs> if we were to just perhaps do that first, really. I rescind my motion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, would someone like to make a motion, though, for us to go out of order so to, uh, to accommodate oh. that? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I motion to move to discussion item 3.2. Sorry. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes 7-0. Um, so now, um, discussion item 3.2, Assembly Bill 722, authored by Monique Limon, Assembly Member of the 37th District. Um, on February 15th, Assembly Member Limon introduced Assembly Bill 722 to amend Assembly Bill 3, um, authored by then Assembly Member Doss Williams, to declare the positions of the County Supervisor and Director of the Isla Vista Community Services District Compatible Offices. Um, and we are so privileged to have with us um, Samantha, Field Representative of Assembly Member Limon. Thanks. Uh, yeah. If that's okay. Yeah. There you go. Just gotta click it on. Okay. It's right on the side. There you go. You got it. Hello? Hello. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, so I don't know if anybody has any questions about uh, AB 722. I have some copies, but not enough for the entire room, unfortunately. I underestimated how many people would be here tonight. Um, but so essentially what this bill does is it continues the intent of AB 3. So when AB 3 was passed, everybody thought that these were compatible offices. And then the, legis then the council, like, um, the attorneys for the uh, county informed us that those were not compatible offices. So we're just trying to continue the intent of AB3 and make a bill that essentially does exactly what everybody thought it would. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Do any of our uh, directors have questions? I, I, I just have a comment to, to that. I. You know, when somebody brought this issue up to me before county council weighed in, I kind of used, you know, the famous word, oh, that's just bold, you know. With the, and, and there's the supervisors serve a lot of other dependent special districts, and that's <coughs> not an incompatible role, whether it be flood control or the county fire district or uh, our county service area, Isla Vista service area 31. The board serves in both those capacities. So... There is this issue, though, that if you have an independent district, there's sometimes some incompatibility thing. So I, I think this is uh, a no-brainer piece of legislation, and I don't see any incompatibilities um, that exist. So why they would not, this legislation wouldn't pass. So it, it has my support, and uh, Joan would be a great representative. And just for me, uh, my term's for two years, but if she has the opportunity to get appointed and has the time and effort to do it, I'll gladly step aside and put her in my place <laughs> when that occurs. Uh, I would just like to add that um, the, the bill is designed not just to allow a supervisor to serve, but also someone from the CEO's office or another department uh -huh. head. Yeah, so it's designed so. to give us a broader range of people we could choose from. Hmm. But for the moment, I don't think there's anybody who knows more and can add more value than Bob Guy. So we're very pleased about that. <laughs> I would say, however, that LAFCO, uh, their nose is a bit out of 
shape. They were out of shape because they didn't like that this went to the legislature and not through the traditional processes. And they are likely to uh, oppose the bill. So we may ask for some support before LAFCO testifying that this is a good thing to do. I don't have questions, but I do have comments. Okay, Go for it. For okay. uh, may I have the or maybe that not yet? All right, so um, uh, one, one thing, my, my understanding is that the bill actually, as currently worded, um, does not actually allow for somebody from the CEO's office in order to take the position. Um, it actually is explicitly worded as the uh, um, third district supervisor. It um, was amended. It was amended. Okay, thank it's you. Being amended. That's what the, it's being, this is the amendment. No, no, that's not what I mean. I'm saying that I've read the amendment, and the amendment that I read only stated that it was the, um, the, the third district supervisor. I saw that. It's being amended. That's being amended. Got Good. It. Yeah. Amending okay. Amendments. Got it. <laughs> yeah. The amendment is being amended. <laughs> amended. Okay. Um, so I guess a, a little bit of a little bit of background that I want to provide here is that one of the more controversial aspects of this district is the fact that we have two unelected positions on it. I spent the last few days going and talking to various people about the giving them a copy of the agenda and a copy of the 90-day action plan. And by far, the number one question that I received is. Why are there seven positions, two of which are not elected by the people of Isla Vista, and two of which don't apparently even have to be members, uh, residents of Isla Vista? Um, I was there when this was happening, uh, and at times it has been discussed as, well, this was essentially a unanimous discussion of the people who were the work in that AB3. That was not true. I mean, if nothing else, I was always against. Uh, and I believe there are other people even here in this audience who were against. Now, the... Uh, that said, I had actually at the time made the comment that if we're going to have somebody from the county, I would like to see it be the third district supervisor. And this is a, com this is a, a concept that then ended up, um, people were like, oh yeah, that, that makes sense. Now, I'm not saying that I caused that idea. I'm just saying that, like we all kind of have been talking about that. And that is incorrect that, some, um, that uh, people were talking about the being third district supervisor. The way the bill ended up getting written, though, I think is very interesting, which is that I had been under the impression, at when, I, when I had thought that, that this position would be serving at the whim of the Board of Supervisors, and that the Board of Supervisors would be able to essentially remove the position, uh, to remove the person and replace them. That essentially this position was to be acting as a representative of the Board of Supervisors. But the way that it actually works out is that Bob Geis has now been appointed for two years, and Bob is now autonomous. So if Bob ends up deciding on things that do not end up working in the way that the Board of Supervisors had thought when he was appointed, that he actually gets to do what he wants, and only if uh, he decides to step down, and he's mentioned being willing to be do so so graciously, I don't, maybe don't do it so quickly, um, <laughs> that, that then the Board of Supervisors would be able to go in and put in somebody new. Uh, I, I thereby am now at the point where I am actually against AB 722, uh, I actually would prefer to have the slightly more autonomous position as appointed by the Board of Supervisors um, that would allow us to have some sway back against this position in order to have some more local control. Uh, now, of course, other people up here are quite likely to disagree with me, but that is, that's, that's some commentary that I have. Hmm. So. Hmm. Uh, any other board comments? Um, I'll just make a comment real quick. Uh, based on what I've heard of Assembly Bill 72, based on what I've heard from um, our esteemed supervisor, I am uh, at this point in favor of the bill um, because I, I do think that in this case we really lucked out with Director Geis and I really look forward to serving with him. And in the future they can, there can be many great uh, non-supervisors members of this board, but I do appreciate the opportunity that the bill has for a member of the Board of Supervisors um, and in the future for a executive at the county to serve on this board. Is there any other board comment before we go out to the public? Any other comment on that? Um, uh, so, and also one thing to state is, is that right now we very much like our supervisor, um, but that has not always been the case in the past. Uh, and so in, th in some cases I, I've, I've heard stories of supervisors that we've had that people have just drastically disliked. And so uh -huh. uh, much like when we see at the national level people asking the question, why is it when we like the president that we keep giving them powers and when we don't like a president we don't sit around and restrict their powers, um, I would prefer to keep powers restricted between these levels um, and such that when we, we have those restrictions if we need them in the future. 
uh, now taking public comment. So as one of the people that wrote Assembly Bill 3, I believe I'm uniquely qualified to speak on the intent of the bill. Um, and so when we wrote this language, we did intend for the third district supervisor or another high level county administrator to be able to serve on the board. Because as, as Jay mentioned, one of, that he was the one who first brought up the comment of, well, it should be the third district supervisor that serves them. But then there was a conversation that, oh, then we should have the chancellor also serve. And I actually asked legislative council can we compel the third district supervisor and the chancellor to serve on a board? Turns out you cannot legally require someone to turn on um, to serve on a board. So we we came back to the community. This is a six week long discussion on board makeup. I reviewed all of the notes and, and process for this, um, and at the, looked at the vote. Um, and so we decided that it had we had wanted it to be a county administrator because the point of having a county appointee as lovely as you are, Bob, and as knowledgeable as you are, is um, to have someone high up who can speak on behalf of the county and um, have a, a representative from the county sit in front of the community and answer questions from the community about what the county is doing in Isla Vista because we have not had that consistently. And that was the point of this. And it was originally, so then we went from having it be the third district supervisor make the appointment to when then at that mo that was the week that Doreen retired and we were all like oh crap who's our next third district supervisor going to be we have no idea this is a swing district we shouldn't make give that power to the whole board of supervisors and um that's how that amendment came to be so that's why it's it's and this uh bill would i've been working closely with assembly member Lamone's office on this um it would merely allow the third district supervisor or another high level when, when the new amendment goes into uh, process um, to serve on the board and have it not be an incompatible office. It wouldn't compel them to, it wouldn't require them to, it just allow it. And um, and I hope you know this board and this community would be engaged in that process in the future should the third district supervisor want to serve and you don't want them to serve. <laughs> um, I don't think this community has ever been shy when they don't like an elected representative that they have. So. Um, yeah, so that's basically, that's that's the history of it. And I'm also going to be recording a live history of the Isla Vista Community Services Group process. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, uh, Ms. Elliott. Uh, are there any other public comments? Yeah, uh, I'm a little reluctant because I haven't really studied it, and I haven't gone to as many meetings, but I've studied government all my life. Not raised really religiously, but every summer I went down to Washington, D.C., my beloved grandfather visited all the monuments of American government. For me, that is my religion. And I have been burning the candle at both ends, studying the corruption that has crept in to my beloved federal government. So I really feel compelled to jump in and throw my two cents in on this. And I love Joanne Hartman, but Robert Geis, I've also observed for about the five, past five, six, seven years, I've been going to the Board of Supervisors very frequently. And A, we're very lucky to have them, but the real important point is, I really am developing a strong distaste for conflicts of interest and overbooked officials. And those supervisors are all on like half a dozen or a dozen different committees, and they just don't have time. And we were lucky with, with Ms. Barr because she was she, she's very a lot of brain power, but there was such a concentration of power in that one individual that I found it rather put off. And it's very difficult when a person has a conflict of interest to really be objective and sort things out. So while I wouldn't oppose having the discretionary option available, you know, God forbid somebody from Santa Ynez come in if we have a better candidate. And actually, I am okay with status quo, and I would actually go along with Jay. If, if, I'm not gonna oppose the bill, but if the bill doesn't go through, I, I really think, imagine if the mayor of Santa Barbara was also the second district supervisor. It, it, it's, just, it, it's just not right. And I might, going forward, even strongly feel, as Jay apparently does, that having the separation of powers is better government. So, that's my two cents. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other public comment before we go back to the board? Seeing none, back to board. I just have a question um, because of uh, something that 
our supervisor said about how the bill was going to be amended. Um, I've only had a moment to look over it, but I, this question is for you. Um, is this current or is it going to be amended as Ben said, or is it already, is, has this version that you brought to us already been amended um, in the matter when she was What version is that? It's still not. not. <laughs> yeah, this, this has not been amended. So this is, this is um, kind of like the text <coughs> as, it, like this is the, the most current version of the text, but it, the amendment process is not gone through yet. But they are in the process of amending it is what I understand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, any additional public comment? Seeing on back to the board um, for discussion. Any directors have anything to add? Do we want to take any action? Well, I, I just <coughs> think we should support the amendment that's going to go forward. This is no different than George being appointed by the chancellor and the chancellor thinking that, you know, George is the best appointee at this time. I think mm -hmm. the same thing with the Board of Supervisors. You know, I volunteered because I like this place and I have a history with this place, but I'm not going to be around all the time. And so, you know, there's plenty of other good souls in the county that are very good administrators and would uh -huh. be a really good addition to this board. Uh, to carry out, you know, the camaraderie that we're trying to establish uh -huh. with this board. And so, uh -huh. I, I think, I, I personally will support the, the bill and the amendment. Is that a motion? Mm. I'll make that motion. Uh, one um, point I'll just make, we do have it listed as a discussion item, yeah. since it is oh. on the agenda. Gotcha. You would have to move it to action <laughs> yeah. item. Yes, just, we would have to move it to sure action. I the right motions. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> I have a picture. Yeah. And so appreciated. <laughs> um, so appreciated. <laughs> so, can't act without Brad Act. Yes, yeah, so, so we are on discussion. What we can do is bring it back to the next. We can bring it back. We can yeah. direct someone on this board to prepare a resolution to present next time. Perhaps okay. if we want to do that. I'll amend my motion that we prepare a resolution for the next time to the support the the bill with the amendment. Hopefully, the new bill will be out or the amended bill. Hmm. There would have to be a second because he made a motion. I second. And um, I'll, I'll get. Could you read it back? Yeah. Oh yeah. The motion is to um, bring the bill back to the board at the next meeting. Hopefully amended. I mean, that's what he said. Hopefully amended. Hopefully as amended. Hopefully the <laughs> amendment gets done. I, I or we can bring it back after the amendment gets done, as far as I'm concerned. And would we like to direct someone on this board to draft a resolution to present? Or should we all just come and discuss it next time and create that resolution as a, as a board? I think we should definitely draft a resolution <laughs> for consideration. Yes. Is that a, would you like to? I think it, it. I think it'll be easier to draft the resolution once the amendments made, so that we have the just like the language. Our okay. constituents were confused about well, what mm -hmm. are we approving? Let's wait for the amendment, then bring it back with the Excellent. resolution. Mm -hmm. Well, and maybe that's a question then for Samantha. Do you know when this what the timeline is for the amendment when it's going to be filed? Um, uh, I'm working with the Sacramento legislative slot staff on this, and so I sent some language late this afternoon Thank you. And it seems like we have time. We don't have to rush on this. We can we can wait for the process yeah, and then so catch up with it. If, I, I agree if we if we all agree, we want to support it. But yeah, I I think it is it's important that we have that amendment though, so we clarify what exactly we're supporting yeah. um, because we don't want to just say oh we support this mm -hmm. in the biggest yeah. ways. <laughs> you know, um, I I think where where I'm at on this is that um, this clarifying the intention of AB three is something. Yeah. That, that definitely uh, needs to happen. And, and if this bill is going to be a vehicle for that, then uh, I will definitely support it. Huh. Um, it the, from reviewing the minutes, the community uh, did support in the AB3 meetings, uh, leaving the option for the third district supervisor to uh, be the county's representative on this district. And I think that being that that was the intention, um, if we need legislation to clarify it, then I support that legislation. Huh. Call a question. Um, barring any other board member discussion, 
I, I just want to state that um, though I, I, I think uh, this is a good clarification and so forth and so forth, I am also um, uh, on pause to a certain extent because of um, um, some of Jay's um, uh, concerns and I would like to see those concerns addressed. Um, if nothing else, that we from the get-go really be mindful of the fact that uh, uh, this could subvert all of our good intentions here if, um, if someone was inserted into our process here. And uh, of course, now Isla Vista is not going to let that happen. So perhaps I've answered my own concerns. Okay. Call to question. Um, I'm going to call this now Director Bertrand I, Director Brown I, Director Freeman. I, I'm sorry, what is the motion? What um, are we to bring back the amended bill back to the board. Oh, yeah. Aye. Director Aye. Geis, Director Hedges. Aye. Aye. All right, motion passes 7 0. Thank you very much for your time, Samantha. Okay, um, so now moving on, I know there were some ideas at the end of the table. Okay, I motion to suspend the orders of the day and move forward to section four action items. Second. Um, my first question is, um, or my only question, do we have to suspend the orders of the day when we don't have a policy calling for the orders of the day? Um, <laughs> well, we technically haven't sure. set the agenda technically at all. Yeah. So, but yeah. if you're, there's like, if we're going chronologically as we were before, we would have to suspend the orders of the day to move to a different section. Right, but we don't have any orders. Yeah. So, okay. um, just because I, uh, this, uh, what I pulled out here, uh, this is our CSDA draft, uh, Manual. Um, that's something for us to, to set how we would like to <laughs> conduct business. Um, In draft. So I, I amend my motion to move yes. to section four action items. Fantastic. So let me follow up with a motion. Um, I would like to move. Oh, wait, we have to vote on that. Oh, we do? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can we vote? Yes. So um, any other board? This is, this is a motion to skip to four. That is a okay. motion to move to action items, but I second if there was not a previous second. <coughs> there was a second. Okay. There was a second. Church. Any any public comment on this? Seeing none, one thing that I will mention, um, a lot of what is in section four is based on the 90-day plan, which we're, I mean, I, I'm comfortable moving past that, but just in case there were any members of the public um, who were really itching to, to hear that first, seeing none. Um, any other board comment on that? Okay, um, I, I, this might be a, then a relevant time to bring this up, which is that um, the 90-day plan is something that uh, people were only able to actually get a hold of within just the last few days. Uh, and one of the things that people were bringing up when I was going around handing people the agenda and handing people copies of the 90-day plan um, is the possibility of essentially punting the rather substantive and actually written in the past tense uh, timeline uh, of, of events to something where we the public would have more time to have gone through. I mean, I mean, I love doing this, and I just sat around and read all of it. Yeah. Uh, but that's something so, where I'm like, I, I show up yesterday yeah. and I hand somebody a 25-page document, and I'm like, tomorrow we're we're, we're looking at this. <laughs> <laughs> and, I think uh, that's, I think that's a good point, Jay. I I think that, uh, and that's why I would almost say let's let's um, your term was punt. Yeah. <laughs> let's punt that. Uh, let the public uh, and make sure that we we disseminate it widely and now that we're officially formed we can do things without and, and again I think my intent here was to move next to committees um, and set up a couple of committees with the idea that we wouldn't uh, that wouldn't <coughs> limit us in any way it would just get us going down the road um, and so my next motion was going to be, uh, so I would support you on the fact that we maybe put off that and, and instead uh, I want to move that we create a formation committee, an internship committee, and a policy manual committee. Basically, ba and their charges would be based on the agendized descriptions. And that, uh, and this is more, and this is more controversial part, but I think it's it's in keeping with how we should conduct our business, which is, we have the chair of the board appoint those committees, um, and, and the committees themselves appoint chair people. Uh, we start with just three. We start really again to keep moving fast. We start with three members of the board on each committee, and then we add people as we go along from the public and from the community as quickly as as we can. 
But I think the idea is to get going on some of this formation work. So I would make that motion that we form those three committees. Yes, so you please. can't make that motion. <laughs> yeah, we're, there hasn't we're been a, a vote question. on the previous motion. Yeah. Yes, and, and we haven't even been to that. <laughs> Just to give you an idea about where <laughs> they go. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I think uh, Director Jordan's do. motion um, will move us towards that intent. Okay. So uh, any, okay. any more public comment on moving to, agenda, to section four? Seeing none, any more board comment? Seeing none, calling the question. Director Bertrand, aye. Director Brandt, aye. Director Freeman, aye. Director Geis, aye. Director Hedges, aye. Director Jordan, aye. Director Thurlow, aye. Motion passes 7 0. We are now entering. They're all unanimous. Yeah, yeah, we're doing well. Um, we are now <laughs> entering so um, section four action items. It's um, always sometimes a good thing. These sometimes. items we <laughs> may take action on tonight, we may not. We'll uh, now begin to find out. So, um, <laughs> First off, um, 4.1, consider applying for the California Special District Association membership. The CSDA membership, um, or the CSDA extended the opportunity to um, pursue a trial membership. Um, just a little background, Director Brandt and I, we uh, went to a wonderful training with uh, CSDA a few weeks ago now. And uh, we were really impressed by how caring our regional uh, director, Chris Palmer, was for working with the Community Services District to help set us off on the best uh, path going forward. Additionally, uh, we received well warm welcome from all the other directors of special districts there and members of our local uh, special district association. So I think uh, Director Brent can tell us more about membership. Yes, and I'll try to be as brief as possible because I'm not <coughs> sure if we're going to want to take any immediate action on this. Uh, but for some background, the California Special Districts Association was formed in 1969 to, as our website says, promote good governance and improved core local services through professional development, advocacy, and other services for all types of independent special districts. Um, so the first thing that is mentioned in that is advocacy. Uh, this is on behalf of special districts uh, to further their interest in Sacramento, to keep them informed on legislation, keep them informed on uh, different court cases and precedents uh, that are being made, uh, laws that will affect them. Uh, there's another thing that they provide is they have a, an entire network of special districts uh, all across the state um, that, um, that, that will allow us as directors and uh, members of our um, of our team to to meet with other uh, people <coughs> who are involved in special districts uh, at conferences at trainings like Director Bertrand spoke about uh, and uh, and other situations. Um, there is also different cost saving programs uh, that they run, such as the California Special Districts Association Finance Corporation, which uh, can assist uh, in financing various projects. The Special District Risk Management Authority. Um, which uh, includes workers, workers' compensation, uh, property and liability, and health coverage uh, for district employees and on behalf of the district. Um, they print such materials such as uh, Open and Public Volume 4, which I hope every director has a copy of that. Uh, that is the, uh, basically, the, I would describe it as the practical guide to the Brown Act uh, and how it is supposed to play out. Uh, in our everyday interactions with one another regarding uh, what we can and can't say to one another regarding district business. Um, that, that's a, a document that they've published. Uh, they also have a sample policy manual. I think that that's going to be really helpful uh, as we move forward trying to craft coherent policies uh, for the district. Um, they provide one hour of free legal advice for the district per year, uh, which will be something that is also very important given that we're in a situation where we won't have a whole lot of revenue to be used uh, for something such as legal counsel. Uh, when we go and seek legal counsel, we're going to be seeking someone who can serve in a pro bono capacity. Uh, so even if it's just an hour of free legal advice, I think it's still uh, worth noting. Uh, and there are all kinds of other support mechanisms that they have as well. Um, the pricing for their membership varies. It's tiered. Um, I think it's unclear what our operating revenue would be considered. Um, <laughs> if, if we include the $200,000 as pledged uh, by UC Santa Barbara, which I believe is money that they will spend on our behalf, if I'm understanding that correctly, maybe I can uh, turn that into a question. But if we include that, then it would cost $897 per year. If we assume that that is not going to be revenue flowing through our accounts, um, 
then it would cost $139 per year. Um, that's as of 20, 2015. Um, so I think this is definitely something to consider. Uh, Anna Palmer, who no relation to Chris, uh, but they both work for CSDA. Uh, we also met her at this board member best practice, practices workshop. Uh, we spoke to her about our financial situation as a district. Um, and one of the things she mentioned is that CSDA offers a free trial membership that is a 90 day free trial. Um, and it's something that I definitely think that we should look into um, in terms of uh, where we fit into that and what we want our commitment to be to an organization like this. I think that all the support that we can get is gonna be really necessary as we try to take what right now is you know a legal entity as a special district, but we don't have an institution here. We don't have um, you know a policy manual. We don't have any records. We're going to start having records after this meeting, courtesy of ourselves for taking the minutes. Um, but you know we have a lot of work to do, um, and I think that the special district association will really be a tremendous ally uh, in that process. Um, so um, maybe I should. Um, I'll make a motion that we uh, request a 90-day free trial membership. I second. Um, would it be amenable to the makers and seconders if we add um, direction for directing one of the board members up here to, to apply on behalf of the district? I, yeah, would, so I would direct the president of the board, okay. chairman of the board, to apply. Um, real quick, I'll just let you know what's on the application. It's about nine lines. Uh, we check off, yes, we want um, to experience CESDA with a free 90-day trial membership. We write the agency name, contact name, and title. So in the, if this is passed, uh, I think we would put my name and title. Um, we have to get creative for address. Um, we, uh, could write, uh, we could write NA and then just put Isla Vista. Um, we, <laughs> We'll be walking around. We'll find the mailman. <laughs> we know the mailman. George, George, George. George, yes. George. I would say care of Joan Hartman's office. Would that be? Is that right, Gina? Possibly. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you know why I hesitated? I yeah. honestly don't know how long if there's a lag in mail processing from when it gets um, to our calendar because we're so. So, um, because they have to they sort it. Yeah, it gets sorted through the county building. Like, I'm happy to receive it, but there might be a lag. Is the 90-day free, yeah. free trial specific on the application? We can't get 360 days free trial? Um, specific to this application, it's 90 days. It says 90 days. I mean, based on our uh, conversations, I think they'd be willing to help us out in many ways. But. And the other, one other consideration is if Joan Hartman is not on the address, it will not, I mean, unless you do third district office, like it, to actually reach our office to receive it, just to be, like, we don't have our own um, postal code or phone sort of, right? Like, that's how mail gets to us. Just do it. Name. So um, I don't know if that will um, screw you up, for lack of a better term, right. in terms of she's... Well, I, don't, I mean, if they're going to mail, I don't think they're going to mail us much that right. we are <laughs> and, and if they are, I think we'd know. Uh, they just want an address. Yeah. They just want to know. Yeah, so. you okay. Can you Thank request you on much. the contract that they try to be light with physical mail and <laughs> use the electronic <laughs> yeah. uh, Okay. Um, I, I think we, okay. I could keep that in mind later on. Yes. Um, my question was, I know that you said that you had a direct comment, uh, direct contact with one of these members, and I was wondering if maybe we could get in direct communication to see if there was some kind of exception that can be made to the 90 days, seeing as they deal with much larger districts generally, um, to see if maybe they would um, extend the free trial period for us beyond um, like the normal time period. Mm -hmm. Can we amend Great. the motion to ask the uh, pri just the make another president motion. to? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's good. Yes. Amendable. Yeah. Okay. Um, can I, if we're gonna, if we're gonna amend to have some questions get passed back, can we can we get clarification on whether it's eight hundred ninety-seven dollars or one hundred thirty-nine dollars? Because it, that 
I mean, that's, it's such a big difference. I mean, $139, I mean, I'll just give you $139. <laughs> I mean, I, I, it's, <laughs> I hear a lot about how awesome the CCA is. That's not much money. I mean, yeah. <laughs> if you take it $97, is a little different, right? But it's like, right, it's right. just a matter Jay, of... Jay, in answer to your and Spencer's question, is the money from the university will, will not flow through the CSD, just as a matter of policy. Um, I mean, it, the projects are going to be mutually agreed upon, but we can't give the checks to this other district. That, that makes sense to me, because I was, I, I had been kind of thinking that if you did give us the money, that suddenly we could just, what if we didn't Absolutely. do what you said? Yeah. In addition, yeah. just, <laughs> I think just as much as like, we're trying, like, we should definitely still consider this a trial on our behalf as well. So I don't mm -hmm. want to jump into the financial yeah. aspects of it before we actually know the benefits of this program. So that's, Great. I can call the question. Like and just to clarify the, quest the question right now, so it is to direct the, the board president mm -hmm. to apply for CSTA <coughs> and to request that they consider extending the 90-day <laughs> trial to one year. Yeah. yeah. Or so. Comment or not. <laughs> Please do. Yeah. Uh, we actually, so we actually have, um, uh, rep we actually have people who are sitting on the board of, uh, of, of a district uh, in the audience uh, that is a member of the CSDA, and we have a staff member from another district who I believe actually is a ranking member of some way of the CSDA now. Um, if there are any questions that Natalie has about the benefits that maybe we could convince one of them to talk to us about. <laughs> uh. um, my, my, my whole question, it, mine was less of a question and more of like, if we're going to get into financials, that's a talk for a different day. That's kind of where that's I was right. going with that. Yeah. I, like, I feel comfortable with what you've said about the benefits, and I'm sure that this would be beneficial to the district, and uh, maybe we could get a more complete um, review that I could read personally. I'm more of a visual learner. <laughs> so maybe I'll Google them when I go home. I feel comfortable with that. But if I, there's anything specific that like anyone wants to clarify to me now, that would be great. I would like to ask if that member of the public might be willing to speak yeah, to us. Awesome. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, my name is Jeff Hodge. I, um, I'm the general manager for the San Inez Community Service District, but I have two positions here. Uh, one at the local level that uh, we also have a local Santa Barbara chapter of special districts that now that you're a district, we, we welcome you and, and hope that you can attend that and, and similar things. But I'm the president of that for this year. And then more importantly, the, the question you have before you, for the Central Coast from Monterey to Ventura, I'm one of three elected representatives for the CSDA at the state level. So I'm here right in your backyard. So for any of those questions, I'm here and, and, and can help you navigate any and all of those. And, and I spend one or two days a month up there. So if you have any specific ones of that, please. But I, I do encourage you to do the, the 90 days and then we'll build from there. Sir. Do, do you have to, as a member, do you get access to like a special website or something that you can get information from, or is that website just available via Google? No, it's not. So you, you'll, you'll Google the one, you'll have the CSDA.net, I believe. Public is, website, is is. Yeah. And then sign up for the, uh, the e-blast. You can do that on the front page. But behind there, yeah, there's like 10 different platforms that have all kinds of different Lyft servers from the, the, the policies you be, see before you to... It, it just ends. Mm -hmm. But mean, you can only get there if you're a member. Correct. Oh, okay. Correct. Yeah, well, that, then most that might of the board members, you'll get your own access to, to, yeah. to do your homework at home. But, but once again, I encourage you to do it. I'm here as your representative to that organization, so you have that direct line at all times. I'll give you a card later. So any questions? Yeah. Thank you. Great. Great. Can, I, can I ask a quick question? I, I don't want to resurrect old history, but um, <laughs> what did the CSDA oppose in Sacramento AB3? Not directly, I don't believe. I, I, I know you did go on record opposing it. Excuse me? You, you did not go on record opposing it. I would have to look. Oh, and, and on that regards, too, for this year, I'm just getting situated that I'm also the, the vice chair of the legislative part of the right. CSDA. Right. So I, I could research that, Can but you I wasn't under that? last year. Yeah, I don't want to bring up old history. I just want to. I just, uh, it's interesting to join an organization that didn't want you. <laughs> uh, CSDA did not. Oh, there we go. Thank you. SBC, whatever. Do you think you still look at it? The Santa Barbara County chapter did. Oh, the Santa Barbara County chapter did oppose. Yes. Okay. So, all right, that's all. That's all. That is free, though. Yeah. You just have to come to dinner. Okay. Thank you for speaking to us. I'm glad you love us. Yeah. Thank you. Do you, um, do you know the feasibility of getting an extension on our free trial period? <laughs> it, it's America. You can ask. Okay. <laughs> that's, 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 <laughs> thank you. I was just wondering if it's I, like I, a first Your goal is to see that you succeed along with all that's of us. That's great. Thank, thank you so much. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Hodge. And based on what you've heard of the motion at hand, uh, you think we're in a decent place? Oh, yes. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, Good.
Any more public comment? Any more board comment? I'm ready to call the question. Uh, Director Bertrand? Aye. Director Brandt? Aye. Director Freeman? Aye. Director Geis? I'll abstain. Aye. Director Hedges? Director Aye. Jordan? Director Aye. Jordan. Aye. Jordan. Aye. Motion passes 6 0. One inspector and Director Geis. Thank you so much. All right. So now. Moving right along to consider the creation of a formation committee. Thank you so much, uh, Director Thurlow, for getting us here. Much appreciated. What's that? Uh, oh, to here? Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> All right. Uh, so, the, so the formation. Can I make a motion? Oh, uh, we got to explain what this is first. Uh, but so the formation committee would advise the board of directors on issues pertaining to the formation of the district, such as obtaining legal counsel. Um, also looking at liability insurance, exploring administrative options, or carrying out any other role as director, directed by the board of directors. Um, this was something that was outlined in uh, me and Spencer's plan, um, so that's why it might be a little confusing here, but the intent is to have a committee that can do the legwork for the initial administrative task of the district. It, <coughs> if created as currently uh, thought of, it would be a pretty heavy workload um, to do to focus solely on administrative um, administrative tasks. So with that, um, board discussion. I, well, I, want, I just want to add one thing to this, and that is uh, because I think Jay, Jay brought up a good point, um, which is the, how we're going to handle finances. So one of the things this committee has to do is to figure out, are we going to have a bank account? How do we do that? Uh, probably Bob, probably Bob, can help us a little bit with that in terms of how special districts essentially handle their finances. But uh, I would move that we uh, create uh, a formation committee comprising three board members appointed by the chair of the board and that it include this description in the agenda as well as an exploration of um, financial structure. Okay. I second. So um, if we could just read the the motion one more time. Sorry, I was socializing. <laughs> That's totally okay of our volunteer uh, <laughs> Come to my office tomorrow, would you please? <laughs> okay, I move that we uh, create a formation committee with the responsibilities as outlined in the agenda item and to include uh, the study of financial structures for the um, district and that the three board directors that serve on this committee be appointed by the chair. A second. <coughs> okay, so right now, I, so I'm also trying to write this down <coughs> as we go. So I have up to and to include, what are the additional ones that we're including? Just financial. Financial. A financial uh, structure for the district. So uh, just to, to clarify the motions, so we are voting to create a formation committee with the responsibilities as outlined in the agenda item and to add to those responsibilities the financial structure and to appoint three directors to serve on the committee. Right. You would appoint the president. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's right. I, I just want to reiterate how important this committee is going to be in in order to uh, put us on the right track and secure some sort of a, a footing for the district <coughs> as, as we go forward. Um, I, I, I think the addition of finance is good, um, and this is certainly a committee that I would be happy to serve on. Jay. Um, so uh, I've, I've been around when the Alabaster Recreation Park District has done the last couple of their committee appointments, and I, I, I think that, so just to verify and understand their process, like you have some familiarity with that, um, they don't have the chair appoint. They um, discuss and then um, play rock paper scissors. Play rock paper scissors. saying yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, and then and then, and then uh, have motions and then have votes in order to determine that. Uh, so it is a, that is their process. That is my understanding, and perhaps Chair Sutar could verify that at the Isle Vista Recreation and Park District Board individual board members can make a motion to appoint a member to a committee, and it's not solely the responsibility of the chair. Correct. Um, you just can't vote for yourself. You cannot nominate yourself. And, and generally, to make things a little smoother, 
we just ask who, who would like to do this, mm -hmm. you know, and then, and, you know, who, who feels qualified, who's really passionate about this. Um, now, if we have an ad hoc committee, then that's something that the general manager would appoint. So that's the difference between, you know, our committees, a standing committee and an ad hoc committee. Right. Thank you. And as far as um, when I was looking at this agenda and preparing for this, I, I really like the idea of people saying what they'd be interested in and then mm -hmm. us as a board um, voting to support our colleagues in that end of war. Um, so with that in mind, first, um, I think it should actually be two motions. First, we vote to create the, the committee, and then we move to appoint members. So um, we would have to uh, yes. amend the motion if we were to do that. Yeah. Um, would no, I don't want to amend the motion. I want to move. Uh, here's here's what I, my response would be. Um, I think we're in a totally different position than the IV PRD, which has been around for a long, long time. We have a ton of work that we got to get done really quickly. And I think that what I'm going to do is to put back on you the the idea that you would solicit from the board informally who would want to serve on those committees. And, it, and we'd end up with the same result, only we'd be able to move a, a lot quicker. Fantastic. Uh, I, I support and I totally, I totally trust you, to because I think you are somebody who will uh, solicit everybody on this board and, and essentially punish the people. Well, I'm on the board committee. No, no, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, just kidding. Uh, just kidding. Uh, just kidding. Okay, so. Um, I tried to teach them how to do that. Okay, so are we, Jay? Um, so I, I, I do, tr I, I trust Ethan, but I, I, for me it's more about transparency of process, like making certain the people in the audience can kind of see the, the, the discussion that ends up causing things to happen. That, that would be the following So that is something that, that would at least. On, right? mm. Yeah, we're gonna have it, we're gonna, you're gonna bring back to us, well, if you wanna do that, uh, bring back to us the committees and that you are appointing and then allow the public to comment on those. I mean, I think it's important that we make those appointments tonight. Or so you could just do it right now. You could still technically do it. We just raise our hands and then you say, Love those it. are the people I selected. Yeah. Yeah. I think and then fantastic. there we go. Okay. Boom. Okay. okay, so right now we are going to call the question to create a formation committee with responsibilities as outlined in the agenda Let's and to this. include, in addition to those responsibilities, um, exploring options related to financial structure and to direct the board president to select three directors to serve on this committee. Tonight. Tonight. Right now. <laughs> okay, uh, that, is, that is our question. Any more that public comment? Transparent. Oh, Mr. Yeah. Roar. Um, I really appreciate Jay's comment about uh, transparency as this board has been set up to uh, basically um, increase the representation in Isla Vista for Isla Vista. I think transparency is just Thank you. Okay. Sure, I think, that. and I'm sure you already know, but I would hope that Mr. Geis would want to serve on this particular one. I'm going to get to the point where you start to appoint public members. This is something I'm interested in. I'm so happy to hear that. Ooh. <laughs> and, and that's one more thing. Um, yeah. We do need to have our policy manual before we do that, so definitely look forward to it. Any other public, uh, any other board comment before we? I'll just, question? I'll just give you a real brief comment on the finance. The law says that the county treasurer is the treasurer for the district. Okay. When that means your money all has to get deposited in the county treasury. There's a section of the law that when you draw a warrant on the county treasury. It's inaccurate how it works in the county of Santa Barbara, but you would buy that, get the services of the auditor. Um, we used to do that for free, but now we charge the districts. And so it involves money, but it really only involves money based on the number of transactions you process. So there's not a lot of transactions. It's not going to be very expensive. The alternative to that is to set up your own treasury. And it's a fairly onerous process as a big district because you have to have an investment policy. You have to, to tell what you're going to do with your surplus. And so I would recommend against that. But it doesn't mean that maybe 
some board member that wants to take that process on shouldn't learn that process other than me telling you that's the way you should do it. But we have tens of dollars that we're working I, with here. I, I, I agree. <laughs> and, and that would be a fantastic discussion for this committee we're about to create. Right. Yeah. And, and so I'm just saying that it's important for the long run for people to learn the treasury process and the accounting process and that you have to have an annual budget and you have to have an annual financial report and you have to submit those to the state controller and you have to submit an annual report to the state controller all special districts have to do that so my personal opinion is is the treasurer and the auditor can help you do that and help you do those reports but it doesn't mean that in the long run there aren't some advantages to running your own treasury and i don't want to say there's a lot of special districts out there that manage their own money there's some special districts <coughs> by law the treasurer is the only default and so um I, i've seen it both ways and and uh, we're not the only accountants in the world at the county but that that part can be fairly easy if we make that decision and get the assistance, but I'd really like the directors to set to learn those functions other than me just saying, oh, this is the way to do it. Because <laughs> yeah. I won't be here all, you know, forever, God willing. <laughs> My mortality rate, right? the table's long, but. <laughs> Call the question. Yes, uh, Ms. Elliott, if you could just read it before. Okay. The motion on the floor is to create a formation committee with responsibilities as outlined in the agenda item and to add to those responsibilities the financial structure of the district and the three directors who who will be appointed by the president. Made by George Thurlow and seconded by Natalie Jordan. We are now going to call the, the question. Uh, Director Bertrand, aye. Director Brown, aye. Director Freeman, no. Director Geis, aye. Director Hedges, aye. Director uh, aye. Jordan, Director Thula, aye. Okay, motion passes six to one. <laughs> it's all good. Um, with uh, six to one with Director Freeman opposed, uh, motion passes. Um, so now on the second part of this item with uh, me, me making these appointments, um, would you rather me tell you who I have in mind first or rather hear from you first? Well, here, here's what <coughs> I was doing this. Let's form the other two committees yeah. first because maybe Excellent. maybe we don't have a majority and then we end up with only one committee. Mm -hmm. So how about if we form mm -hmm. the committees first and then we go back um, and up do the appointments? Is yes. that okay? I think that's a fabulous idea. Um, my one question would be um, we have it all listed as separate items on our agenda. Okay. Um, which. I'll admit that's a flaw. We should have thought. No, 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 no. I no, think I that's think good. So too. That's a good idea. I like that. So I think we should. Do you need a motion? Yeah. Or do you want to explain uh, oh. 4.3? Can we vote at 4.3? Yeah. Point of information from Director Green. Um, so one of the reasons to try to do them at the same time. I don't know if it's maybe it just not be possible. Might be something that just requires a, a motion to do that. Is that sometimes by in order to essentially fairly distribute. Um, uh, roles, um, mm -hmm. you kind of want to know, okay, yeah. well, yeah. somebody was yeah. interested in yeah. this third yeah. one, well, then yeah. well, maybe we'll, yeah. yeah. All right, yeah. so then can I bundle, and um, is everyone comfortable with me bundling 4.3 and 4.4 for the creation of an internship committee with comment from the board as well as a policy manual ad hoc committee? Can we call it a, uh, a I think we should call it a policy committee. Is it a policy yeah. committee? Yeah. Okay, that sounds it, is everyone, um, my, I made a motion, so that would be a second there, if anyone Is your motion to form my motion, committees or to combine? My the motion committee? is to bundle and f approve, as in form, those two committees, which is the creation of an internship committee and the policy, policy, manual. policy manual committee, or however mm -hmm. we wanted to yeah. phrase that. That would be a second, if anyone's interested. Without a second, it dies. So. Aye. 
There we go. So second, second uh, my yeah. question would be, could we just, because um, I, I think this is a great idea, uh, just state it so that formation mm -hmm. committee, internship committee, and policy committee. Mm -hmm. um, so just adding comma, formation committee, comma, internship committee to the initial motion. But they were policy, um, the creation of the formation committee <coughs> was already approved, right. so okay. now it has to okay. be okay. two awesome. others. So yeah. then if we just add, replace like the language that we did there with formation committee, comma, internship committee. We can't because it's already been approved in a separate motion. Uh, I understand. Understand that, but I'm saying we use that language oh. minus sure. uh, the okay. minus the oh, as outlined in the agenda yeah. item and tattoos. Yeah, just just to save us tonight. Yeah, got it. Yeah, I'm, I'm all about it. That's finally with the first. I have a question. Um, so, in the process of of, of, of of forming this committee, so the description of the committee is uh, sorry the, of the forming the internship committee. The description of the committee says that it would advise the board of directors on matters related to the development of an internship program. So an internship program is not something that I remember us talking about during the construction process of AB3. Um, it is something, sadly, that this is the reason why Ethan mentioned this earlier. It is something that's in the 90-day action plan that we didn't talk about yet. Um, there is a there is money associated with this and uh, and budgets and things. I I think it, to, can we change the purpose of the committee to not necessarily presuppose that this is a, that 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 the internship program, as outlined by something else, will happen. Yeah, we have the what are you asking for? for yeah, like, 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 like the concept of having an, inter uh, having an internship program mm -hmm. is something that I have comments and questions and clarifications and all sorts of hullabaloo about. Uh, and so constructing a committee in order to now advise us on matters related to the development of it seems to presuppose that it is something that we absolutely should do. And then it also, I think, maybe is confusing as far as what their process is because we haven't yet talked about what their what that means. So what is an intern? Like we don't even know yet what an internship program is. I, I do because I read this thing. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So I just wanted to say like this is the reason why the agenda was ordered the way that it was um, was so that we could go in a continuous fashion and and um, and, and begin by outlining the proposal that is the content of the brains of myself and Director Bertrand. Which is why we <coughs> the proposal. Yes, of course, but I mean, it, it, it is by nature not a board document is what I mean to say, and I think what Jay is getting at is that um, there, there are some presuppositions in these committees that were not necessarily um, things that we ever got to discuss because we skipped over items, and so I understand, um, and, and I understand the confusion. I think it could be confusing for members of the public as well. So I don't know if there's a way that we can go back and, and outline a little more um, the contents of what said internship committee or said internship program could entail. I think like, you know, this, the, the idea of making an internship committee and a policy committee, like I'm 100% for it. Um, it. I don't know if, like, how, how does this work? Has the ship sailed? Like, can we go back and talk yeah, about the, the, well, the plan? The, the, the connection with, because I, I was one of the people who was supporting some of the reorganization earlier, but my the reason why I was supporting it was also that there were things that I just kind of wanted to punt. And so, like, I would actually then ask that we work on formation policy and then, for example, talk next time about the internship program and then decide if we what we want out of an internship program, then construct a committee in order to construct an internship program. To clarify my motion, I'm, like, literally making a skeleton. I'm not in, like the content itself. I want to make the skeleton of having a committee. The content itself itself should be, in my opinion, designed from the committee from the inside out. So I think here it would be a little bit counterproductive for us to like lay out like goal by goal what the formation committee, the, the specific committee does, as much as actually just creating the structures for us to succeed. Hmm. That's kind of my that was my intent of my motion. I don't know how everyone feels about that. I think that the, the structure is important. I agree with you 100%, uh, Natalie, and, and, I, and I think that um, some of the, so I think that the, the, the plan, the 90-day plan that has not been presented yet will, will well inform that um, with many ideas. I also would like to ask um, uh, of Director Brandt, uh, are you looking for a motion to be made on uh, with regard to the 90-day plan, or are you looking for a presentation as a discussion item? Do you get what I'm saying? Are we looking to take action on this 90-day plan as an outline, or just talk about it? No, the 90-day plan was listed under Section 3, which is the discussion just section. The discussion so of all it. of it can be is discussed. It informs 
the items that are in the action section. Okay, awesome, thank you. I'm just verifying that the live stream is still working for anyone wondering what the hell was that <laughs> noise. That <laughs> so, um, can you read to us language that you have from the initial motion made by Director? The motion on the floor is to combine agenda items 4.3 and 4.4 and approve the formation of an internship committee and a policy committee. And then I added the language that um, Ethan suggested in substituting these committees for the formation committee in the previous motion. Um, as outlined in the agenda item, and three directors who will be appointed by the president, Natalie Jordan made the motion, Father Johnson had the second. So that's the motion on the board. Any board questions? Any public questions or comments? Uh, Mr. Bean? Um, with, uh, <coughs> with volunteering, would volunteering fall under um, the umbrella of uh, the internship? That's scope right. of the internship committee? That's what I was kind of like getting at. Uh, sorry, sorry, interrupting. But that was kind of what I was getting at with all of this. Is there's so many <coughs> amazing details that we need to work out? Like, I think that that is so important and definitely something that should be considered. I don't even know if that's come to our mind yet. Um, and so that's why, like I said, I'm just trying to create this like broad structure of this is what it is. And then I think in committee, like I said, I'm building it from like the heart of the committee back out. I'm okay yeah. with the idea of constructing some kind of structure. I just want to make certain that we don't necessarily presuppose something. It's like, for yeah, example, so if, if, if it were so if it were like a committee whose purpose was to um, work on some of our staffing issues, and one of the possibilities was it would be an internship, or if it was a committee whose purpose was to think about the complexities of an internship of an internship program or something. That's why that's also why I was just kind of clarifying the wording. Not necessarily so then, can I clarify my motion then? Yeah. So my motion then is to create the structures. If you could just include the word structure in there, that would be great. Thank you. Can I call the question? Or am I not allowed? I'm not actually allowed to do that on my own motion, so never mind. Uh, well, I'll, I'll <laughs> be happy to call that. the question with just clarification with that addition. <laughs> so the motion is now to combine agenda items 4.3 and 4.4 and approve the formation of a structure of an internship committee and policy committee as outlined in the agenda item and the three directors will be appointed by the do you want to keep as outlined in the agenda item for the structure? You can remove as outlined in the agenda item. Just and now I would just like to provide clarification that when I vote no, it will only be due to be appointed by the president part, not due to the other parts. Thank you. Um, my question is, because I see merit for taking out the agenda item mentioned, but then do we have to direct what the committees will be responsible for? Well, that's kind of what I was, I, I don't think that that's actually um, directly necessary right now, and that's kind of what I was saying before, is that like, I think that once these committees are actually formed, then like the responsibilities themselves, and also if we do decide to take action on the 90-day plan or aspects of it, I think that that would be built out. But that would also be done in collaboration with like a think tank of also like community members. And I think that it's just not feasible for us to take the time to build out that language right now. Director Brown. So how about what we do instead of approving the um, description on, in the agenda item as the, um, as the purpose of both committees, how about we include in the motion that we direct both committees um, to bring back to us at the next board meeting um, a, 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 a statement of purpose and responsibility? Um, as for for board for approval, so that then you don't have to keep running in circles about about what exactly the responsibilities of each of these committees is. That is um, not friendly with the first because I think we're overcomplicating the motion. Can we just pass this and then make another well, motion? So well, that I'm also like concerned. Yes. Uh, regarding, you know? <laughs> regarding this motion, like, are we allowed to say create the structure of an ad hoc committee, or do we have to say like, create the committee? Like, I understand the want to create the committee the structure. Was created. If you if we pass this, then there's a committee. There's like a title, and there would be people who would be on it, right? Yeah, but the With language no the language of the motion says structure in it instead of creates committee. What I, I guess what I'm saying is that I think it already has been overcomplicated, and I would I think that 
we want to be as precise as possible. Okay. Every, I mean, the background, I guess, which I say this, I guess, is that every single thing that we do during these next six months and probably years beyond is going to be scrutinized under a microscope. And I really just want to make sure that we are having the utmost precision of language. OK. So for clarification, with the other directors, with my current motion, I like personally, I'd rather just vote on it, let it pass, fail, and make another motion, because this is too much. But um, that's like that's how I feel about it. But if is it what, do the directors feel that this language that's currently listed in the agenda is appropriate for us to base a committee off of currently? I I I would say that because I think these might not be all the committees. Yeah. Some of these committees mm -hmm. will last the entire for forty years, like. Mm -hmm. A policy manual, you, you never keep up. I mean, it's tough to keep up your policy yeah. manual. It's, you know, a creation of an internship program could really change over time. I know we have one at the county, and my internship program mm -hmm. changed over time. And, you know, to where we really got it to, it was a marketing job to get people to come to work for us. And then I think the formation committee, there's a lot in here that, we may have not even thought about in terms of formation. So we might want to look at that a little more broadly and say, what is it that that formation committee is going to tackle? And maybe there are some other committees mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. would evolve out of this, like maybe we want a separate finance committee. That's, that's typical. Mm -hmm. Uh, a finance committee lives on with a number of directors and mm -hmm. you know we might want to look at some of the other special districts and say well what's their committee structure now, I know, saw a Goleta Water District director and I know they have a specific committee structure um, okay. and so we may want to look and, and say do we, it, are these really the three things we know these are three things that we need to start working on right away. Mm -hmm. But it might not be all inclusive of what we want to start working on. So, can I, I'm gonna amend my motion. And I would like to, as I said before, bundle and approve for um, agenda items 4.3 and 4.4 for in the creation of an internship committee as well as a policy manual with the tentative purpose as listed in the agenda and uh, request the committees once established to present a mission statement and objectives to the board of directors. Is that, sorry, that was really long. That's great. Maybe you want to say the end of it again. <laughs> Is that okay? <laughs> 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 I, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Present a mission statement and and objectives to the board of directors once formed. Okay. I have is combine the motion is to combine agenda items four point three and four point four and approve the formation of in okay, we're taking out the structure of right? Okay. okay. Four point three, four okay. point four. Combine four point yeah. three and four point four and approve the formation of an internship committee and policy committee with the tentative purpose as listed in the agenda and direct the committees once established to present a mission statement and objectives to the board of directors and the three directives will be appointed by the president. Yep, yep, that sounds good with me. Thank you. Um, and first we'll go out to public about okay. comments on this amendment. Is that friendly to the second? It doesn't have to be friendly to the second. The second could rescind their, like, being the second, but it doesn't actually have to be friendly with them because it's friendly with the first. It doesn't have to be friendly with the second? It is friendly with the second. Thank you, Father John. So now, uh, any more public comment before we come back to the board on this moment? Seeing none, um, I'll start. I think that the reason that we've gotten into creating this motion is because of the concern about the president selecting directors to serve on committees before hearing their interest in other committees. What I, um, as, as currently um, amended, I'll have to vote no, but I want to present something that we could consider. Moving on with the agenda as written, and what we will do since we're still under item 4.2 is 
when selecting directors, I will ask what other committees may you possibly be interested in getting appointed to. And at that time, I think it will be rather clear which directors are ready to be appointed to a committee. Uh, I thought we were on I, agenda I, item 4.3, for clarification. No, you're trying to. <laughs> we're still trying to stay still on 4.2. <laughs> we'll um, that was part of a cause. Yeah, because 4.2 is done. We're four in limbo. But 4.2 is been not entered 4.3. Yours for clarification. Right. <laughs> <laughs> four point three and four point four. Yeah. That is part of your motion. That has not even been voted on yet. I okay. Call for the question. Yeah. Call for the question. Uh, okay. On four point two, right? Call for, call for the question on four point two. Is that what we're doing? No. Call for the question on four point two. On the motion <laughs> <laughs> by Director Jordan. Okay. The bundle. Without bundle. Any more public comment? Any more board comment? Calling the question. Director Bertrand. No. Director Brown. No. Director Freeman. No. Director Geis. Aye. Director Hedges. Aye. Director Jordan. Aye. Director Thurlow. Yes. Motion passes 4-3 um, with Director Bertrand, Brandt, and Freeman Didn't voting. Didn't see that coming. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, excellent. Perfect. So now we can... Um, so now I think it's okay. <laughs> no, it's a point. Okay. So excellent. now you're going to appoint. So now I'm going to appoint for the formation committee. Correct. Um, I would... Um, like to, I mean, I'll, I'll outline who I think would be perfect for it first, and then I will receive complete and total input because it's not set in my head. Um, I think that Director Thurlow, Director Geis, and Director Brandt should serve on this committee um, based on different angles that they're bringing to the table. Director Thurlow, the financial piece of the university's <laughs> contribution, um, as was discussed before, that's going to be something that needs to be figured out. Director Guys for his excellent understanding of everything related to municipal government finance at the county level and also your long history working with special districts. And Director Brandt for the interest that you've shown in formation topics throughout the past few months. So that's um, what I had in my head. That's but motion. That's not my I would, I would motion. like to hear from other, if other directors want to. So, so we, we have succeeded in bundling, right? Yes. Okay, so now I can make a comment that I, I, I am interested in being on either formation or policy. I'm flexible, um, so I like I'm curious. That's why like it kind of ties into your thought processes on some of these other committees. Right. And I would agree with Jay that their t policy and and the formation are totally interrelated. Whatever we decide at the formation committee is going to result in policy. So. Pol written policies, which you have a lot of opportunity to influence mm -hmm. what happens on formation. And, and, the, and the potentially short-lived internship committee, I, I <laughs> want to be on. I'd like to be on the internship committee I'd like to be well. on the internship committee also. Me as yes. well. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Especially <laughs> emphasizing volunteer. <laughs> There's a reason I use it, you guys. Those who didn't hear that. Recommendation yeah. for rock, paper, scissors. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Do we have the so of the chair of IBRPD? <laughs> the, only, <laughs> the, only, the only issue, I mean, I'm happy to back step back from the internship committee. The only issue is we're going to have to be really careful about Brown Act stuff. So Absolutely. I can't come to your meetings and talk about yeah. ideas or things. Uh, and, but on the other hand, I also potentially have a conflict of interest after I sit here and think about it a little bit. So maybe I should not be on the internship committee. Okay. And one thing that I will mention, all meetings of standing committees must be Brown Act compliant. And since they are going to be Brown Act compliant and publicly noticed, all members of the board can attend the committee meetings. All members of the board can participate. Um, only the select members will be making the decisions of the body. Okay. But still, everyone can. You can't participate. You, If it's publicly noticed, all members of the board are allowed to go, but I don't believe that they can participate yeah. unless they're on the committee. Yeah. presentation? Can they make comments as members of the public? No. No. Okay. But they can be there. They you'd can have to, the You'd have to do that when you come back to the full board yeah. to then mm -hmm. present yeah. your... Yeah. Well, I guess I, I have a... Thank you. Yeah. I have like a... This is not a scary question or anything. Um, so uh, if the, the university's money that's coming in is something that we end up directing, we know, in mutual collaboration with the university on mutually agreed upon projects, um, then get spent on various things. Uh, is that something where we end up with a conflict of interest with the university on something else like the formation committee? Conflict of interest, can we please define that term if we're going to continue using it? 
Sorry. I will ask George because he used it. You know what I'm saying? Because like, if we're gonna yeah. keep using conflicts of interest, I need yeah, to know yeah, specifically yeah. what it is. Your words. Your words. Yeah. <laughs> If, yeah, if someone, if we, if Word would like to define that term moving forward, I think that that would be beneficial. So um, let's let me not use it because it's a legal term, and we're none of us are licensed in California. So um, <laughs> <laughs> as I always like to say. Um, so arm's length. I, I think that um, I should have an arm's length relationship with the internship internship committee. But you don't feel that way about the permission committee? I, I don't. I'm just checking. I'm not like. I don't. I don't. Right. Because at the end of the day, the uh, agree mutually agreed upon projects are going to be are going to come from the majority of this board. Um, and yeah, clear. I was not complaining about that as a possibility. I just wanted to clarify it. So it's yeah. just yeah. Awesome. Um, any other board comment for who? So you had. What, who did you end up with on policy? Were you going to bundle on well, my new favorite the, the, word? Those, <laughs> even though the bundle is an awesome idea, that, that has to be a separate okay. vote, I'm pretty sure. So you, so you have, a, you have the uh, formation committee. Yes. So what I'm looking to do is make a motion to appoint the three directors to, to the committee. Okay. And, and one thing I'll add on that, because I know there's been concern about um, the chair making or seconding a motion, that is something that will be decided by district policy um, at, at the time that we get there. Because it is rather not customary for the presiding officer to make a motion, but that is not something that we, um, that we have decided on. And I do believe that based on the direction of the board of directors that I've received, I have to be the person to make that motion, being that I'm no, I'll, I'll, I'll make a motion that we accept your recommendation for the three. I like that. But did you did you have you put thought then yet into of your internship policy? So that was I was, so that was my, 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 the, one of the goals of bundling them was to allow us to kind of talk about them as kind of this kind of group. And so, like for example, I was making the comment that I'm have interest in formation or policy. I'm very flexible. Yeah. And then there was commentary on apparently now four people who were interested in being on internship committee. Um, now we have three. Yeah. Only to read down the. Oh yeah, because you 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 revoked yourself. Okay, mm -hmm. sorry. And who are you thinking about for policy? So for policy, I was thinking Director Freeman, Director Jordan, and that's a committee that I'm open to serving on. But I, I would be happy idea. to hear. I think that's a good idea. Other recommendations. That'd, that'd be wise. Yeah, I feel I comfortable with policy formation yeah. as well. So, so for policy, just to clarify, so that would be myself. Say again. No, I think he, he volunteered for internship committee, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Intern. Oh. Yeah. 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 The comment yeah. if people didn't hear was everyone has an intern, but it has a committee, but John. So. Yeah. yeah. I have one. And thank you. It's fine. Make sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so where we would be at with policy would be Director Freeman, Director Jordan. And possibly myself, but let's talk about the the last one before we uh, before we get there. And then, so that leaves us with the internship committee. Um, this was something that I felt very passionately about serving on, um, perhaps more passionately than I do about serving on the policy committee. Um, so for for that reason, I would like to to ask if Director Hedges would like to serve on the policy committee, or if we were to, it could potentially be dir myself, Director Hedges, Director Thurlow. Wait, wait, Thur Thurlow didn't want to be, okay, couldn't so be on the internship. I, th I thought the only three people who volunteered who I wanted to be on were, internship. were Natalie, <coughs> Father John, and yourself. Did I miss you? Are we talking yeah, about no, policy or internship? Because internship I want to be on internship. For internship yeah. committee. The, like, I, th I, think yeah. I, I think I understood that the people okay. who were still yeah. wanting to be on internship yeah. were Natalie, John, and Ethan. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Okay. Okay. We so could have just one big meeting, right? Oh, so <laughs> <laughs> I <can> just <laughs> draw them all together. <laughs> myself, Natalie, and Father John for the internship committee. Um, and this is just just solidifying all this before we take action. Um, and then on the policy com committee, myself, Director Freeman. And Director Jordan, um, but but before we were also talking about combining policy and formation. 
Well, that was a comment that Bob sort of meant, as they kind of brought up, right? Well, I, would just, I was just saying that policy is going to be related. Any, anything that comes out of formation is going to result mm -hmm. to, in the policy. development of policy. Yeah, you, you didn't actually. No, I didn't yeah, say you don't put them yeah, together. Okay, yeah. no. that that actually so I don't want to write policy. Okay. Yeah. That's a fantastic, uh, <laughs> fantastic mention. Um, definitely. Okay, so then in that case, um, is Director Freeman interested in serving on yes. policy? Director Jordan interested on serving on policy in addition to the internship or no? Um, yes, um, but if someone else really wants to sit on policy, I feel more passionately about internship. So, just because I, yeah. Anyone? Is, is there someone else? I, I, I think I'd, I'd love to serve on policy, and I think that that would be good to be able to kind of bring the perspective of someone who sits on formation and policy, since, as you're right, Bob, these kind of things interrelate. They do. Um, I would really be able to, like, yeah. you know, coordinate with them outside of information that's available at public meetings and be like, hey, this is what. Thurlow and Geis want to do, but I will be able to bring that perspective, and so I'd be open to that. You would say, you'd say, those are the two old guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the old guys. So I would, yeah. Yeah. No, no, so I'll make a motion. Trying to instruct the ground, I'll try <laughs> so I'll make a motion so. to um, uh, accept your recommendations for these three committee assignments. What and, are they? And uh, it's, it's Thurlow, Geis, Brandt, formation. Bertrand, Jordan, Hedges. Wait. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I think we changed that one. Didn't we? Oh, we did? Yeah, we did. Okay. Bertrand, Freeman, Jordan. Uh, I mean Bertrand, Freeman, Grant for policy, correct? Yeah. I hadn't gotten it yet. That's good. Mm -hmm. Can I ask for a second? Okay. Wait, you're only doing one of them? Or all no. three of them? There's just the third one. That's two, so there's one more. The internship. Which one? Internship. Okay. Bertrand, Jordan, Father Hedges. Information is Guy's brand Yes. That's right. And as for a second. I second. Is this your recommendation to clarify? Uh, I, after I hear it back. So so far, it sounds great. Okay. Can you please repeat the motion before we find a second? Okay. The motion on the floor is by Director Thurlow um, to accept President Bertram's recommendation of Geis, Brandt, and Thurlow for formation committee, Bertrand, Freeman, and Brandt for policy committee, Bertrand, Jordan, and Hedges for internship committee, seconded by Director Jordan. Is that your recommendation for clarification? That is my recommendation. Um, to be consistent with the motion that was um, made earlier that set this up, should um, the word appoint be somewhere in there, like as far as the appointment of the president, rather than a recommendation, or our recommendations to appoint. Recommendations to appoint. Yeah, sure. Cool. Just to be consistent with mm -hmm. what was discussed earlier. So now, now that now that we have this motion that George has come up with, this this cute trick that we're going to move to accept your recommendations. I think I remember there being, and it, it's possible because it, due to a very different scenario in the Elvis Recreation Park District, that we can't vote on ourselves being put on a committee. But that's, I think, because they get paid there, and we would, I mean, we're not doing, but I don't know what the process we, there is. We don't get paid policy. for our committees, we don't, okay. but you could get paid for your committees. Um, other districts do, um, and therefore, yeah. So, so, so now, now, now that we are voting to accept your recommendations, maybe that makes it a situation where we are now voting in order to accept ourselves onto a committee and we just got screwed. Is it <laughs> but, but that, but that rule is a part of that. that as a point of clarification from from you, Peggy, to the chair, that, that that that's a that is a a policy of your of the district that you sit on. No, 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 no. The no. the not being able to vote on yourself is a salary issue. Yeah, is is everybody. We're but he could employee. just appoint. Yeah. It, yeah, yeah. I mean. We don't have to do a motion. We don't have to do a motion. We don't have to just just appoint us. Just appoint us. Yeah. So, so, it would just have to be reflected in the minutes. So, so let it be reflected in the minutes of this meeting. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> but now you'd have to. So glad we're in attendance. <laughs> director Thurlow, <Sorry. laughs> Director Geis, and Director Grant, with their consideration, are being appointed to the formation committee. Okay. Good. Thank you. Are you going to have public comment on this? 
Yes. Um, wait, we're still in the middle of a motion. So for I would clarification. Draw, withdraw my motion. There we go. Can't can can vote on the motion. No, I'm withdrawing my motion. Withdrawing. withdrawing it. We're in the motion. discussion. Yeah, it's off so the table. So we have to rescind the motion to actually Ethan's make another one. making the appointment. Yeah. Are, is there any additional public comment before I make appointments? Uh, Mr. Rourke. Thanks so I, I appreciate, again, going back to transparency, I appreciate it. Um, the conversation made a sound feel um, drawn out, but I, but I do think um, given the newness of the board, uh, given uh, the community, the interest of the community in the process, um, I do appreciate this and I hope while, while you're making a motion or sounds like going to be appointing, I do appreciate prior to this appointment the opportunity for the public to hear uh, for for board members to speak up. Mm -hmm. um, thank you very much. Thank you for participating in this. Uh, Mr. Bean? I just want to thank you all for all the care that you take. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Um, my question is directed to Director Thurlow. <laughs> Um, are you going to be assigning a new university staffer to to be the representative? Wait to to work with the committee on the internship program because you can't present to the committee. You can't discuss <coughs> the internship program with the committee members. So how? Oh does no, that I can. I can. Uh, I I'm going to discuss it with the chair of the committee and only the chair of the committee. But you can't, that's a wrong Serial no. If I just discuss it with the chair of the committee, just yeah, one other member, not, during the, committee the committee, not during the committee. Because that committee, but that chair is yeah. already in Brown Act, Brown Act buddies with two other people already on, on the creation of the internship. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 So either you yes, need to be on the committee good. or that's fine. That's good. That's good legal advice. Thank you. So. Okay, so Wait, we so will. With that in mind, are you saying that you would like to serve on the internship committee? Uh, <laughs> we might like have to. to. No, let's. <laughs> no, no, no. I'll, I'll, I'll assign. I'll assign that to um, somebody on my staff. Okay. Is that a? But that's a serial. That's, it gets real close to serial because unless you're completely walled off from it, like yeah. if, if they're. You guys are ready in communication, and then they're going on oh, and that's only, I mean, it's a perception yeah. issue. Okay. It might not, it's not, you know, that's the whole thing with Brown Act Law, but I'm just going to start out and just black and white going now. So what if it wasn't, this is actually what if it wasn't his staff member, program. what if it was just someone, a university representative? Yeah. Right, is a university representative acceptable? Because they would yeah. not they be allowed, allowed and they, they can't talk to George. They would not be allowed to they talk to George. They can't take direction from George. But then George would still get the, but like, okay, I get that. But so don't I probably you think, need to be on the committee. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I, don't, I personally don't see any way around it. No, that's good advice. I appreciate it. Because I would have stumbled right into that. I'm a rookie. I'm now, my question for you, George, um, with no, your please. potential membership on the internship committee, would you still like to keep your membership on the formation committee? It's up to you. There were two other members yeah. of the public who had comment. Yes, and. Absolutely. Just a, a question for you then. Oh, My intention <laughs> would be to appoint you to both. However, yeah. if Easy. you uh, would prefer <laughs> to only be on one, I will appoint you to the internship committee. No, I, I, can, I'll, I'll, I can be on both. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, back to the public. I saw some hands. Glabel. Uh, Maybe many of these things in the initial stages would go smoother if we could get Darcel to be writing out all the motions on Butcher Bob. <laughs> 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 Jonathan? Well, my idea is kind of irrelevant now, but I was going to say you could appoint two people to the internship committee only, and then we would have been able to talk to them. You might as well appoint me to it. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. I'm going to do that. And then, yeah. 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 You're reminding my goal of getting hard to do as far as possible. I'm just curious, and Ethan, who's coming off of internship? That's what we have to figure yeah. out. Okay. Um, I personally would like to remain on. I would like to um, remain based like on. Based on the, based on my discussions about this prior to this point, and um, my mm. understanding of some of the discussions that have taken place at the university level, and also speaking with the Chancellor's Coordinating Committee of Isla Vista on UCSB involvement through the internship program. With that in mind, I would like to serve on the committee. Um, 
And right now, I think this committee is specific to, although that's to be determined by the committee, I think it's pretty aimed at the university's internship program, which I know um, Director Hedges' uh, main interest is the volunteer program. Mm -hmm. And at this point, I don't know that that's necessarily a part of it. Mm -hmm. Broader community involvement, though, would come from that, and that's something that I think is vital. You know, vital. that's a great idea. So why don't we, yeah. uh, why don't we add lib here without cutting on and, and create a community involvement committee? I think that that's uh -huh. a good idea. I'd be happy to place that on the next agenda. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Just because I also, um, I would really like to serve on the internship committee just because of a lot of my um, constituents. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> That's kind of it. That's the extent of it. I just feel like I, I have a really strong um, uh, ability to navigate these channels as well. So. Did we close public comment on this? No. Um, yeah, my question is for Director Thurlow. Um, did you previously uh, disclose that you might have a conflict of interest in Word. serving on this particular committee that now we're saying you will be appointed to? Is that correct? Um, so care to disclose what that a conflict of interest What's is? What's a conflict? Well, the. Um, <coughs> You know, we didn't agendize this MOU. So there's an MOU that's been worked on um, prior to my appointment to the uh, CSG by the Chancellor, and in which I discussed, have discussed with a number of different entities, including uh, two members of the board, to make sure that we had Brown Act compliance. And we'll raise our hands to be completely yeah. transparent about that. Um, and so right now, the idea is that. Um, we Are we allowed to have this discussion about the MOU that was not agenda? Well, it's, I'm responding to a question okay. from the audience. What is an MOU? It's a memorandum of understanding. Oh, okay. So the conflict is, is that I'm, I've been out raising money for these internships. I've uh, coordinated the um, uh, Department of Political Science. Wait, because this is a legal issue, I, want, I really want to... Can you let me continue, please? Okay. I'd like to hear That's Director sure. Freeman's response. Okay, okay. so um, uh, it is very often that you'll see the Board of Supervisors say that even though there's a question from the audience that they mm. can't answer it that day and that they yeah. will agendize the item yeah. for the next yeah. time. Um, I'm, I'm, just, I'm highly concerned I'm with the idea that we may okay. going to end up on our day one with some ludicrous Brown Act issue um, yes. because uh, we're talking I about I agree yeah. with that. Yes, I, I, I feel comfortable with agree. what Director Thurlow has said thus far, but I do not think we should move past. Okay. Yeah. For agree. clarification, <laughs> though, for the minutes, I really would prefer if we could reflect in the minutes the difference between a conflict of interest um, versus something that cannot be disclosed. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, I think that the language of conflict of interest being reflected in our first minutes and also like moving forward, if uh, Director Thurlow were to sit on the board, I think that that would establish a really um, like sketchy beginning. Do you get so what I'm saying? I'm only at the suggestion of the clerk of the board of the Santa Barbara County Board of Supervisors, I'm only taking action minutes, so like only motions. Also and for so clarification, we're on camera too, and we've used the word um, conflict of interest repeatedly. So if we could just. Well, and we, we also yeah. went back and clarified that, and George said he wasn't comfortable it just came using up again. the term. I, I know, it just came up in an audience question though, and then yeah. it was responded to as if there were a conflict of interest. So I need there to be like, do you get what I'm saying? With this is being yeah, on no, camera, I understand, I understand. and if you were to move forward, yeah. Then it, from day one, we would now say, well, he had a conflict of interest because he confirmed that. So either yeah. mm -hmm. we roll that back and say, no, he doesn't, or we continue and say, he just said he did. So then, therefore, moving forward, it so would make sense. So is this a question for Director Thurlow? I'm saying that if there, you feel comfortable, no, would you be there, comfortable rolling there, that back? There is, there is, first of all, I'm not practiced, I'm not licensed to practice law in California, so I'm not going to put out any kind of legal opinion. Um, and, there, and, and what I'm saying is simply that I have been involved in this, and the university's involved in it, and it's for the benefit of the entire community of, of Isla Vista. And so my actions are for the benefit of the entire community of Isla Vista. Based on what I have heard, it does not seem like that is any information that would bar Director Thurlow from service on this committee. Uh, so, so now let me just read the, right now where we're at with these appointments and at that point, after hearing further public comment and, and board, um, that those appointments will be made. Can, can I suggest that you not approve the formation of an internship committee at this meeting and discuss it at the next meeting? Yeah. Um, 
we already have approved it. We've already created it. In our former motion, it's already been created. Been so created. the only thing that we can do now is either choose to appoint people or to wait. <laughs> no, no, that was excellent advice. <laughs> um, at, at this point, the committees have been created. The committees um, have been delegated tasks. Um, it's important to note that the nature of these committees are strictly advisory that these committees do not have any autonomous authority outside of this board, that these committees re report back to the board of directors, and that at any time the board of directors can provide a different directive to these committees. Um, so with that in mind, um, and the motion that was made and passed by um, Director Jordan, I, I do think that we have an obligation to make these appointments. Um, so, uh, Mr. Rourke. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Um, so, I think... Um, it's pretty um, apparent or obvious, maybe not, those aren't the right words, but um, I mean, this, this board was selected by all of the residents. Um, every, most people wanted it, and most people still do. Um, there's people here in attendance to, to support this board and, and to, to support Isla Vista. So I don't think anyone here wants to you know, make this board fail or anything like that. Um, but I think there might be some concern about the idea of an internship committee as if this was something presupposed, predetermined, um, that there might be, uh, I'm going to say, um, conflict of interest, um, wherever that might be or whatever shape, however that might look, um, I would uh, suggest or that you consider the idea of, I, uh, I also heard um, the idea of a formation of a community outreach uh, subcommittee, which if the uh, internship subcommittee was dissolved and, and, and a uh, community outreach committee was formed, um, that might seem uh, a more appropriate way forward for any kinds of questions about that look at a larger uh, problem of community outreach and how to get that best done. Just something to consider. Thank you. Jonathan, did you have anything? I just wanted to re uh, respond a little bit to what Jeremy said about okay, it. Please direct comments oh. up to the, the board. Oh, Feel yes. free to speak on that. But yes, uh, I just wanted to reply really quick. Is, uh, the concept of a CSD internship was is not a new idea. It's it discussed as early as 2015 as you know, something the CSD can do, so I don't think it's... Um, out of line to make a committee or to start discussing it, so I don't think it should be dissolved. And also, the university has sent out like an email to the political science department. Already sent out emails to students suggesting there be an internship or saying that there'll be an internship. So I don't. I think it's a reasonable thing for the board to consider in a committee. So. And 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 can I clarify? There was they were very very careful not to mention that these internships were with the CSD until the CSD accepted them. Uh, but I don't want to talk about it because I've been warned by our secretary. But uh, I just want to make sure that that, that was clear, that the poli sci is out soliciting interns. Thank you. But that doesn't um, mention CSD. Mr. Rourke. Yeah, sorry. And I would like to clarify, too. I didn't mean to imply that I think the internship program should be um, thrown out. I, I, I felt like um, in a, a committee that's called Community Outreach Committee, if there were interns um, decided upon to be created an internship program from that committee, um, I think that would be great as long as, you know, it's not just um, they, that uh, I would charge the board or encourage the board to consider how those interns are reaching out to the entire community. Thank you. And one thing that strikes me is we've all, it seems like these discussions are based on something that we've already ruled on in creating the internship committee. Um, is that something that my I directors agree. would uh, I agree. agree? So I, th I think we really need to focus on just making these appointments as has been directed of me by, by the board at this time. Rock it out. Um, so I, I'm going to read out what I have on these papers for appointment, then I'll go up to one last public comment. 
then come back to the board, and at that time, I'm going to make the official appointment. So what I have right now is for the formation committee, Director Thurlow, Director Geis, and Director Brandt. Right now, what I have for the policy committee is myself, Director Freeman, and Director Brandt. Right now, what I have for the internship committee is myself, Director Jordan, and Director Thurlow. What I really think we need to do is find a committee assignment for Director um, Hedges right now. Um, we are going to bring, most likely at a future meeting, an item for Community Involvement Committee. Um, I'd, I'd love to hear from you. Would you like to us to make an appointment of you tonight to one of these committees, or with the promise, as we'll establish at the end, creating a community involvement committee or something of similar nature, would you be free to waiting a few weeks before receiving an appointment? Yes, totally I certainly new. would. <laughs> I, well, I, the, I mean, the <laughs> promise of putting it on the agenda. Don't yes. undermine. On the, on, on the agenda. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I would. I, I serve at your Secretary. discretion. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so just because I saw one more hand here, we are going to go to public comment. And that at that time, I'll give a last nod to my friends up here, and then I'm making these appointments. Any exist last public I comment? I suggest you use the language with the concurrence of the board. I can hear what I Excellent. That's great. Thank you. That's great. That's, That's sound, awesome. Yeah. Uh, one more. <laughs> that sounds familiar. <laughs> But I, I'm really surprised to see um, so much going on. Like, usually, the Board of Supervisors, the first meeting of the year is basically ceremonial. And agenda setting I, is what I thought tonight would be. And I'm probably asleep at the wheel and out of the loop and don't really know all the cool people. But I had no idea what this agenda was um, until straight, like, right before the meeting. So um, I don't know that there won't be some lawyers from Sacramento with a $500 suit and you know shiny white shoes who's going to come out of the woodwork someday in the future and say that all of these actions are somehow like subject to attack on the Brown Act or not. And I hope not. And I don't really think so. But going forward, if there could be a very clear way of Brown Act noticing because everybody I talked to wanted to know why this there wasn't an agenda for this meeting and a notice of meeting posted at the Parks and Rec bulletin board, which kind of seems like a very logical place. So you probably had some Facebook page or something that some people know about, but going forward, it would be really cool to um, be very good about noticing agenda items Absolutely. so that it's not cold because and this I is really would expect that actually everything that's being done now would actually be subject to finalization at the next meeting. Because I don't think there's been an adequate opportunity for people in the public to digest and suggest other committee ideas and so forth. So Thank you. Um, direct response for that and then we really have to move on. We will be discussing in one of our final agenda items of tonight, and that's with the assumption that we will be tabling some as well, um, procedures for future Brown Act um, for future meeting preparation and follow up. It's one of our agenda items. But what I must say is that this is a special meeting of the Board of Directors. Um, a special meeting requires 24 hour notice of the Brown Act compliance. Um, we met that requirement well before 24 hours. Um, and we'll have a further discussion with this later. And in response to the IBRPD, um, we spoke with the general manager. And um, for something to be posted that's part of district policy, which is very understandable but that policy has not been um, approved by the board. We'd have to take that. Yes. Um, and yeah. Cynthia. I just have a question. Um, this, uh, this board is uh, an attempt to allow the people of Isla Vista to govern themselves, right? And so um, it just seems odd and a bit uncomfortable that for the formulation committee, you chose um, two appointees and only one elected director, and I wanted to know why you made that choice. So maybe I can speak to all the I think it's my appointment. Okay. So I have to Okay, just because I think it wasn't, it wasn't, and I'm sure you're more than yeah. competent to answer. Um, but 
uh, I chose the two individuals. Well, I haven't chosen yet. I've, I'm moving towards choosing the two individuals, um, the two appointed individuals to be part of the three, um, as I feel that they have the most relevant experience and knowledge in that in those matters. Um, however, I'll again state this is a strictly advisory committee. All decisions will be made by by the, the board of directors as a whole. Um, I do understand your concern, and I appreciate you bringing it up. Um, but based on the amount of work that we have ahead of us and really needing to dive deep and figure this out, um, that's why I've, I'm moving towards recommending um, Director Thurlow and Director Geitz. And the scope of work, I think, is a big thing, too. Absolutely. The kind of work that they do. Yes. Jeremy? Is it a requirement that there only be three members? We cannot have more than three, or else it will be a drowning violation. Um, any last public comment on the committee assignments that I have chosen? This will be the last time that I'm going out to the public before making the recommendations. Any more public comment? Seeing none, I'm coming back to the board for final recommendations before I make my own. Director Freeman. Um, so I'm, I'm so sad that I'm so bad at names, but the person in the hat who I was, I, I know him, but I just, yeah, Jeff. Um, he, uh, uh, this is a comment that I heard many times while going around and giving people the agenda and the 90 day notice is the idea that this was a very thick agenda and that um, people did not feel like they had the uh, adequate time in order to digest it. Director Freeman, we'll be discussing this in a future agenda item on this agenda. Okay. So I think it's important. Then I will. Time. Thank you. I will skip then to um, uh, so a response to Ash's comment, um, which was about the two appointees. Um, the I heard from many people as I was handing people um, all of the agenda and the 90 day action plan that their their biggest concern. I mentioned this earlier was the fact that we have two out of seven board members who are appointed, and I think that it essentially just. Whether whether we, it's technically a problem or not, whether it's actually a good idea because it, 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 these are helpful people or not, it, it lends the perception of a problem when you have when you set up the formation committee such that it has the two um, uh, appointed members on it. Um, this is the kind of thing that that Doreen Carr would always make these great comments about that were that in many ways um, the the perception of things is just as important as as the actual nature of things when you're talking about conflicts and issues. Thank you. Any other board comment? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I just wanted to say and reiterate um, that I think we could have avoided a really disjointed conversation regarding the internship program and said internship committee had we not taken these items out of order. And this is this has made me very worried about taking item, items out of or order now um, because of the fact that there was a lot of things that inform the conversation regarding the, term, the internship um, uh, that were in um, the discussion of the 90-day plan, um, among other things. Um, and I also just wanted to reiterate that I think that if there's one thing that I've seen today from our board, it's that we are not a board that is going to rubber stamp things. We are going to mm -hmm. be attentive, and we are going to make sure that we dot every I and cross mm -hmm. every T. And I want to reiterate, reiterate, all these committees are advisory committees. They will bring back mm -hmm. recommendations to the board. The board will then be tasked mm -hmm. with reviewing them with a fine comb and then approving them and making sure that the policy that we put in place mm -hmm. is something that is coherent and is something that works for the entire community. And like I said, these are committees. They are advisory committees. Um, they should definitely stay advisory. And, and the board will keep its role in making sure that um, we don't have a situation where you know uh, there is a perception that um, that the public's being left out of this process. Yeah. Thank you, Director uh, Jordan. Okay, just going. I was just wanted to make a comment. This is going to be my last comment on this. Is that I think for the productivity of meetings, it is absolutely essential that we only make comments and have discussion pertinent to the motion or discussion at hand. When we go in circles like this, we're talking about talking, and that drives me crazy. So if we could <laughs> limit our discussion to only the issues at hand, that would be great. And seeing as I'm doing the exact thing that I can't stand, I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah. And I'd like to talk about talking one more <laughs> time. <laughs> um, the concern that somehow um, a rep an appointed representative from the university or an appointed representative from the uh, Board of Supervisors can uh, co-opt the process here, can in, in some ways uh, hijack the process, which I have heard from some community members, 
I would like to really knock on the head. This board grew from the, from the ground of Isla Vista. And the strong core of it is representative, elected, uh, organically grown, if you will. And we're not going to let that happen. And that's a declaration. So, um, uh, you know, is this. Is that a motion? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're not going to let that happen. Okay, I call the motions. So at this point, I think God we're, love you though. Uh, <laughs> we're glad you're here. Uh, but I think at this point we are ready to move forward with these recommendations. However, I would be remiss if I didn't mention something that I just reminded myself of. Looking at the Community Services District Law, um, Section B of six one zero four five is the Board of Directors shall only act by ordinance, resolution, or motion. So I think even though I've been directed to a point. I still need to make a motion. And how I suggest a simple way of doing that would be rather than um, doing everyone individually and committee, I would potentially make a motion saying I appoint director X to committees X and X. Um, board comment on that idea. That sounds like it solves our that, problem. That's great. Yeah. Good job. You <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. And, and one more thing, yeah. because I know that there's been there's been concern about the board president making motions. Just back to what I said. I've I've looked at the IVRPD policy manual and other policy manuals. Board director has the same authority. I mean, board president has the same authority as all other directors. Um, I look forward to us moving towards something where we have a tradition. Right now, we do not. So I move to a point as my first um, appointment motion that, I'm sorry, I lost my papers on me. Thank you. I move to appoint Director Brandt to the Formation Committee and to the Policy Committee. A second. Call a question. Public comments? Board comment. Okay. I'm now going to call the question. And again, this is to direct to appoint Spencer Brandt to the Policy Committee and to the Formation Committee. Calling the question. Director Bertrand, aye. Director Brandt, abstain. Director Freeman, aye. Director Geis, aye. Director Hedges, aye. Director aye. Jordan, aye. Sorry, aye. Motion passes 6 0, one abstention, Spencer Brandt. Congratulations on your committee assignments. Thank you. I'm so excited. Okay. Um, I am now going to make my next motion in which I am going to appoint, or I'll say it, I move to appoint Director Freeman to serve on the policy committee. I second. A second. Okay. You can second. We're ambitious. Second. <laughs> Director Brandon. So again, that's to that's again that's to appoint Director Freeman to the policy committee. Public comment on this motion at hand. I see thumbs up and smiles. <laughs> awesome. Uh, board comment. <laughs> Seeing none, I call the question. Director Bertrand, aye. Director Brandt, aye. Director Freeman, abstain. Director Geis, aye. Director Hedges, aye. Director Jordan, aye. Director Jordan. Aye. Motion passes 6-0, one abstention. Director Freeman, congratulations on your committee assignments. All right, at this time we are going to, at this time I move to appoint Director Geis to serve on the formation committee. I second. Thank you. Public comment, board comment. I'm calling the question of the motion which was to appoint Director Geis to serve on the formation committee. Um, calling the question now, Director Bertrand, aye. Director Brandt, aye. Director Freeman, aye. Director Geis, abstain. Director, Aye. Director, Aye. Director, Aye. Director. Motion passes 6 0 with uh, Director Geis like abstaining. Congratulations on your committee assignment. Thank you. Now, um, to. I move to appoint Director Jordan to serve on the internship committee. Uh, public comment? Who needs a second? Oh, I second. Thank you. Public comment? Seeing none, board comment. Okay, again, that was to direct to appoint Director Jordan to the internship committee. I'm calling the question. Seeing no comment, Director Bertrand, aye. Director Brandt, aye. Director Freeman, aye. Director Geis, aye. Director Hedges, aye. Director Jordan, abstain. Director Thurlow, aye. So ordered. Six zero. 
um, obsession with Director Jordan. Congratulations on your committee assignment. Thanks. So now at this point, I'm the only person who's being assigned to the no. committee tonight. Yeah, George. Mm -hmm. George. Thank you. Um, okay. The, the most talked about appointment. I won't. I won't. <laughs> the, the most talked about appointment. I, um, I move to appoint Director Thurlow to serve on the formation committee and to serve on the internship committee. I second. Public comment. Seeing none. Board comment. Again, that's to appoint Director Thurlow to the formation committee and the internship committee. Calling the question. Uh, wait, are you? You, you know, there was a second on that. I was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, second by Jordan. Okay. I was. I was going to. I, I was just going to say, is it? Is there any possibility of doing those individually? Mm -hmm. Um, definitely amenable to hearing more about it. For what reason? Um, due to the commentary on the formation committee having the two appointed members. Um, before I. It, it, it's, it's, just, it's just ceremonial that to allow me to say a no on something. <laughs> oh, it doesn't. It doesn't. It, I know. I know what the result is going to be. So it's not like that. Oh, it's totally. Fine. And I just want to ask um, Director Thurlow, would your input recommend doing that? Sure. Sounds good. I hereby amend my motion. Um, or actually, I rescinded the initial motion. Yay. Just going okay. to start. I was about to ask you to do that. Okay. okay. Yes. Um, I move to appoint Director Thurlow to the Formation Committee. I second. Public comment. I just wanted to briefly say that I had, had the honor of having uh, George Thurlow teach a class at, at uh, Shop Center. And he distinguished himself, in my mind, by standing for institutional integrity at a time when publishing in this county was being ravaged by uh, a millionaire takeover. Of the so I think all the, all the concerns about the fact that he's appointee are very, very much mitigated by the quality that he brings to the position. Thank you. Any Thank other you. public comment? That was incredibly kind. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Any other public comment? Any other board comment? I'm just going to say that I, I, I really heart George Thurlow. Uh, and this is not about whether I believe that George Thurlow would not be a great addition to this committee, nor do I believe that this is, or nor am I making this about um, whether I believe that George himself will be a problem due to this issue, but it is just, uh, I, I, I think that there's a perception issue here, and so I'm, that's why I'm absolutely voting that. Thank you for your explanation. Um, and again, uh, so now I've heard from the public, I've heard from the board, I'm going to call the question. Uh, the motion was to appoint George Thurlow to the Formation Committee. Calling the question, Director Bertrand, aye. Director Brown, aye. Director Freeman, no. Director Geis, aye. Director Hedges, Director aye. Gordon, Director Thurlow. Abstain. The motion passes 5-1 with an abstention of Director Freeman and, no, no, I mean, no, I'm sorry, no a, a no vote from Director Fre Freeman and an abstention from Director Thurlow. All right. Be it I make a motion to. Um, uh, Maya can make the motion. Oh, you can't. Uh, I have one more for him. Oh yeah, I thought yeah. you were making a motion on yourself. I was going to no, say. No, thank uh, you for. I'll I'll be pleased to. No, okay. Uh, so first. Um, Jump in the gun. I I move to appoint Director Thurlow to serve on the internship committee. I second. Public comment. Board comment. All right, I'm calling the question of appointing Director Thurlow to the Internship Committee. I'm Director Bertrand, and I say aye. Director Brandt, aye. Director Freeman, aye. Director Geis, aye. Director Hedges, aye. Director Jordan, aye. Director Thurlow, abstain. Thank you. That's a 6 0 vote, abstention from Thurlow. You've received your committee assignments. Um, so now, the last appointment that's being made tonight to a committee, unless, well, yeah, at this point, that it is the last, um, is myself, and that's only due to the, the fact that we have intention of, at the end of the meeting, discussing future agenda items where we'll discuss other committees that will be more inclusive for all members of our board. Um, so with that in mind, I ask for someone to make a motion. Um, That's kind of where I was at. I have to think about how to say it, because yeah. you, you all directed me to, um, yeah. to make these appointments. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting for this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, you had it earlier. We, 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 actually, Thurlow had it earlier, where we could receive a appointment, and then we, and then because of the fact that we're voting on you, we actually can receive you. 
Uh, I make a motion. Can I make a motion? Mm -hmm. I just, I motion to, um, oh gosh. Okay, I motion to add uh, Director Bertrand to the internship committee as well as the policy manual ad hoc committee based on well, the recommendation. Yeah, no, no, I, yeah, it was like the way that George had earlier is, is that you would move to receive um, the appointment from Director Bertrand. Yeah, as okay. his recommendation is stated. Yeah. Does that work? As mm -hmm. stated in the recommendation. But I'm now, sorry, it's not pretty. So here's a question I have. Um, you are the board vice president. I cannot vote on this. Are you acting as the presiding officer <laughs> on this? Okay. I move. Are you receive. incapacitated <laughs> right now? If well, you're incapacitated, then. That's a good okay. question. <laughs> I actually rescind my motion entirely, so there is no motion on the table anymore. There's okay, no that's all that I've rescinded. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, wait. I am calling on public comment from Peggy and Suzar. You guys have the policy manual one as an ad hoc committee. Oh, yeah. No, no, <laughs> we, no, no, no. Okay, yeah, you changed changed yeah, we changed the language. Okay. Yeah. I changed the language when I made okay, my motion. Sorry, I yeah. 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 I'm all about it. I changed that. So, I move. So I will move to receive the appointment of Ethan Bertrand to the um, uh, policy committee and the internship committee. Um, uh, yeah, here you go. I second. Uh, uh, policy internship policy committee and internship committee. Call the question. Wait, who seconded? I seconded. Um, I would like to ask the vice president of the board to call this question. I called a question. Uh, yeah, called a question. Natalie, Natalie Jordan, I, and then. I. Okay. Do we have to go through a roll call? So just, just go down uh, on the agenda where it starts with the alphabetical order. Well, we're already out of order and they've passed their vote, so okay. I'd say continue. Okay, continue. Okay. Guys, aye. Guys, aye. Freeman? Aye. Brant? Aye. Um, uh, Ethan, Bertrand abstains. Ethan, sorry. I like, I'm not yeah. lost in the And um, He's not here, so I, that's, he's not that's part of it anymore. That's an abstention. I don't know if this is that technically an abstention because he's not at the table. He's obstinate. <laughs> <laughs> but if he were, uh, yeah. but if, <laughs> for clarification, if he were not at the meeting, that would not be an abstention. Uh, we're, 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 we're we, um, I, yeah. I think we, we think? everyone. I think we should wait until director. Until no. director Thurlow returns. Put into the minutes that he left. Yeah. And when the time he left, he doesn't vote. This happens. And this then happens. the time when he here, returns. Here you go. Back. Here you come. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Director Thurlow? Just say aye. All right. That's another vote. Yes. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. So we have five, six votes yes, one abstention by uh, Director Bertrand. Yes. Is that good? As a, as a point of information to our. Um, our lovely minute taker. Um, I know this happens like sort of routinely at the board of supervisors where someone is just out of the room for a vote. We would wait, that, I'd like to interject. Um, we need to clarify the resolution of this motion, which I believe has just passed. Yeah. So that's the same understanding? Yes. Okay, so just to clarify what was just done, I was appointed to the formation. Congratulations. Uh, sorry, I was appointed Woo! to the policy committee and to the internship committee. Thank you very much. Um, now, uh, before we move on, Spencer, continue with your. Oh yeah, I was just going to ask, how does that reflect in the board? I'm not. Uh, okay. Questions I mean, we knowledge. haven't had any abs, um, abs, um, absences um, until this board meeting today, so I'll have to see how. It's yeah, I saw. I tuned in, and there were only like three board members. I was like, whoa. Well, one was protesting, but one was absent. So. Who's protesting? Peter Adams. Thank you. Okay, so now let's just assess where we are on this agenda and what we see ourselves getting through tonight. So we we may uh, want to entertain motions of, of stating how we're going to continue with this meeting. Um, I think I'll say that I don't feel that we can get through every item listed on this agenda tonight. Um, I'll, I'll look for uh, my, my colleagues up here for more comment on that. But at this point, 
we've completed the business listed in 4.2, 4.3, 4.4. Even though we've done it in a very wacky order, it is <laughs> completed. And for that, I commend everyone. And thank you, everyone out here seated for your patience. Um, this was very challenging. Uh, I really appreciated what Director Freeman said earlier about please be patient with us. And I express yeah. the same sentiment. Um, we are going to get better at this as we go along. Uh, complicated things for new district. So with that in mind, the two action items that we have left in section four are consider the creation of an online presence for the Isla Vista Community Services District and 4.6 procedures <coughs> for meeting preparation and follow up. I would like to ask my colleagues for thought before we enter into these. Director Brown. I think 4.6 absolutely needs to be considered in order for us to even have these sort of meetings um, at a later date. <laughs> um, that's all I have to say. I reserve my right. I do think that we need to do 4.6, but I don't think we need to do 4.5 um, at this meeting. So with that being said, I motion to table um, agenda item 4.5 until our following meeting. Second. Uh, I was about to offer a friendly, just a friendly amendment. Can we uh, move that item to a committee? Um, um, is the board comfortable with that? I think well, well, one director at a time, please. Who um, would like to respond to the question presented you, by the Would you take as a friendly amendment that we would move that item to a committee so that it could actually be discussed? To it's full Can you specify which committee? 4.5, and it goes to uh, formation. Formation. Committee. Formation. Sure. Um, I'm going to comment on that. The only thing that I see preventing the, the feasibility of doing that is in order for us to follow up with this meeting and have another meeting, we should consider having some sort of online presence to notice it. Um, <coughs> we've been very um, grateful for the advertising that's been done through the Isla Vista Self-Governance Initiative, through Isla Vista Ivy as a City um, accounts. Um, I do think we must discuss at least something there if so let's let's have that as a discussion item if that's okay and be extremely brief okay um, then I rescind my motion I rescind my motion and um, uh, my motion to have a five minute discussion on um, agenda item 4.5 can we do that is everyone okay um, with that <laughs> I think that it's just cool. not breaking our own. What? Our our own. Uh, yeah. You can't put any time. I'm not <laughs> saying it's associated <laughs> students, but I'm saying that no, there is should be clarification. I rescind my motion. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Who seconded it to begin with? There was no. I don't think there was a second. So go ahead, chair. You're the chair. It's your item. Yeah. Um, Director Brown? I think that the best thing um, going forward with the online presence. Um, Wait, before you get into this, yeah, I, we're, we're going to move into this agenda item now. Yeah. Like, let's yeah. make that clear. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 4.5. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we are considering options for creating and maintaining an online presence for the district, such as websites and social media profiles, etc. What I see is essential with this agenda item is that we create a medium, as expressed before, to be in touch with the public about our next meeting. There's obviously many things that we need to be in touch with the public about. I think that the most essential will be letting them know about the next meeting and following up to this meeting, which goes hand in hand with the next item. Um, perhaps someone would like to make a motion to combine the two. I, I motion to combine item 4.5 and item 4.6. I have a second. Would it be amenable to the maker and second the motion if it specified combine item 4.5 and 4.6 for discussion and action? Discussion and action. So, yes. Any public comment? Um, um, ju just, I don't know, I mean, going, going back a, a little <coughs> bit, it, it might just be easier or like that. That, that you could um, empower the um, formation committee to come up with the initial proposal for online presence for the, the following meeting, mm -hmm. but it seems like you're now past that. So. Well, the only thing there would be that we cannot have a next meeting if we haven't provided notice for it. Yeah. Um, Mr. Hodge. Oh, I, I was going to point out, with, uh, you can't, with the website or something like that, there's all sorts of other laws you're probably aware of that you have to comply with scannability and all these others. So. 
I, I know you guys are quite capable with it, but in, with that short period of time, complying with all that to get that presence, is that something that's doable? Well, you, you so I, I think we, we have a group of motion on the table um, to combine the two items. I, I rescind my motion. motion. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, I have another question. Are you closing public comment or should we have it? Public, public comment will open. Well, I, I thought that's what that was. Oh, well, yeah. but the, the motion's been rescinded now. That was for that motion. But I will absolutely come to you in a moment. Director Jordan. My question it goes along with that. That's a great point. So if we st clarify right now what we consider uh, like channels of communication for the board of directors, I feel like that could definitely complicate like us making like if I made like a Facebook page. Do you know what I'm saying? Because then it's an official action of a board of director. Because once that we declare that, put our stamp on it, you know. So that's what I it might be more com com it might be more confusing for us to do that at this point before like without us having the structures in place. Okay. And um, before I call on Director Freeman, confirming we are in 4.5. Before I made a motion to combine, that motion did not go anywhere. Please continue discussion on 4.5. Director Freeman. Wait, but um, Spencer wants to. Is it that? W is it? I'm going chair? to direct. Okay. So um, th this, by the way, is uh, despite the fact that I, arguably because of the fact that I do so much online stuff, is one of the reasons why I was not going to get involved in the construction of this thing. Is because I know just, just how many laws are involved in this. Um, UC Berkeley is right now deleting 20,000 uh, posted videos of courses because somebody complained that they were not accessible enough to the blind, even though they had closed captioning. Um, it is very difficult to do this correctly. Um, my, however, I've watched numerous videos over the last few days about Brown Act uh, training and various compliance. And my understanding is that the Brown Act essentially predates a lot of what we might be talking, thinking about by doing websites and things like that. And so we actually have no legal requirement to notice via a website. I will therefore state that I think that having somebody like Jonathan, who's out there in the audience doing the Isla Vista self-governance initiative running an event, I thought that worked out well as far as our online thing. I think that we needed to maybe do a little bit more of the not online parts, but I think that the mm -hmm. online part went well. So I, 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 mm -hmm. I I'm, I'm arguing that we essentially punt this website discussion to the future, um, particularly because of the, like what Natalie was saying is also the case, some of the stuff I've been reading about online compliance with the Brown Act points out just how complex it is with serial meetings. So, Thank you, Director Brown. Uh, yeah, so I, I just wanted to uh, in some ways echo what you have to say, Jay, about the fact that it will be, you know, I don't think that creating a website in the next week is something that is feasible. I don't think it's something that we can do in compliance with the law. Um, I don't think that that should be something that we are considering right now. Um, I think that what we should consider is some sort of way for in the interim for us to be able to distribute uh, agendas, attachments to the agenda via the internet. Um, one of the <coughs> ideas that uh, is discussed in this item is social media profiles. Um, I think that what you say is a good point, though, that what the, for, the, for those, just to clarify as a point of information, um, the third district supervisor's office sent out uh, the agenda and attachments prior to the board meeting. Um, though that agenda and attachments were then shared uh, by the Isla Vista Self Governance Initiative Facebook page and the Isla Vista as a City Facebook page. Uh, they were shared in the Facebook event as well. Uh, that same link was posted. So these documents were distributed around in that manner as well. Um, I think that making sure that there is at least that bare minimum of accessibility for these online documents is what this entire item is about in my mind. Um, and I think that um, speaking of the, you know, again, like I said, you know, creating you know a website out of thin air is not just something that we're that we are going to be able to do in a week's time. I I, I say that we, in the interests of um, compliance, um, sort. I don't. Know, I mean, we can't direct members of the public to do something, but um, I think that um, the distribution model that we embarked on this last, for in, in for this meeting, uh, in the online context worked well. Mm -hmm. and, um, I'll, I'll comment before moving on to other board members. I think that was an excellent point that Mr. Freeman brought up. Um, as far as the Brown Act requirements for noticing meetings online, um, 
there's requirements for if you have a website, but there is <laughs> not that requirement to have a website. I think, and this is just a thought, uh, most of our members up here probably do want to have a website in the future, but I do like um, the thoughts that have been brought up by Mr. Hodge and my fellow directors about maybe public breaks on that. Um, I'll want to hear from more directors, and then I think at that time we'll be ready to move on to the next agenda item. What happened to your public comment? <coughs> I haven't had a Mr. Okay, I don't like this at all, because what you're doing is you're using Brown Act as an excuse to notice via some third party Facebook page. Now, I have a big, big problem with that, because there is there are many people in Isla Vista who will not use Facebook because they believe that Facebook is monitored uh, or violates their privacy or whatever. There's just a lot of people who absolutely will not use, use Facebook. And you know, compliance or not, I mean, the spirit of the Brown Act, what, what's going on now is you're basically saying that Jonathan has a Facebook page, we'll put the agenda on that, and that's adequate. And, and not only are there not people who won't use Facebook, but there's people who are on Facebook who are not aware of John. His. So, so I really think you should consider what I suggest is that you don't worry about a big bells and whistles fancy website, but that you find out the bare minimum compliance to have some online presence that will have the agenda items and the times and notices, and then people can are free to then post that to Facebook. But something that doesn't require a Facebook login password to get all that information, and then we'll be good. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Bard. Is there any other public comment before I bring it back to the board? Uh, yeah, just point of clarification. It's also been noticed physically on the wall here. And and since this is going to be our meeting place, yes, this would be the traditional. Seventy-two hours. Yeah, here. this would be the traditional legal place that you'd notice, which would be at wherever you're going to hold your meeting. And, and we'll be discussing that in our next item, um, <laughs> Director Brandt. Only if it's directly related to the online presence. Directly related to the online presence. So the um, ooh, I totally lost my uh, train of thought there for a moment. Um, so yes, uh, I mean the. This is going to be the place, I believe, of, of meeting for this body. Um, and I think that, sir, we are in complete agreement with how we would like to see the agenda distributed online. We're not directing Jonathan to do anything. If Jonathan or Jay shares uh, you know, the minutes on the Facebook page on their behalf, uh, then that is completely up to them. It seems like they've expressed interest in doing that. Uh, and also, uh, the agenda will most certainly be noticed um, in the physical location and in and around Isla Vista businesses, as was done uh, in time for this week. Jonathan? I just want to put on the record that, yes, I think that you notice the meeting as legally required, which is in the basic ways. And then, me as a private citizen, I am planning on notice, or not noticing them, I don't want to use a legal word, advertising them on Facebook to the Isla Vista self government. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Oh, yeah, I'll do it. Your assistance is appreciated. Yes, Any other public comment before going back to the board? Josh? Um, actually, I bought the domain islavistacsd.com. And Jonathan owns it right now. So, um, oh, man. It, oh, man. You have to tell us these things. I was going to for you guys when it came about. So, uh, I just wanted to let you know. <laughs> thank, thank you for letting us know. Thank you, Josh. Glad to see you here. Um, <laughs> Uh, mine is really quick, I promise. I know, we're almost done. Um, I just wanted to touch on something that was said. I don't think we should be shying away from a Big Bells and Whistles website. I am someone who uses the internet quite frequently, especially because I don't work in Isla Vista, so I don't always have the opportunity to be here for physical noticing. So I would very much appreciate being able to access everything online at any time. So I just want to... I'm not trying to take away from anything that Mr. Bard said, but I also want to reiterate that I do value online. You know, Thank you very much. Any more public comment on this item before going back to the board? Seeing none, um, Director Jordan. Um, taking everyone's comments into consideration, I think it's really important. Um, and obviously with um, having something like this, there would be a lot of things that need to be ironed out. So I really do think that something like this should be moved under the purview of the formation committee in my opinion, of like the creation of a website and like really determining what are the channels that we communicate with the public. I, I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. My only concern would be that we uh, 
put too much on the formation committee right away. My recommendation would be that we table this <coughs> agenda item for the whole board to take up at our next meeting. My question for you in return, I totally agree with you with the tabling thing, but um, just because there are so many legal things and there are like, we talk about like bells and whistles, meaning that we're gonna have to work out all of those bells and whistles. I think that it's not really, um, I don't know if we're gonna have the time to do that. You know what I'm saying? I think that like, I think that this is something for the board to review more than it is to create, you know? I think that's a great idea. Would um, the board like to have more discussion on it, though, before yeah, punting it to totally. the formation committee? Yeah, I, I love we're how we're using the word punt today. This yeah. is great. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so are you making a motion? Or no, I didn't. No, actually. No, I didn't use my right. At this time. Uh, Director Primo. Um, I, I just want to be very clear a cl uh, clarification of what I said before, which is that um, I am not stating that, and, I don't, and no one up here, by the way, I think, was stating that the noticing should occur only via Facebook. Um, and in fact, I would, I, I, my, one of my complaints was the idea that maybe noticing might only occur via Facebook. It didn't. Um, uh, you saw, for example, me attending the uh, various uh, um, church meals over the course of the last few days, and you'll be seeing me do that much more often now going okay. forward to make certain that people actually have all this information. Um, we will be making certain that it, the information is physically posted in various places. We've received feedback from the public, not just what was mentioned today, but there's been some feedback in the last couple of days about other places where we should have more physical feedback. I actually kind of shadowed some of the people who've been going around with posters and then <coughs> was like handing people agendas to also put next to the poster to make certain that those are posted around the community at least, at least a little bit. Um, the, uh, um, we, I think, I think, I like, I, the, the, uh, the reason why the Facebook is coming up is actually, is, is almost the opposite. There, there's a, a generation of people who are just so locked into only using Facebook that if you don't put something on Facebook, they don't see it at all. And so that's why there's concern up here about trying yeah, to make true. certain there's some way of getting those people to see anything and not trying to figure out ways of limiting other people from seeing things. Yeah. And when I mentioned, for example, the case of Berkeley, Berkeley is yeah. devastated about the fact that they're gonna have to pull down all those videos. They're not using it as an, they're not using the um, accessibility laws as an excuse. They actually ended up with a letter from the Department of Justice, essentially caused, saying that they would actually have to pay monetary damages to people who had never attended Berkeley because they had the gall to put videos online that were, for free access that were just not quite accessible enough. And whether you agree or don't agree with that, we are, that is the legal opinion, that is the legal issue that we have at hand, that we are, if we choose to put a website up and that it is not accessible enough, suddenly we are in the position of now having legal liability and possibly monetary damages towards parties, and we don't have the money to deal with that. And our formation committee, who's gonna be looking into insurance, hasn't happened yet. So I'm just trying to figure out ways of essentially limiting our liability, but I absolutely, I mean, I'm so totally on board with you. I hate the idea of putting anything behind a Facebook login. I give talks at conferences about centralized control of all these things. Don't worry. Please don't. Thank you. Um, I, I just think, you know, first, it's nice to know that Josh secured a Isla Vista CSD domain. That's pretty cool. I was worried about that. How do you get there? Because I have a hard time getting places on the internet. I'm old. Um, but I think for a while, uh, to, well, the agenda, I won't say anything about the agenda, but I think this online presence and this whatever website we create, I've watched the county go through versions of its website, whether it's friendly or whether it's not, or whether it has all the information. I think it's really important that when I look to go get information as a director, I want to go somewhere and I want to read those formation documents, you know, I want to read the law, I want to get easy access to that stuff so we can really understand, you know, what's going on. I thought I made a copy of all the law and I'm looking for a section, I go, oops, I forgot to print that part. Uh, and so I, I, I really think this is a really, almost important enough that it has its own committee. Mm -hmm. that. That might be a longer term committee. It doesn't necessarily need to be a part of formation. That's a different issue than getting out the agenda timely and accurately. But I think this is a big deal about branding ourselves yeah, out branding. with the community and how people are going to view us into mm -hmm. the future. Yeah. And so I, I think we should take this really seriously how we do this. And you know, we have people like Jay who's an expert about the internet and stuff, and we have to worry about all that 
the, the problems with the internet today too that are developing, but I, I think we should keep it as a separate issue. Expert enough to want to kind of stay out of it. Yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason why university websites and government websites suck as much as they do. It's because to tr um, there's a limited number of companies available that actually provide off-the-shelf websites that comply with every single law, and you really want to comply with all of them, and so you just buy one of them. <laughs> Is there any other board comment on this? Is there any member of the board who would like to take action on this? I motion to move on. We don't need a motion. We can just we can. move on. At this time, we are moving to item 4.6. That is after long board discussion and public comment. Thank you for your patience. 4.6, procedures for meeting, preparation, and follow-up. For this, the board of directors will discuss setting a schedule for regular meetings, as we are required to do by law, um, preparing agendas for future meetings, the protocol for that, recording and posting board minutes, and providing the required public noticing of meetings. And um, this was obviously something that we have to discuss at this meeting, and um, I really thank Gina Fisher for uh, really making sure we did it. Um, and with that, I mean, we really, the third district office was a big help with putting on this first meeting, so I think in this discussion we have to talk about what possible, what the protocol will be going forward, um, if that's something that we can work with them on. But then additionally, um, I know that there's been there's obviously a lot of concern with how this meeting was noticed, mm -hmm. how this meeting was agendized, and um, let's talk about how we can do that better going forward. Uh, members of the board who would like to speak, Director Freeman. Uh, I, the big thing for me is I would like to see more time given than the minimum possible notice requirements um, to, uh, for people to have access to agendas and, um, and, and, and a specific, particularly a board attachment that might be like 25 pages long. Um, if there's just some way we could we could just make certain that when we talk about these agenda items, we can get agendas to people more quickly. I mean, I mean, I mean to be honest, I mean even even other governments are right right around here. I've 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 occasionally had issues with the Aldous Recreation Park District about this. I've had issues with the Board of Supervisors on numerous occasions about this. I, I I I I don't think that there's often enough consideration given that when there's an item on an agenda that you want to speak to, you might have to get uh, reschedule your work schedule in order to be able to make it to a meeting. Um, and so just if we could have some, get the th people ahead of time. And then also if you can get, you can get them out ahead of time in early enough, it helps people like Jonathan and other people in the community help distribute and help make certain mm -hmm. everybody knows about it. Help people like Jeff and Michael and, and Scott also. I, I, handed the, like I handed Scott a pile of copies of the agenda. He had kept giving him new ones and he kept handing them to new people. So. so could I ask you when you say get out the agenda earlier, who are we, who is owning that? Somebody's got to own it. Somebody's got to make the agenda. Who's going to set the agenda? What's the format? Like all of these things are super important, you know. Yes, and I think that at the beginning, when we created the office of the secretary, um, we were talking about delegating some of that responsibility to the secretary. If I'm correct, is, is that common understanding up here? Mm -hmm. So, how often are we going to meet? <laughs> so, <laughs> <the> real question. <laughs> 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 I mean, that all yeah. is a product yeah. of getting that agenda <laughs> out <laughs> timely and on time. Yeah. Okay, Director Brown. <laughs> at this point, I just want to say at this point, I feel like I'm down to spend the next thousand right. years with all of you. Yeah, but we can't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're the one taking the <laughs> so, um, so, I, I think that. Um, in, in regards to how often we should meet, I think the first question needs to be when exactly we should be meeting throughout the AB3 process. Tuesdays at 6 o'clock, we're golden. Um, I've heard similar things uh, throughout the course of this last um, basically year from the community that, yeah, we want to have CSD meetings on Tuesdays at 6 o'clock. So for whatever dates we decide, I think that those should be mm -hmm. on Tuesdays at 6 o'clock. Uh, just as this uh, one was, and thank you for snapping yourself. Um, and in regards to how often we should meet, I think that a bi-weekly schedule would be advantageous. Um, this would set our next meeting during finals week for UCSB, um, which is not the best thing in the world. Um, I think that it is still preferable to what we would have had to do had we met on the 14th, which is schedule a meeting during spring break or just waive the scheduling of that meeting entirely. Um, you know, we, I, I think that 
especially in, in the beginning, the schedule that we have to work with, given that it's week, is it week nine or is it week 10? I don't even know anymore, okay? Um, that's how deep we are into this quarter. Um, we're, we're in a, a weird spot in the quarter, especially with, uh, you know, dead week finals weekend, um, uh, spring break coming up. But I think that the thing that we should strive for above all else is bi-weekly meetings at six o'clock on Tuesdays. So moved. Okay. Um, and uh, before I call on Director Freeman, um, oh wait, first a second. Is there a second? First. Is there a second? There was a second. Who was the second? Uh, Director Thurlow. I made the motion. I made the motion. Oh, yeah, need you made the motion. Oh, I second. Okay, um, Thurlow motion. Jordan second. Um, one thing I just want to read uh, is uh, the the provision in the community services district law for setting regular meetings, um, which we're right, we're right on target with, but just so uh, everyone understands. In section 61044, it says the board of directors shall hold a regular meeting at least once every three months. Meetings of the board of directors are subject to the Ralph M. Brown Act. So with this, um, we, uh, all I'm trying to express here is that we are obligated to set a regular meeting. Um, and I think in a motion we should include the, the time as has been discussed, but then also the location. Um, the language regular meeting. And yeah. Director Freeman. So I feel very strongly that instead of a bi-weekly meeting, it should be a semi-monthly meeting. And then we should set it to be the first and, no, maybe the sec second and fourth Tuesdays of the month this is the second, isn't it? Or is it first? This is the first. 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 For the first and the third first Tuesdays of the month. Every other community service district in the county yeah. has. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. Has, has what? Ha, has, 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 no, it doesn't have to seven months. They have it based on the number, like, like the second that's fine. Tuesday or the third Thursday. No, that's and that fine. Would, that way, that's fine, yeah. Jay. Yeah, cool. But Ethan's, Ethan's the person who wanted more clarification. That's why I kept going. Well, it's, yeah. it's friendly with him. That's what you say. So it's friendly. Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. I'm fine. I made the yeah. motion. It's fine. Yeah. So first and third Tuesday and next meeting, we could bring back a simple calendar so we all have a calendar of those dates. I, yeah. I, I, have the, I can read the dates off if you want now. I think well, I'm good. I'm well, not right now. That doesn't mean I'll put them anywhere that I'll remember. Yeah. <laughs> But if it's first and third Tuesday, I'll put it in my phone. I think All right, I can first and third sounds lovely. And third I'm, the second's okay with that. We're good. We're good. Okay. Okay. We'll bring so then, can, uh, good. can our uh, assistant let us know? I, I forget okay. the title. I'm no one's assistant. <laughs> 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 um, I'm only going to let Doss call. No. Okay, the motion is to set the regular board meeting for the first and third Tuesdays of the month at 6 um, at can we, can at we this, this at this location. At this at location. This. Oh, at this location. At nine seven. Who seconded that? I'm sorry. Me. Oh. So I I'd, I'd like to go out for public comment on this at this point with ourselves. I've made it very clear the only request I had of what this board. Uh, um, does in the future is set their meetings for Tuesdays at 6 p.m. So <laughs> I have no more requests of you. Thank you. Uh, uh, other members of the public? Mr. Hodge? Uh, yeah, a couple real quick with this. Because uh, typically we set these as special district by a resolution. So this time you're just getting it going on, on those dates and then coming back to resolution. And, and then, uh, I'm sorry, I, I, I wasn't paying attention, but who's going to, to set the agenda? We haven't set, we haven't got that I yet. think that'll be that's next motion. motion. That's next. Okay, okay, thank you. But, but that, that was just the, the biggie that you're going to follow up with the resolution. I have a question of the chair. Um, do you feel that a motion suffices for creating, like, these structures, or do you feel that we still need to have a resolution written? So what we have in community service district law, um, section B61045, is the board of directors shall act only by ordinance, resolution, or motion. So, um, so with that, I think it's okay if we set, if we pass a motion right now, but I do like the idea of following up with a resolution. Um, if, if that's something that the maker of the sure. motion would like to sure. accept. But the only thing that does is just creates more work. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that is true. If we're, so we if want resolutions for really important things. Uh -huh. If this is controversial or not controversial, then I don't know. That does set a precedent. Right, because I, I believe that the regular meetings, that'll be something that's part of our policy manual. Um, policy. 
Call for the question. I'm all about it. I agree with that. My oh. understanding is that we can call for the question. Call for the question. The, the question we have right now is. Um, set the regular board meetings for the first and third Tuesdays of the month at 6 p.m. at 970 Markdale in the morning. Cool. And uh, any public comment? Any further public comment on this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Seeing none, any more board comment on this? Seeing none, I'm going to call the question. Um, Director Bertrand and I'm voting aye. Director Brandt. Aye. Director Freeman. Aye. Director Geis. Aye. Director Geis. Director Jordan. Aye. Director aye. Aye. Motion passes 7-0. The regular board meetings of the Isla Vista Community Services District will be on the first and third Tuesdays of each month at 6 p.m. at 970. Great. Great. Wonderful. Good job. Okay. Now I'd like to make a motion to uh, direct the um, president, the chair, the vice chair, and the secretary to create this, uh, create the next agenda for the next board meeting, uh, and that we follow that policy until such time as we have a policy for setting agendas. Um, I would like, oh, okay, sorry, there would have to be a second, so I'll just wait. Can you repeat that, Troy? So the so uh, I'm making a motion that the chair, the vice chair, and the secretary set the agenda for the next board meeting, and, and that we continue with that policy until such time as we as the policy committee gives us a policy on agendas, how to set agendas. I'll second that. Yeah. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second. Public comment. Seeing none, coming back to the board. Um, first, or actually, all of them, let's say, are there any other directors who would like to speak on the pull-ups and submission? I do. Director I Jordan. Um, I really like the idea of having three people, but I think that that whole, like, too many cooks in the kitchen thing, and when too many people are, like, delegated something, then nobody owns it. So I think we should have one person own the agenda, s agenda setting, because then it becomes, like, a really long collaborative process instead of just like getting it done and that's the agenda and that's how it was set. You know? Absolutely. Do we, I don't, it's totally okay. up to all of you, but that's kind of how I feel about it. So it's president and vice president. Well, I think it's yeah. important for the secretary to be involved, so perhaps it's the... Well, why don't we, then, then let's go back. I, I'm totally comfortable with having the secretary uh, until such time as we have a policy. So I'll withdraw my old, old other motion and say, until such time as we have policy, <coughs> The secretary shall be directed to prepare the agenda in consultation with the entire board and the public. Okay, so that is amended as stated by the maker of the motion, Director Freeman. Um, so when you say prepare, um, do you mean? Is there a second on that motion? I'll second. Let, it. let me just call a, a clarification. Um, so. The secretary prepares the agenda and has to confer with the entire board? Wait, before we get there, Director Guys, just to clarify the, the question on the, the second and the maker of the motion. The, the second is Jordan, correct? No. Yeah. Oh. It's it was originally yeah. Guys, but <laughs> no. Was no, that's the old motion. That was the old, the old motion. No, but you amended your motion and did not receive it? No, I rescinded it. Yeah, he did. I he did. He rescinded yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. okay. So, so Bob, in answer to your question, I think consultation means he sends an email to all of us that say, do you have any agenda items yeah. for the next meeting? Oh, and then okay. we send it back to him and say, I'd like to I put see. this agenda. Okay, I, I, I understand. Oh, That's for yeah. violation. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so my suggestion is, on your motion, is that the secretary does the agenda in consultation with the president, and... That's fine. That... Yeah. I think that's good. Yeah, I think that's better. I mean, it's generally nice. Excuse. Yeah, it's, it's generally the chair or the president, that, generally with the general manager that yeah, sets the agenda. Right. And there's an opportunity for board members to say something at this point coming up, future mm -hmm. agenda items. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But, but, it should, it should but be we have a real, president. yeah, the only, the only issue there is, and, and I understand, those are usually driven by, because you have general managers who know exactly Right. They're allowed to talk to each board member about, well, sort of, but but we don't have that, so we're gonna have to play it by ear there. 
And just don't violate the Brown Act, Spencer. <laughs> <laughs> now, following that um, very uh, heavy... Bring. But I think that what we should be doing, what, what really, it's a, great, it's a great suggestion because really what it should do is to get us into the discipline of having agenda items for our next meeting right now. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I, I like the transparency of, of that as well. Right. Yeah. yeah, and then mm -hmm. everybody knows. I know about it. stuff popping up that people don't anticipate. Kind of really, unless, yeah. Right. And um, one thing that I'm going to comment is in the, the awesome guide, um, Open in Public, the Brown Act um, guide, there's a question asked, um, question, a member of the legislative body contacts two other members on a five-member body relative to scheduling a, a special meeting. Is this an illegal serial meeting? The answer is no. The Brown Act expressly allows this kind of communication, though the members should avoid discussing the merits of what is to be taken up at the meeting. So all discussion related to this between, if, if passed, the, the board president, the board secretary will be strictly on placing items on the agenda. Nothing, no discussion on the particular awesome. arguments for or against yeah. the agenda. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, I called a question. Any more public comment? Any more board comment? Darcel, could you uh, read the, the question that we have now? The motion is to direct the secretary and president to create the agenda until we have a policy on how to set future agendas. That's fantastic. Should we do another a future motion on how to distribute that, like sit, how to distribute that, such as working with the third district office, or would we like that to be part of this motion? Let's do a separate motion. Separate motion. Separate Let's motion. Get this okay. I'm now calling the question. Um, after going to the public, after going to the board, I'm Director Bertrand. I say aye. Director Brandt? Aye. Director Freeman? Aye. Director Geis? Aye. Director aye. Hedges? Director Jordan? Aye. Director Tyler? Aye. Motion passes. 7 0. In the future, the, me and Spencer will be responsible for bringing the agenda. So now, uh, <laughs> just, just in case any people still watching have any questions on what just happened. Uh, but now. Uh, <laughs> um, Still on this item, more procedures for how, now, now we have how we're going to create that agenda. Um, now we should vote on how we are going to distribute that agenda. Is it going to be the board president and secretary speaking with um, the office of the third district supervisor, similar to how it was this time? Um, mm. She's shaking right now. <laughs> no, no we, uh, we notice it legally. That's how it's done. And um, is it sent out from my personal email address? Do we have to create a, an email? The window. Yeah, you put, is we're going to post it on the window, yeah. and then we're going to use informal online, you know, the same. I think there's actually something in the Brown Act about. Is that window? Yeah, but there's, there's legal requirement is that, but I think that there was also something about, um, like for example, if any member of the press uh, contacts, um, uh, it, it wants to be on a list of people who will get yeah, an agenda, right. there has to be a process right. by which 72 hours before the meeting, the members of the press can all receive the agenda. Uh, and so that, that which, call, which brings right to what Ethan's question is about, does that come yeah. from his personal email address? Does that? Which I'm fine doing. Yeah. Jay, you have a good well, point because a well, member of the public already asked me to be put on that list. And I go, yeah. hmm, he knows something I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so There um, has to be a keeper of a database. Um, I have received requests we can't do that the office right to be added to a database. And I said, when the board on Tuesday decides who will be the keeper of that database, I will make sure your name is added. That's the Yeah, that's the secretary. Yeah. And can I, can I make a just a suggestion, which is that you set up an email address that's exactly. separate from your personal. Yeah. 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 I actually wanted to kind of talk about that just for all of us, is I personally don't want anything CSD related going into my personal email account just as like a professional standard. Um, so I was wondering how everyone would feel if we use like just a basic Google platform to like create some CSD emails. Do you know what I'm saying? Maybe we could all decide to do that because I would prefer things not coming to my personal email. I don't know. Yes, and I think this is a very important discussion to have. I don't know if we can have it in this agenda. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. But, yeah. but I so completely agendize um, communication with the board for the next board. Well, look at that. Already yeah. utilizing it. Great stuff. Yeah. yeah. 
good stuff. So, um, <laughs> so, so here, here's a question that I have. Is there a motion that wants to be made, um, and Director Branch should speak before this is made, but is perhaps there should be a motion that directs the board president and the secretary to carry out the necessary steps to notice the meeting is compliant by the Brown Act? Perhaps that's something we so moved. Do. So moved. Second. Mm -hmm. Motion and second. So the board of directors <laughs> directs the board president and secretary to carry out all actions necessary to notice future meetings as compliant with the Brown Act, or rather in compliance with the Brown Act. Is, is, is that That's what good. the yeah. maker yeah. motion? Okay. It's kind of like silk. Oh, I'm the second. I'm the second. Second. There we go. And before we vote on this, my understanding of that would be if Director Brandt and I had to come up with an email address to use specific for this, we, we've received that authority based on this motion. Um, well, we can do that on our we, we We would be able to create an email of which to distribute an agenda to members of the press or members of the public, <coughs> we'd be able to do that on our own project. We don't need to Yes, but then it wouldn't be the district noticing it. It would be the private actions of a director not being directed by the board. Okay, good clarification. Do you think that you could bring that back to us next week, though, if we figure out if that's like an action that we should be taking? You know, the whole legality thing that we discussed? I don't know. The clarify that? The, the so, like, is, it, is uh, the creation of like an email account through like a platform like Google acceptable? I mean, for a director. Sure. So for the, for the time being, I'm personally comfortable using an existing email account of mine to send out the agenda on this and for me to, to, to say that um, as per the direction of the board of directors, I am noticing this meeting. I would prefer if I could use a, a new account, which I think I have the authority to create. Absolutely. You, you can set up, a, you can set up your, a separate account for you. Okay. So I motion... Yes. Can I, should we yeah. make a motion? And, and one more thing, um, as brought up by Mr. Hodge, there is a recent California Supreme Court decision, which means that all emails um, on the business of a municipal government made from an account that's not on the server of municipal government will be still treated the same way, should there be a public records right. act request. Um, so with that in mind, I think Director Brent and I, after the potential approval of this, will have the discretion to create a email account to do this with. Um, and it's it may not be an official email account in the district, but it's the vehicle through which we are delivering information that's been directed to us by our board of directors. Um, I'll go to Peggy first. And, and um, is it possible once you get that account to put it on the agendas that are posted publicly? So that people yeah. like the one out here, whatever else people advertise so that because sometimes, you know, a big 20-page thing you might not have out on that window, but if people know, looking at that agenda, that this is going to be discussed, then they'll be able to access it through the account. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah that's, that's, absolutely. that's something that we can put in this bottom box here that currently contains Gina Fisher's email address at the County of Santa Barbara. Yes, and I think um, after this motion, we should make a motion for what will be in that box, but I do think that should be a separate motion. I agree. Director Freeman. So that, that actually that, that doesn't quite make sense to me. I'm, I'm probably misunderstanding something. So uh, putting an email address on something doesn't help people access an email address. I mean, it allows them to send an email to that like to that message. You'd have to send yeah, a website. And I think that yeah, it's not a website. And I think that there's actually it's you can subscribe to the mailing list. Right, but the thing, yeah. but, but, but like an email, yeah. So, and so is that's why. Is this a question of accessibility, or is it a yeah, question like of creating an email? Hold on, yeah. Well, 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 so, so what, 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 I've been, what, I, what I want to say is that there's essentially there's, there's two separate issues that have kind of gotten convoluted here, which is one of which is, is the accessibility of the, of the Isla Vista Community Services District via email. Like if, what happens if somebody looks at the bottom of the thing, sends us an email asking a question of our district, which um, is something that is almost encouraged by having an email address, right? And then there's separately, there is the noticing requirements, um, which as far as I understand just has to be 
the secretary has the intent to send an email and does send an email. It doesn't matter what email address appears in the from. In fact, if it were a no reply at isolavistacsd.org, I believe that would be equivalent. <laughs> um, I don't think that would be good to send it from a no reply, at least going forward. But I'm just saying, like, I think legally that that is fine. Um, and so now we have to figure out, though, um, it, it, it essentially this will turn into a policy question of like, if we have a process by which the public can send emails, normally that would go to staff, and then the staff, which is separate from the board, would be able to easily look at all those emails and then figure out what to do with them. So we don't have staff. I don't know legally now what happens. Like if all, essentially, if we essentially are saying that Spencer is the contact point of the entire district because he has an email address, I don't know if that's what we're doing. Now, uh, before calling Director Grant, my response to that would be, with this motion, I think it's strictly to give us the discretion to send out contacts about the meeting. Um, in our next motion, we should speak about what the contact for agendas is. I don't think that's this motion, though it can be. It, like the president. I, I was I was saying that was you, we, the discussion that we've been having both in the board and the public accidentally convoluted those things. I agree. Uh, there's a motion, though, they're not. Yeah. <laughs> so glad you brought that up. Thank you, thank you. Not your bad. My comments were going to be yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So I am going to go to the public, then come back to the board, and then we're calling the question, <laughs> to Mr. Bard. Okay. Um, I think certain things that also got convoluted. Is it on the website? What is legal compliance with Brand Act notice? That's not what I'm talking about. The other is on a practical policy level so people can know what's going on. And I will not be happy until and unless I know a simple website that I can remember the address and I can tell other people, go to this website and you will see A, the agenda, B, the meeting, right now. now, with all due respect to my good friend Cameron, I okay. love bells and whistles, but my point is be that's a whole separate project, the big bells and whistles that has the history of IV. Mr. Bard, um, we're no longer discussing the website. Do you have any? Well, the, all right, the rest of your the comment mail, may be the specific mailing to thing too. All right, but I won't be happy if I see both that and also the name of each director and an email address for each director. And obviously, you have to check the legal compliance because it's a practical matter. Gmail is highly secure if you use two factor authentication. The DNC, the only reason they got hacked. 126 of their accounts did not get hacked. The two that did get hacked were the only two that didn't have to pay both the So I think if it's legal, Gmail is fine for the time being. Thank so you. We, we can do it fast. We are not speaking on email right now. And notifications. But, but I'm, I'm sure we'll be happy to work with you going forward to come up with something that's served our constituents. Ethan, do you think that you could just recenter us? What are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> the motion is to have the board of directors direct the board president and the secretary to carry out all actions necessary to notice future meetings during the plan. That sounds great. Yeah. And there was a second? Yeah. yeah. Can I call the question, please? Um, is there any more public comment? Well, I'm about to close the public comment on this item. No more? Seeing none, back to the board. Is there any more board comment? Seeing none, I'm calling the question. I'm Bertrand. I, Director Brandt. I, Director Freeman. I, Director Geis. I, Director Hedges. I, Director Jordan. I, Director Thurlow. I, Motion passes 7 0. Um, we now have our hands full with Woo! doing the next Good. one. Yeah. And we look forward to working with everyone to do that. Good job, Motion. Um, regarding the yeah, so now um, the other things that we need to figure out within this item, and there's only a few, um, are who do we list as the contacts on, on the agenda, um, and... You know, I, let's leave that to you guys. We're, get, we're getting, we're really getting into deep rush here. I think we need to stay up on policy level, so I think you guys figure that out. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I really appreciated the the service of the third district supervisor's office this past time. Um, I would appreciate if there could be any oh. consideration made for continuing on a similar level of what we've done this past time, perhaps with more assistance from the board president and the board secretary for how we could be helpful in doing that. Um, this is a tough question to ask, but. Can you be specific with your, what your request is? Specific to our request would be to list, and well, specific to my request, we would have to discuss mm -hmm. it, but to list the office phone number as the point of contact, the office email as the email, not to send out all the agenda stuff, but You're talking about the ADA compliance part of the meeting? Yes, but, the, but directing any questions related to the agenda, they can call and leave a message or send an email to the phone number or the email listed, and that can be passed on to me and Spencer. Right. 
my question is, my very sincere question is, why the middleman? Um, and where, where I'm at with that is because we don't have an official email set up, we don't have an official website set up, I don't think it would be, um, and again, like I, I wish I didn't have to ask this question, but I, I don't think we could just put up one of our cell phone numbers for it and say that that's reasonable for the, the public to contact it, um, being that the third district is a public office. Um, and again, the third district is not obligated to do this, but it would be of a great Assistance. So to, this is theoretical, so what, what it is is with ADA compliance, if, if so a member could call, if anybody in the plan was for this meeting, if anybody was going to call or reach out to the office, I was going to, I'm not handling that request, I'm not making the compliance happen, okay. I'm not doing anything with it. Um, my concern is uh, if to be, The, the responsibility of, of somebody who's not your board, and if I don't get that call, or and I don't get that, and I'm the middleman, and don't get that to you within your time to comply, that's a tremendous amount of liability that I don't think our office is ready to assume. May I ask a question of the chair? Yes. Okay, so just because I'm not familiar with this policy, we do need to have a phone number and email listed, correct? For ADA compliance. I get that. So yeah. we just for clarification, we do have to have a phone number and an email. Yes. Correct. Does this have to be specifically linked to an office, or could it be linked to an individual? I, I think, based on the authority that's been delegated to me and Spencer, we that could be directly to us, but we lack right now a medium through which to, to do that. I, what I will say is I am, I am happy to do this at a per- meeting basis, I, I, will, yeah. I will not accept this responsibility ongoing. I will accept it until the next meeting because I this is, makes it clear that like I need to be available and alert. It's essentially right. putting me on call. Okay. Right. And we so appreciate your consideration. <laughs> of this. Like, I, again, I wish we didn't have to ask. Director Brown. So there are two components of this. One is the email, one is the phone number. Um, I don't see in the foreseeable, well, uh, maybe the foreseeable future, but I don't see, um, uh, like, seeing a, as Gina, you've offered to um, allow this for the next meeting. I don't see at the next meeting us somehow magically having, like, a district phone number, uh, a district email, like, that might be a little more feasible. But, I mean, I, what I think I'm trying to get at is that there needs to be a temporary solution for until a committee such as the formation committee can do that work and bring it back to the board for approval. Um, and I think that, you know, as, as secretary of the board, um, and I, I guess I can't speak for you, Ethan, but I would imagine you as president of the board as well, uh, would be willing to create some sort of a Google Voice phone number uh, for listing. Uh, that I just want to remind everyone what exactly the, the, the text in the box says. It says, please address all requests and questions regarding the meeting. To, and then in this case it says the third district county supervisor's office and it lists the contact information prior to the meeting date. So the, 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 the questions that we are asking people to submit are ones that are related specifically to the meeting. This isn't us creating a phone number and an email that is responsible for people who just want to call us and, and ask us questions about I don't know. Anything else under our jurisdiction that the board can take action on? This is specifically regarding the meeting. Um, so I think it would be advantageous for us to come up with a longer term band-aid solution for this, which sounds kind of like an oxymoron. But I think a Google Voice would be a great thing. I'm happy to create a Google Voice phone number um, and an email address um, and um, use that as the, uh, as the point of contact. And my question before I go to Director Freeman on that would be, would the two of us as responsible for carrying out the noticing of this meeting in the future, is this something that we would like to work on out after this meeting in preparation for the next meeting, coming up with that Google Voice type system and other related items and accept the offer of, the gracious offer of Gina Fisher for agreeing to do it for this next meeting? And the two of us are going to work on this outside of the meeting. And then it, put it as a discussion item next next meeting. Yeah. 
One of the things, by the way, that's just so, I think there's some context that, that probably a lot of people in the audience are missing that I actually did not have entering into this conversation. Um, so when we're talking about these phone numbers and email addresses and this box at the bottom, the, it's not just about having a, somebody who can respond to an email. It's about if somebody wants to come to this meeting and they're deaf, well, they can't hear us talking, and so we're supposed to provide a mechanism by which they can, we, we're supposed to provide sign language interpreters. Um, we're supposed to provide uh, real-time transcription for some people or assistive listening devices. And so that, the, 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 then that's also why Gina is, is hesitant to put herself in the middle of this particular, this particular issue. Um, and and we I don't have no problem forwarding. I mean, I yeah, really forwarding. Forward that yeah, and, 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 and I mean, if you want a denial of service attack this government, apparently what you can do is, is you can call us this ADA request and we're going to, we're, 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 what are we going to do? <laughs> 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 we're giving away our secrets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, there's not, uh, okay, uh, since there's no solution on the, uh, on the table, let's keep moving ahead. Because yeah. we can cite all the problems that we're going to face. And we're going to have a lot of them, and I would like to move forward on getting our agenda together in the interest of transparency for the next meeting. So, can I? Can we move on to the agenda items for the next meeting? I'm comfortable with that, barring any board opposition. I'm comfortable with that. With, uh, I mean, I just want to state there needs to be a longer-term solution for this, and we need to all be thinking about that. We can't just kick the can down the road. Yeah, so I mean, this is kicking the can down the road, but we at least need to have it on the next agenda. I agree with Spencer. We should have some kind of phone number, we should have some kind of email address, and we should have this uh, a, a basic website. Whether it's, you know, Josh's web, Josh's, you know, Isla Vista CSD, and we create something that at least has our agendas, our minutes, and that basic information somewhere historical. I agree, but all of this isn't going to appear overnight either. Like no. when we leave this meeting, like realistically, like I don't think anybody is planning on going home and building out a website with our no, no, funding it's going to be else. long term. So then, like, I think said, then it's be long -term. Like, maybe we should set this just as an ongoing uh, discussion item for the next agenda. Yeah. For the next agenda. Yes. Okay. So, are there any other actions that we must take within four point six before meeting? Moving to future agenda items. None. Yeah, agenda. No. Okay, so we're now going to move on. Before we go to section five, though, I think it's important that we do some backtracking and table items that are listed on the agenda that we have not gone to. I'll move that we table the items that we have not gone to. I second. <laughs> I'll second that. <laughs> Which is just an, it's only it's only three point three and three point five. Yeah, there's only two. Of them. Would, would the maker of the motion allow us to do a quick shout out for 3.1 board members, forms, and trainings? I was going to put that on next week's agenda. It'll be very brief. It's okay. important. All right. <laughs> okay, can someone so do that thing quick? So are you um, amending your motion or rescinding yeah. it to make a new one? Um, I'll rescind it and make a motion to only table whichever item is left. Okay. And when is the form 700 due? Uh, now, if we're allowed to, if, if we're going to enter, we're in the middle of the motion. So, so this better go yeah. file Jordan, one. Yeah, I'm I'm are, you, are you going to rescind and then yes. uh, have us do 3.1 and then yes. you make your new motion? Yes. That's what I'm understanding? Yeah. Okay, so we are now going back up. Wait, there has to be a second. He's we, rescinded his motion. No, I know, but there's He made another to motion to move back. back. We have to make a motion to move back in the agenda. Right? I move to go back to. Or I move to move to discussion item 3.1. I second. Yeah, we we I mean I'm I'm well, happy to call this to a question, but being that we don't have policies and procedures set in place, um, but we should, and this will <laughs> help will. us. <laughs> 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 let me ask what the. Can we Do you have a record of the motion? <laughs> <laughs> the motion is to move. Can the maker of the motion restate the motion? I'll rescind it. Uh, the maker of the motion, my motion was to move 
to discussion item 3.1. And I was the second, so. I don't know where that goes. And, and would you like us to, call for you're, you're going to keep this and you'd like us to vote on it? Being yeah. that we don't see it as essential, like we may not have. So please vote on what we've done. Let's just do it. Item 3.1. Yeah. No, no, no. We're voting on going 3.1. Just do it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Due to the request, is there any public comment on moving to the item? <laughs> no public comment. Any board comment? Okay. Um, we are going to just uh, call the question without roll call. Um, Thank you. Um, does. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? No. Motion passes. We are now in item 3.1. Board member forms and training. Um, so for this, the board of directors will discuss the documents and trainings for which directors are responsible for completing, including the Form 700, AB 1234, and AB 1825. Starting with the Form 700, directors are required by law to submit the Form 700 within 30 days of assuming office. Um, for those of us who have been officially sworn in before this date, I'm not sure if it's just me and Spencer, but we that would be the date we'll go by. Um, for those of you who were sworn in today, I believe, and this is obviously not legal advice, that um, you would have 30 days from this date. Um, my recommendation, and it's just a personal recommendation, not based on anything, would be do it as soon as possible. Um, that's the Form 700, so just Who's remember. Who's the filing officer? So the county <laughs> elections. County elections, okay. Yeah. Um, is it county elections? There's a state, and I thought it was a state. And I can ask, well, it's county elections. Okay. Um, I can ask county elections tomorrow when the due date is put out. If it's 30 days from when I submit this tomorrow. So I just have to go in and do that. So no, it's, um, it the form is get available online, online um, easily accessible. It's the same form that, uh, for those of us who, who were elected, it's the same one that we filled out. Um, at the time of us running. We have to fill out some different fields this time, um, but it's still the same packet. Check the assuming office box instead of the candidate box. Correct. Um, is there any questions on that? No. Uh, and does anyone have anything to add to that? No. No? Okay, so for Assembly Bill 1234 training, um, that is the ethics training as required for public officials, including those who serve on special district boards. This must be completed within six months of taking office. Um, and this is available, a free version is available on the FVPC's website. Um, you can search AB1234 training and it'll come up. It's a joint presentation um, by the FVPC and the Attorney General's office. It's the same one that's offered by the Isla Vista Recreation and Park District for their directors. Um, I highly recommend it. It's very easily accessible. You log in for something like two hours and take the training. Um, do they like verify that we did like, like it was like a quiz? Like how does they, they do. So not cool. a, not a quiz. That well, okay. that would be interesting. Um, but at the end, it's based on how long you've been on, and at the end of the training, um, there's a print my completion certification, um, and that is something that will need to be brought to the board for, for record keeping purposes. Um, which that's another agenda item that we're gonna need to separate <laughs> the week. Um, but anyway, that's all I have to say on AB1234, the ethics training. Is there any other questions or comments on that? None? Okay, so the last one is AB1825 training. Um, what this is, is it's um, sexual harassment training. And if you could give me just one moment, I'm gonna turn to the page that actually um, speaks about it in the Community Services District Law. Hopefully I already took that one. Recently. The county is really boring. <laughs> oh God, it's so boring. So, so for this, um, we, it is required that at least two hours of sexual harassment prevention training and education within the first six months of taking office, um, and every two years after that are completed by board directors. Um, this is required of um, 
local agencies that provide compensation, salary, or stipends to local officials. While we're not um, fitting that category right now, I'm sure this is something that we all take very seriously and feel that we should still do. Um, being that we have a, a, up to six months to complete this, I think we should have this as an agenda item for next time and we can continue to discuss it. Um, but that's just something, just so this, this is more complicated one to do. Like, like in the sense, like, like the other one, you just told us how to do it. Yeah. This I, I don't know. Just tell us. Okay, all right, that's the issue. Right, yeah. You have to buy it from somewhere. Okay. So yeah. maybe we or with our free with our tens of dollars, or get a free yeah. presentation from somebody to come we'll to us. They want to donate yeah. to us. Some and I believe it's also <laughs> something that's offered by the California Special Districts Association for their members, um, which is obviously something that we're entering into or applying to enter into. Hey, that ninety-day free trial might come in handy. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think we have to take any action in this. I just felt it would be good that we could have this discussion. And again, it's all just based on my personal understanding oh. um, and recommendation for my friends. Isn't um, this to protect staff? Or you have no <laughs> so, so, uh, it's it's staff. 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 Essentially, board that's what he said. Oh, and other board members, board members and yeah. interacting yeah. with people that we come into contact with during the, the fulfillment of our duties. Yeah. And, and, and Ethan mentioned we're, we're all kind of assuming that we're going to have at least something at least similar to staff in the very near future. So, all right. so it so is basically it. related to Even supervisors and supervisors of staff because our whole staff did not have to take it, but we mm -hmm. had them do it anyways, like yeah. you say, mm -hmm. as a matter of good course. Oh, I have a question. Am I allowed to just carry over some of my trainings that I've already done for sexual harassment, or do I have to um, do a whole new other one? They may be, I mean... If I've been, like, if I've taken trainings within the past six months, does that count? Was it this AB required by the Assembly Bill? I don't, I haven't read it, to be honest, I'm not going to lie to you. Just about everybody. I mean, yeah. Is it compatible? Yeah. Is the University One compatible, I think, is the That's question. what I'm wondering. Is the University One compatible? Like, is it the I, same? I would think so, because it's, it's probably the same the two hour, it's the, yeah. Yeah, it's we do a two hour presentation. Yeah. And I, I think we should all look into the trainings that we've had and trainings yeah. that we may want to pursue yeah. and discuss it at the next meeting. What if yeah. we didn't have a certification or something? Yeah, you need a certificate. Yeah, I don't think I got a certificate. you should have gotten one. I don't remember. I don't remember if I did or not. Yeah. 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 I see thumbs up and sleepy faces, <laughs> which is totally understandable. Um, okay, so with this, we are completed with agenda item 3.1, I believe. Director Thaler had a motion. Ta to uh, table agenda item 3. Point whatever's left. <laughs> three. <laughs> three and five. Three and five. Three and three point five. Yeah, 3.3 and 3.5. And is that in specific for the next meeting? Yeah, let's just move those to the yeah. next meeting. I second it there. Excellent. And at this point, we've discussed all other items. Well, mm -hmm. wait, did we do five yet? No, I see three and three. Yeah, that's just specific. Oh, all the items are three. Got it. Oh, yeah. so did we mean number five? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, no, the great question. high level bullet so number five. So. so um, I, I'm a second. I'll second that. Oh, no. We are. It's already Do we already have a second? second. Okay. Yeah. okay. Call so the question. It's been made and seconded. Um, can we hear the, the question? It's the motion is to table 3.5 yeah. to the next meeting. Okay. Do is there any know? public comment on this? Um, item 3.3 .3 is the presentation of the first 90 steps. Um, 90 days. 90 day action plan. Um, the 3.5 is to discuss future funding options of the district. Um, is there any? No public comment? No board comment? I have one board comment, which is that I'm very disappointed that we weren't able to discuss the future funding options of the district at the first meeting. Uh, I understand that we have just spent about four hours in this room, uh, probably approaching five. Um, and, uh, it's over five. It's over five. All I have, all I have to say is, yeah, all, all I have to say is, trust me, it conjures images of, of the baseball games as a kid where the clock turns from 11.59 to midnight, I understand. Um, but we have a huge elephant in the room that hasn't really been addressed a whole lot, which is that uh, we, the voters have approved this district by margins that um, are 
I mean, just unbelievable with the 87.12%. And uh, they did not pass the special tax, which re required a two-thirds threshold. Um, and I think it's unfortunate that we're not going to be able to get um, to that item in specific. Um, I just want to reiterate something that I've said publicly, is, which is that I 100% support a utility user tax for this district. I think it should be something that is one of our priorities. I think it is something that should be on the ballot, like, soon. Um, and of course, you know, the, the board is going to need to um, do some strategizing regarding this. And I guess that this comment is basically in lieu of of us, or I'm trying to make it in lieu, I guess, of us actually discussing. Right, but since we aren't, yeah. probably can't get any yeah. um, Public comment, Cameron Schunk. Yeah. Um, Really quick, shameless plug, I am here as the president of the IBCDC. We passed around little cards earlier to everyone that talked about an opportunity. We are creating the Isla Vista Community Services District Support Fund, number one. The reason we call it number one is because we hopefully will have more. Um, we want to raise money, so this is my shameless plug, and I'm obviously not trying to co-op the government into doing anything. This is an independent um, endeavor for us as a board, but I just want to open that idea to everyone that we are trying to look for alternative funding even now that we'll be then donating to your board at a later date. Thank you. Thank you. So. Jay? Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm okay moving this item to next next time. Uh, the, the, the extent to which it was really important to try to get it done this time is just that we essentially have enough money in order to run a second meeting, and Gina has thrown us a lifetime line for one more meeting. Uh, thank you. Um, and, and really, it's about trying to figure out how to wean us off of, off of the third district's office. And so I, I'm... I'm, I'm Comfortable moving it. Call the question. Okay, and you're, when you say that, you mean comfortable moving both items because there are two. Three, three, well, three point three, three and three point five. Oh, you know, I was I I the person who very beginning of the meeting wanted three point three on the next one, so that was yeah, why we, that was why we did four. Um, okay, sorry, <laughs> okay, we've had public comment, yeah. we've had board comment. Um, can I just hear the question one more time and then call call it? Motion to table three point three and three point five to the next meeting. Okay, I am going to call the question, Director Bertrand. I. Director Brandt. Aye. Director Freeman. Aye. Director Geis. Aye. Director Hedges. John. Aye. Aye. I am uh, toast. All uh, motion passes 7 0. Um, so now, oh with that, we have gone through all agenda items except future meeting dates and future agenda items, um, which we're about to get to. We already, did, we already did future meetings oh, oh, oh. and future dates. Well, well, we discussed a number. We did, uh, did 4.6, um, the preparation and follow-up. We uh, just have to confirm in, in agenda item 5 that it's going to be the oh. next meeting. I thought we had a motion in it. Yeah. Well, we it did. We it did. It passed. Yeah. That's the next meeting of March 21st. Yeah, so pretty much all I have to do is announce that. Yeah. But um, one thing that I realized, we have taken all these minutes, we have made these recordings, how are we dispersing this? Is that something that's going to be the responsibility of the board president and the secretary, um, or otherwise we haven't we haven't uh, ruled on that? Also, like who's going to take minutes next next time is definitely a real question too. Who's going to be taking minutes? I don't know if Darcel's like on the bandwagon to rock this out for another couple months, but. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you get volunteers. I vote yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, is that a motion? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but is, does anyone have any um, recommendations on how we proceed with with getting out these minutes? I, I'm not sure what you mean by getting out the minutes. The minutes have to be available. We don't we don't get them out. Um, unless, unless there's a specific request, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I think yeah, we have to get them out. We need to approve them. Right. Well, no, but so then okay. perhaps so we have to approve well, them. Yeah, like we to don't have to board members, members but not to the public. But yeah. it's, yeah. it's yeah. just that um, we'll go out with it. Should go out with the next board. It goes to the agenda. With the agenda, and then we have to approve it at the next meeting. Yeah, delivered. Yeah. Which yeah. the approval will of the minutes will be an review. item it's on the next. So it'll be an item. It won't be the minutes until they're approved. Let's be dropped. Yeah, they're just draft minutes until they're approved by the board. Awesome. Gina, I just say make sure it will go out with the agenda and also tape the minutes. The draft minutes. The draft minutes. Yeah. 
I th yeah, that should okay. definitely be doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I learned how to do it. Yeah. Yeah. A lovely and watermark. Ho hopefully, um, the Isla Vista Self Governance Initiative could share the recordings of this video through their means. And when we uh, send out the, the next agenda, that can be shared. And I know the agenda items for this have already been shared. Um, and I know there are other All right. sources that can probably do the same. Um, does anyone think we need to take action on this? Just to do no, because it's just part of the agenda. And we'll all we'll all do our due diligence to get information out to. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. totally. <laughs> Okay. I want to Sorry. clarify. So um, we earlier, we, we when, when we're talking about us having already done next agendas, that was 4.6. It was a process for next agendas. We didn't do five yet, right? Correct. Like now we're okay. Good. Yeah. Right. I just well, we're not doing five. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I want to make sure we haven't skipped five. Yeah. Yeah. We're not skipping. Five. Yeah. And and one thing also to keep in mind, um, just so everyone knows, a special meeting of the board can be called by not just the presiding officer but also by the majority of directors. So if there was a special meeting to be called, um, there's ways to do it other than through my um, through my calling of it. Awesome. Um, I think that's kind of tangentially <laughs> relates to what we're discussing here, but just wanted to put that up there. Um, all right, are we ready to go into Josh? Um, I wasn't able to be here for public comments. Okay. I know it's really late, but given the fact that I had such a large part in the creation of this district, if the board would be interested, I wrote a something to say. I um I will accept your public comment as soon as we realize as soon as uh, we're ready to move on to s number five. Um, once we realize we're at yeah, that we point, I'll call on your public comment. Jonathan had his. I was just gonna say yes. We will share and do everything we can say. Thank you very much. So we uh, are on number five right now. Well, I'm asking the board: Are we ready to move to number five? Future. Where are we? Day? Then currently. We're on four point six. We're in 4.6. I'm ready to move to 5. No, we're actually, we, no, we're we just completed 3.1. Yeah, yeah. And, so then we, have and we had that motion yeah, yeah. Um, to table 3.3 and 3.5. Thank you so much. So right now you're in the 3.5. Well, we have to be somewhere in the agenda. Okay, <laughs> so then <laughs> we're in 5. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we are now moving into 5. Okay. I will never take items out of order. Yeah. Same. Uh, thank you. So uh, huh? now, number 5, future yeah. meeting dates and future agenda items. Um, Wait, I thought we were doing Josh first. I think you agree to that. Josh, please uh, take your public comment now. Do you want to do it now or after 5? Now would be good. Okay. And um, earlier, our rule was four minutes, so to be fair, okay. if you could uh, hit the room two. I didn't time it out. So <laughs> I'll let you know when you're approaching four. <laughs> <laughs> Who's got the mic? All right, George has it. But then I'm just oh. going to, OK. First of all, I'd like to congratulate all of you that, oh. oh. There you go. Don't turn it on. Okay. It was First of all, I'd like so to congratulate all of you that have been a little cool. I'm just going to read it. Okay. Dear board members, first I want to congratulate Ethan, Spencer, Jay, Natalie, and Father John on getting elected. Thank you for volunteering your time to serve the community of Isla Vista. I want to especially thank Father John for volunteering your time to improve the community for all its inhabitants. I want to also especially thank Bob Geis for your willingness to serve this community. The board should know that you are very lucky to have Bob serve with you. I also want to thank George Thorlow for your willingness to serve on the board if you survive. <laughs> <laughs> the Chancellor couldn't have appointed a better person. Huh. Thanks also goes to the members of the Isla Vista community who came before us, who first went down the process to create a CSD. In the early 70s, there was a bill passed to create a special CSD. The community decided, though, to try and create a city rather than a CSD. In the 80s, they discussed again creating a CSD to have continuity as the IV Municipal Advisory Council was scheduled to be defunded. They weren't able to move quick enough for continuity, so the idea was dropped. In 2001-2002, the grand jury studied Isla Vista and found that it had a lot of problems to which they made recommendations. They followed up the next year, and when they saw there was no progress made by those with responsibility for Isla Vista, they spoke straight to the Isla Vista community and recommended that the residents themselves create a CSD to fix, the, to move the community forward or fix the community. I was randomly doing some research in the summer of 2013 and came across these grand jury reports. This was a, the same time that Jonathan Abud had just become president of Associated Students. There was only one person who I knew would have the capability and stick to actually get this project done. 
Intuitively, I knew the CSD would happen as it made so much sense, but I thought it would take around four to five years. I knew Jonathan wouldn't have the time to properly research this, so I set myself on a project to do it myself. I looked through hundreds of pages of history in the Isla Vista archives and also looked at uh, related to past CSD attempts. I also read all the related law and all the documents I could find on the matter. At the same time, I made correspondence with anyone and everyone who I thought might have helpful information who would be able to help in its creation. Doreen's FARS office was very helpful and continuously encouraged me along. I also contacted Bob Geis, Hannah Beth Jackson's office, Doss Williams' office, and LAFCO, and everyone was very helpful to me. When the riot happened, I went public with my CSD work, writing an op-ed in the Nexus, and getting every person who ended up winning the AS election to run and support the CSD, to run on and support the CSD. When the shooting happened, the CSD process sped up, really sped up. I then got hired by the trustee committee where I laid out the plan for the CSD to Duncan, Melacham, Duncan, Mark Linehan, and Jonathan Abood, then moved forward with the CSD. At this time, I trained Cameron, Cameron Shunk, um, and everything I knew about the CSD and asked them to take over all my public work on the matter. Doss Williams then bravely took on the task of shepherding the CSD through to completion with the help of Jonathan, Cameron, Darcel, etc., and everyone else in the community, which I wasn't very involved in. Today is a very important day in Isla Vista history. It is a day when the work begins to improve this com community and bring stability to it. I didn't write this down, but as a side note, I feel that the CSD is a short to mid-range solution. Um, it's what I call stop the bleeding. And I'll, last paragraph. With a cap strap, cash strap <coughs> district, I offer my research services to the board in terms of helping with specific projects. I'm right now working on a database that I think would be very helpful to the district. I'd also like to help the board with improving IV infrastructure, specifically sidewalks I'm thinking about, and maybe I'll help Bob with his infrastructure financing district if I get around to it. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Thank you. 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 No way. You have seven minutes. I thought it was going to be like seven minutes. So close to Jane. Your yellow light is on. Right on the yeah. yeah. Um, fantastic. So now, um, thank you, Josh. Back to <laughs> item five, future meeting dates and future agenda items. As discussed, um, earlier, the next meeting, which is now a regular meeting, will be the third Tuesday of the month, which that date is 21st. the 21st. So the next meeting, March 21st, 6 p.m. at this location, 970 Embarcadero del Mar. Um, now let's talk about future agenda items. Already what we have is item 3.3, the presentation of the first 90 days. That's been tabled by motion, as well as discussed future funding option. That was also tabled by the motion. Um, my understanding is that we're going to be bringing back item, what is now item 4.6, procedures for meeting preparation and follow-up. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. We're going to bring that back? Yeah. Yeah. Did you mention 3.5? Yeah. Thank you. Um, so, so right now we have listed 3.3, 3.5, 4.6. Um, we are going to further discuss 4.5, which was the creation of an online presence for the Isle Vista Community Services District. That's something we want. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Um, I think it's important that we have discussions on the committees. Yeah. If maybe we, yeah. to avoid yes. the confusion that yeah. we had this time, let's uh -huh. just have committee review. Report? That's uh -huh. right. Well, yeah. not committee report, because I don't think we're yeah. sending any committees out to meet, right? Yeah. They're not ready to, to meet. Y y we okay. had discussed the formation of an additional committee. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, That's the agenda. Yeah. Community outreach. Can we, can we, the, Give me a right. job. If the committees, can meet, if the, committees if, the, if the three members of the board want to get together and start meeting as a committee, I think time is of the yeah. essence here. I, the I, reason why George put that the way he wanted it was because he wanted them to start meeting. Like that was yeah. pretty clear. To I'd like, I think. I mean, even if it's just yes. Yes. Just a reminder: they need to be publicly noticed. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, do we need to make a? Do we need to act to direct? the secretary to publicly notice those meetings? Um, yeah, whose job is it to publicly notice those meetings? I think it should well, be Well, we have to delegate that somewhere. Sure. Cool. And That's that can be something that we delegate awesome. to the secretary. Be for each committee. 
Well, <coughs> should each committee have like a person whose responsibility is to notice mm. their own committee? It meetings? should probably be uniform across yeah. the district. That's Fine. that's my thought on it. I agree. Yeah, we don't want to get it's going to get too complicated. Yeah. Um, is this something that the secretary is willing to take on at this time? One hundred percent. Great. Woo. Okay. Bravo. So the committee, the board is in is in agreement that the committees can meet between now and the next board meeting, and that and that and that we're going to publicly notice those meetings. And so, if at all possible, they should probably be conducted here. And I, and I think the idea too is just is that we didn't talk about it. The idea is to grow these committees with community members. Right. And so that probably should be the first thing that all the committees start talking about is how do we get more involved. But I think that as an agenda item, there should be the committee discussion, and then there should be committee reports as a, as a separate agenda item. Yeah. And George, would you think those committee reports would be written reports as opposed to verbal? They probably should be yeah. written reports. I agree. Uh, why written as opposed to verbal? I've just watched other special districts that go right into that verbal report thing. And yeah. then they don't report yeah. anything. So do you think then <laughs> could we just and so take, they, a, there's a take minutes from yeah. the meeting and just approve the minutes, and that could be the report. Right. Like that, exactly. we can do a verbal report, yeah. but then like the written aspect of it can right. just be the minutes that we approved mm -hmm. in the meeting. How does everyone feel about that? Because I feel like we should be approving minutes anyway. Yes, and just a clarification on that: the minutes will officially be approved by the committee at their. Next subsequent meeting. Meeting. like the, sure. the minutes wouldn't be approved by sure. the board of directors. I thought that yes. they would be approved by the big, big but board of directors. No, it's minutes of the little. committee, and so the committee would have to approve. Okay, minutes. so then I think they that would just come at, here? at minimum have minutes, but I think yeah. in some committee items there might be more discussion that we want to put in writing. That's that. Yeah, totally. The, the full board would want to read and understand. And again, that's part of the board packet that's got to go up on the wall mm -hmm. and yeah. be noticed. So. Right. Um, <coughs> shall we, is, is there a motion to be made to no, direct I think, to the no, secretary? No, no. I I don't so. Think. so we don't <coughs> want to have any committee meetings between <coughs> now and the 21st? We, we, do. We, do. We, do. we do. We do. We do. Well, then you have to direct to these meetings. Well, okay. All right. So, so I move. Yeah. I move that we direct the Yes. The secretary will need 72 hours to post. Right. So yeah. Pick. Yeah. Good news: you can't meet between now and the next three days. Right. And so pick when your yeah. meeting is. Sure yeah. Right. Okay, that yeah. sounds right. And so, as part of the motion, what we'll do is say in compliance with the Brown Act, perhaps, mm -hmm. so that way it makes right. it clear that yes. Right. right. Okay. If. Yeah. If we didn't say that, we'd be free to violate the law. <laughs> that's, that's my whole thing. <laughs> yeah, no. Are the are the three committee members allowed to yes, there's converse with the secretary about what needs to be on the agenda? Without speaking to the merit of, of those, those items. items. Okay. Would the committees like to appoint a point person to contact the secretary so that he's not that hearing from out. all three members of the committee? Or that should be done in committee, done. I think. It's organic. That, yeah, Let's be organic. We could do it by organic, conference right? call. Yeah. And just say, here's what our committee agenda should be and keep it simple. And I, I think you just set the agenda when you get to the committee meeting. And the reason is... is Oh, at the committee meeting. Yeah. Oh. No, but it has to be publicly has noticed. Be no, the does the I don't agenda think you have or to, the meeting? I don't think you have to publicly notice the agenda of a committee meeting. For an ad hoc committee, you do not. But for a standing committee, you do. All right. All right. Unfortunately. Well, no, fortunately. <laughs> Why? Why do you want standing committees? Because there's seven member boards too big to do. But you could have ad hoc committees. Ad hocs um, legally have about a six to nine month tenure. So these are, if the intent is these things are ongoing and they yeah. seem like they are, then. Okay. So and we've already created the committees. Um, yeah. yeah. We, we could uh, open. No, no. No, 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 no. 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 It's time to go home. Let's not go there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Please. But so we do. We have a motion on the motion. Uh, Wait, the motion was never <laughs> completed. Oh, are you going back to 4.6 to make a No, we're in 5. 
Right. Then I'm just trying to figure out. And with that. But you're still listing an agenda. So here we're talking about future meeting dates, and we're talking about procedures for how we are going to carry out future meeting dates of a, a subcommittee of this board. Yeah. So I mean, would we like to say we're back in 4.6, and that's where we're going to? No. No. And no. Well, if we can't suspend the orders of the day and we don't have an agenda, we have then we're like willy nilly. Yeah. You know, we have nothing to suspend, and we're not technically in five then, right? Okay, what says so future meetings? The motion for the secretary yeah. to, to notice. Yeah. Um, future okay. meeting meetings? Yes. Mm -hmm. And who made the motion? Sure, I do. Seconded Second? by Nevis? Sure. Right? <laughs> uh, but now, I do think this needs to be in 4.6 for the purposes of the minutes. Um, where this, when we do the minutes of this, where does that decision fall? So with that, I'm under, I think when I call the question, we're in 4.6, okay. correct? <laughs> okay, that's good. Sure. Um, do we have public comment? Do you have any wisdom to? No, 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 I think you guys are fine. I just was confused how you could do that in five. Is all well, we're in 4.6. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. Um, We've got a time machine. We're just going back and forth. Well, we, we don't have, and we haven't adopted yeah, average no, rules. Yeah, we got it. It's great. So in the future, we have to be more organized, but with what we have, we're yeah. allowed to do this. Okay. Um, so any public comment on directing the secretary to carry out the tasks of noticing committee meetings? Yes. Thumbs up. Any more board discussion? All right, I'm going to call the question. Director Bertrand, aye. Director Brown, aye. Director Freeman, aye. Director Geis, aye. Director Hedges, aye. Director Jordan, aye. Director Ariela. Motion passes 7 0. And that was in 4.6. So now back to number five with uh, resuming where we left off. We have 3.3 again, presentation of the 98 plan. 3.5 again, discuss future funding. 4.6, um, the procedures for meeting preparation and follow-up. Also 4.5, um, consider creation of an online presence for the Isla Vista Community Services District. We have committee reports and we have committee discussion. We, we actually, you actually missed some that already had come up. So um, the uh, Monique Limon's uh, thing was going to come back with the amendment. Um, yeah. So we can look at that. And then we were also, um, uh, uh, George, um, you, the, as soon as we had a process for having a new agenda item, George put the memorandum of understanding on it. Because we had that question from, and then we, and then we, we didn't let him send. He's like, okay, I'll put it on the next agenda. So if we, Fantastic. Yeah. Um, and I don't, I, I'm not, I'm sorry, I don't have the, I, I've, my, my agenda's batteries died, so I don't, <laughs> um, do you already have the uh, sexual harassment training back on your new list? No. That was okay. And let's have that list. just the wider uh, forms and training. And that's the same item as we have right now. That should be a standing item. So we'll, no, uh, I don't know if we have in standing case items. anyone has an update on form 700 or AB 1234. Okay. We'll cool. all of that. Yeah. So that's just adding 3.1 to the agenda again. Uh, I think we should have a discussion about uh, Joan Hartman's and the county's um, support for the CSD. So and what that's going to look like, and because at some point in time she indicated that she was going to provide some support for this organization via staff. So, so we might need. Is that under funding? I think that's under 3.4. So okay. the one we had. Fine. Um, Fine. Board directors will speak. Um, blah blah blah. Discuss involvement of the County of Santa Barbara. Hear any input from Supervisor Hartman for initial operations of the district. So yeah. the way that I was worded, would that require Joan to be at this meeting? Um, I'm sorry. No, we can't require. Yeah, she, she, Gina missed, missed the beginning of it. Well, would we hope that Gina, would we hope that Joan would be at the meeting? Oh, certainly, yeah. certainly. So can, can maybe for, because Gina didn't get to hear what the. Oh, hi, Gina. Um, so I think we need clarification at this point about um, Joan had made an uh, a early on statement that her office would provide support for this organization. I think we need clarity because certainly the conversations that went on today. I think that she's been clear and she spoke to me today. I think in the discretionary budget from our individual office, $3,000 towards the formation of the MAC. And that is, and that's the... So is, the, is that it? In terms of monetary contribution to get okay. the MAC going and um, I think helping get 
the meeting out initially. Okay. Okay. So there was no there was no sense that there was going to be ongoing staff support from the county for the CSD. So um, I, I, I don't believe I, I think um, okay. we, we can't go into the specifics on this, only speaking to scheduling this future agenda item, okay. um, which I think what we would like to do is have a discussion, ha have the third district office listed. If we have a representative like yourself here, we can have a further discussion at that time. If Supervisor Hartman's sure. here, we can have that discussion. That sounds good. Yeah. So um, with that, pretty much putting 3.4 on the agenda again. A do over, a whole agenda over again. If I were doing, <laughs> we have a lot to discuss. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm, I'm not complaining. Okay. Are there any other items? I think that we need to have a discussion of what the minimum funding requirements actually are going to need to be for this district. I'm like, we need to like figure out. <coughs> we have to have money for this, 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 and this. Otherwise, we are like legally just not working correctly, and uh, and that we need to because we need to know what that is in order to figure out how much like our like like it, it's, it's related to but it is not the same as discussed teacher funding options like we need to know what our funding needs are like our fundamental yeah. needs so not our wishes but like our so needs then you know, like how to pay for a phone yeah like if we need a phone we need to like figure out like like okay like, here's like a list of things that we really need I think yeah. that those are things that can't be done in committee like we're so not yeah, I'm not 100%. calling Verizon during meeting so like we no, really no. need to like really either delegate or something like that, and we can figure that out. And that's why we are creating committees is so we can delegate to them. No, I don't. I don't mean. I don't mean to construct. I don't mean to like actually make those accounts. Uh, I mean that we need to like. Do you think that's something we should do in formation? Those like, things like, cost 100%. money though too. I think we could do that. Exactly we could do that in formation. Exactly. Yeah. 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 That's a good yeah. point. Entire purpose of the right. We'll do that in formation. Right. Yeah, let's just so, do so, I think yeah. since we have decided to put 3.5 future funding options for the next agenda, perhaps we can broaden that, broaden that to future current funding situation and future funding options. Is that sure. something the board would be interested yeah. in? May I make a, a suggestion or a question? A lot of these were really. Re, like really broad this week, like procedures. Like procedures is so many things. Can we say like procedures, like agenda, like one, two, three, four, so that we know what we're hitting on instead of kind of leaving it as like a wide open thing or like online presence, like let's do website, like individual things because like it's so big, we just are like spinning our wheels, in the my opinion. Individual things are discussed in the text, the description of the item. But we didn't move item by item. Do you get what I'm Which saying? Which I think and in I the future we must. Sure. Yeah, I will okay. be opposed to that 100%. <laughs> uh, cool. Go through one by one. But but focusing on, on this here, current and future funding options, that's something we'll discuss at the yes. next meeting? That sounds great. I think either through policy or through formation, we should talk about some kind of structure for an agenda Excellent. letter and item, mm -hmm. which really <laughs> says what's that action the board's yeah. taking. That's and where that could you know that we can use the county examples or some other that. examples. Yeah. Yeah. Peggy. Ethan, do you want something on there for appointing public members to the different committees? So I would love to do that as soon as we can. It, upon reviewing the IBRPD, board um, policy manual, I saw that there's specific requirements for that as far as providing a 45-day notice in newspapers, advertisements right. on specific days. I think we need to figure out the legality of that before we can put it on. Um, so I think in our committee discussion, that can be something that we talk about, how we're going to do that. Well, I know you can't appoint anybody yet, but you could at least discuss how to. Discuss how yeah. to. Absolutely. So in committee discussion, is that where we'd like to put it? I think it should probably be a board thing just so that if you do need to do something, you can. I mean, it's, it's noticing, it's time, it's just saying you got to get it in by the state, you need to write a little statement, and then yeah. hopefully by that time. Excellent. Point. Yeah. Because we want your help as soon as we can. Your ducks in order. Although well, there, the, yeah, there is the notification, you guys don't have money for the notification of the papers, but maybe it's not that much. I'm happy to do that. Maybe we can do that directly after a committee discussion. Or, you know what, to avoid going out of order what we did today, I think it's actually probably important that it's part of that discussion and we make sure that it is. 
because today what we had was we had a lot of intersecting items, which is going to continue to happen. But I think as much as we can put it under one agenda item so that we can go in order, mm -hmm. I think that'll be best. And we'll certainly be thoughtful in drafting the order so that it goes in a, in a, in a way that makes sense for continuing the discussion throughout the meeting. Art. You want somebody to <coughs> check your, your meeting date schedule? And if there's a Tuesday that falls on a holiday, you want to figure out what to do about it before? Absolutely. Sounds like a, a great thing for the policy committee to discuss. Any other public comment? You'll have to agendize Director Hedges' committee. Uh, can you yep. do it? Curtain consideration of new committee. Yeah, formation of, or rather, consideration of new one yeah. of community involvement committee. It'll be a discussion mm -hmm. and action item so that we can take action. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anything else from members of the public? Scott? Uh, before I, I offer a, an idea, can I ask um, uh, Mr. Thurlow a question? Sure. Um, is it, uh, is it uh, still the position of the university that you were not in the jurisdiction of the CSD? Um, I, I would advise that Director Thurlow not answer this right now because it's not the appropriate place on the agenda. Just, 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 just put your item on the agenda and, or try to get it on the agenda. The question. Can you put that on the agenda whether or not it's legitimate oh, not. To, for the university to be in, in a jurisdiction of which it's not part of? I mean, to have authority. Well, when I made my three. comment, I did not know where he was going. I thought yeah. he was going somewhere different. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> um, what do my fellow directors think? Because the I think that the where we're at with this is it's all part of the Assembly Bill 3. Um, it's yeah. stratified. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's not something yeah, we, we don't can really take think. action on. We can't take action on anything related to that. Okay. Yeah, we, we have no power over this. It, whether we hate it or love it, it's done. And so I, essentially what you need to do is but you we also, go we there like... We can't really yeah, go much further. Okay, yeah. yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Is there anyone who would like to put that on the next agenda? No. Um, I, I invite you to come to public comment next time it's public. I mean, I think the university has property within the district, yeah. so yeah. I don't I mean, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, go and go all the oh, it's all exclusive. Okay. Okay. I got you. Um, uh, well, any other, geographically. Any other, guys, any other public comment? Any more board comment for, for five? Okay. Um, uh, uh, so uh, I, I, if there's other stuff that I think that should be discussed, but I think that we can punt it until meetings after the next one. I should not bring it up now. Or are we talking about future yeah. meetings and you'll figure out how to schedule it? Or are we talking about next meeting? Right now, these agenda items are for the next meeting. I'm okay, gonna, I'm going to not do I think we should, <laughs> we should consider a long-term calendar. That's what kind of what the board does so that you schedule out items and then That's hopefully the manage our time right, so that tonight. we don't have real, real long, inefficient meetings. Cool. So I, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do an item on that in yeah. particular. Cool. Yeah. Duly noted. Any other board comment? I'm getting ready. Oh, no. oh. <laughs> yes. Um, there isn't, there, um, uh, I'm trying to make sure I word it correctly so that it's not, uh, I'm not talking about it. Um, there's a, I, I'm gonna need help from fellow board members on this. There's, uh, in the 90 day action plan, it mentions a $25,000 private donation. I wanna talk about what that is. I don't. I, don't I think we can talk about that within our the discussion on the 90-day action plan. Yeah. Okay, because I can like point that line and say, okay. okay. Yeah. If that's comfortable with other board members, whoever wants to give us money, okay. comfortable. Let's keep okay. Let's go. Any other board comment at this time? I'm now getting ready to adjourn the meeting. Is there any other public comment before I do so? I see yeah. class. Right. You're all on. Awesome. Thanks for okay. the patience. Okay. I adjourn this meeting oh at 11.45 p.m. Oh